See the moonlights on the town. Whoa, I'm getting ready. Tell about TV is in the town. Whoa, I'm getting ready. Got a corner on the town now. Yeah, this is the Ushara the Messenger, and you're watching Talawa TV with the host and best to Davis. Take it away. My Talawas, good afternoon, good evening, or maybe it's a good morning. All depends on where you are in the world. You can read my banner, can't you? Drew Spence, back with the Reggae Girls. Drew Spence, that's Chelsea's Drew Spence, training with the Reggae Girls in Jamaica. But in what capacity, Travis, Mr. McKenzie, if you are in the comment section, sir, please do not answer that one. A little bit behind schedule, I had to make a quick phone call before I come on here because I know you'll be asking me the all-important question. What is going on with Drew Spence? I'm going to bring that picture up once more, actually, because I like it. And I know you guys like it as well. So I'm going to just hold off for a quick second and bring back up that Drew Spence picture there for you all. That picture there has been a long time coming. I know you guys have been crying out for the return of Drew Spence. Like I said, I'm going to give you guys a bit of a background information into Drew Spence. Probably wondering what's going on. What does this mean for our player announcement? Sorry, our squad announcement. Did a squad announcement last night and Drew Spence's name wasn't mentioned. Drew Spence's name wasn't actually on the squad announcement uh, team sheet. I'm going to bring up that squad list again just to give you guys a insight into who has been called up and who's accepted the call up. A couple of players are missing as well from the last camp. I'm sure they'll be easy to identify. But the big one here from last night's show, two, three, I should say, three huge return for the Riga girls. Last night, we announced the return of Paige Bailey Gale and Marlo Sweatman as well. And today, it's almost as if Christmas has come early. We're seeing Drew Spence spotted in training. But what does that mean for the squad announcement? Let's go back and see if I can bring up that squad sheet from last night and go through this one with you because you're probably wondering who's in, who's out. Let's see what you guys are saying in the comments section. Mr. Ballin, how are you, sir? How are you, Mr. Ballin? How are you doing? Good evening, Crystal. On the road, but listening home from work. Hope, hope everything is good with you. Stay steady, Mikey. Stay steady. Drive safe. Try not to be distracted. I hope that you make it home safe and well. So, guys, if you sat with me last night, we were doing this for about four hours, I believe, and we went through the squad announcement, noticed that a few names weren't on the the squad sheet drew spence being one of them so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back and actually go through that squad sheet with you guys once more and see if i can actually bring that up for you guys hopefully tonight i won't have no issues with my shared screen because that's ever the case these days so let me go back and click on my shared screen and go through that Squad announcement with you guys once more for those of you who missed last night's show. Special request by Mr. Malik. Don't know where he is tonight, though. He did ask for tonight's show, and I'm doing this because of Malik. And also, the works made an announcement. Hot Chili. Both of those guys said they want a another show tonight. So here we are. So, guys, all important dates. We have two pivotal match, two crucial matches coming up. In the coming week, first up on the 9th of April, we have Cayman Islands. This will be subsequently followed on the 12th of April against Dominican Republic. All important squad sheet announcement, the squad list here, supplied by the Jamaica Football Federation, that's JFF. And the two names at the top of the list there, those are welcome names, two names back in the squad. Two players who are eligible to play um, for these two games against Cayman Islands and Dominican Republic. So we have Paige Bailey, Gale, Marlo Sweatman, Mariah Gray, Yasmin Jameson, Shoshana Campbell, Khadija Shaw, Trudy Carter, Sydney Schneider, Tierney Wiltshire, Kiki Van Santen, Tiffany Cameron, Chinalu Asher, Shade Odomolokun, Alison Swaby, Chantel Swaby, Vian Sampson, Kayla McCoy, Rebecca Spencer, Jody Brown, and Michaela Days. So as you can see there, there was no mention of 
Drew Spence. So there's some probably caught you guys by surprise if you're keeping your eyes on JFF social media across Twitter and Instagram. You're probably wondering where is Drew Spence's name on the squad announcement. Um, you did spot her in training there alongside her teammate, and it's not an outdated picture. For those of you who are wondering, that is a picture taken from uh, the latest training session there for the current practice window, the current camp. One of the most notable names there from last for the last camp, the last two games, some weeks ago, Elika Keen. Some of you are probably wondering where why there's no mention there of Elika Keen. Actually, with Elika Keen, she played a she missed the game, I should say. My apologies against Marlo Sweatman's Victoria FC over the weekend. Victoria defeated Eto FC, that would be the club belonging to Tiffany Cameron and Alika. Alika actually missed that one due to illness, so that is the reason why she isn't part of this month's camp. Hopefully she's on the road for a speedy recovery. Let me go and stop my shared screen quickly there, because this actually distracted me. Go back over here. You guys are going to have to sit a little bit, be a little bit patient with me tonight. I know y'all want to know what's going on with Drew Spence. I feel like I might have to just let you guys sit and wait. Might change my mind depending on whether or not you guys are feeling kind enough to go ahead and hit that like button. Pick up yourself, Tennessee Lewis. How are you, sir? How are you doing? How's everything in your neck of the woods? Thank you for tuning in. Mr. Warren Webster, how are you, sir? Just checking in. A big hello from across the pond. Good evening to yourself, Warren. How are you doing? We're not going to be talking about your boys in the Premier League tonight, Warren, so don't even think about it. Dr. Hero, is that how I pronounce your name? Good night to yourself. How are you doing? How's your week been so far? Pick up yourself, Kevin. Quite a couple of you very active in the in the comment section. I'm actually waiting for a special guest to get things started for you guys. Um, in case you're wondering what this show is all about, it's not just going to be about Drew Spence. For those of you who are just tuning in, let me bring that picture back up on of Drew Spence in training. I'm sure some of you would have seen it already if you've got your eyes glued on the JFF Twitter page or their Instagram. So let me go ahead and bring that picture up again for you guys. This will be a pleasant sight for you reggae girls. on with Drew Spence, where is Drew Spence, um, is she available, isn't she available, I'm going to keep you guys guessing just a while longer until I feel the time is right to add a bit of context there for you guys, for those of you who are wondering why is Drew Spence in training, but her name isn't on the squad announcement list, so let me go back over and see what you guys hot chili okay where's your friend mr malik where is he you guys demanded a live stream tonight and here i am so where is mr malik hot chili i need some answers from you sir i wasn't but since you <laughs> shot myself in the foot with that one i should have actually just kept myself quiet and not remind you but fair play there you have it guys the banner says drew spence back with the reggae girls as chelsea's drew spence chelsea's midfielder drew, uh, drew spence back in training with the reggae girls it's a nice night it's good yes you said it nice and right okay okay at least i'm doing something right at least i'm doing something right i've managed to get you guys a special guest um somebody who's been on my channel for a number of occasions now always so keen to talk about the women's team and also the men's team uh, but more importantly always pressing for information on the women's team i want to see if i can actually bring him on i think there's probably a slight hold up on his end so i'm going to see what that's all about so if you see me looking down it's actually me trying to see if i can make a phone call to see what's going on Hopefully, there's no internet problems from his end. Last time he was on our live stream, there was a few internet issues there. So hopefully, he's all good tonight. But I'll keep on trying. It is good news. It is good news. I'm um, great to see Drew Spence there back in training 
with the reggae girls two pivotal games coming up and for those of you as well who might have forgotten how the last camp went i think it's only right that i actually bring up some information for you guys and we can take a look at how things panned out on the last occasion and this would have been back in february so let's go ahead and hit that shared screen once more mr bolton good evening to yourself how are you I'm not sure if, if Richard has picked up or not. Um, let's try that once more, guys. I think I ended the call. All right, guys, let's go over to this share screen once more and see. Before I forget my manners, let me go ahead and drop this link to the live stream in the comment section. You know the golden rule, the only rule. If you are coming on live stream, then do go ahead and make sure that your content is clean and professional. And also try to ensure that you have a well-lit or a fairly decent um, background in terms of your lighting so that we can obviously all see your face. Right, so let me get that shared screen on again and we can look at how things panned out in the last camp back in February. So here's how things panned out for us. If you go back and look at how it all started off, it all started off on home soil against Bermuda, 4 nil winners against Bermuda on the 17th of February. And it was Jody Brown that got things started for us in the 21st minute. 10 minutes later, we had Trudy Carter that added to the goal tally and the captain, the skipper, Khadija Bunny Shah, added two goals in the latter stage of the... In the latter stage of the second half i'm getting a phone call guys um one second let's see if i can turn the camera on no idea what's going on okay right so let's just go back quickly um look at the second game so the first game was against bermuda second get second game was actually against grenada and you can see this one. This one reads for itself, doesn't it? I know a lot of you, it's kind of funny. This one had people going back and forth on the live stream. Some of you wanted to see double figures. Sadly, on that occasion, that wasn't the case. But let's talk about Tiffany Cameron. Tiffany Cameron opened the scoring away from home against Grenada. And it was a neatly taken goal by Miss Cameron. Jordan Brown, as you can see there, back on the score sheet again um, in quick succession. And she had she added two goals to her name in that game. And you can see the skipper, uh, Khadija Shaw, two goals to her name as well. Slightly, slightly, a little bit, bit down deep that we won't be seeing Alika Keen. Alika Keen, I think it's safe to say Alika Keen fired home the goal of the tournament so far. Absolute scorcher, no goalkeeper in the world to the chance of saving that effort, Alika Keen's effort. And we walked away from Grenada with a 6-1 victory um interesting game there i think grenada had their mind games um all mapped out thankfully uh they weren't able to execute it to the best of their ability so this is where we're at guys at the bottom two games there at the bottom sunday it says sunday for me i am six hours let me remind you guys i am six hours ahead of you if you are in jamaica as you can see this one here is kicking off at 10 at sorry on the 10th of April, so that would be this coming Sunday, 1 a.m., 1 a.m., only if you are in the UK. And this one kicks off against the Cayman Islands, away from home. We'll be traveling to the Cayman Islands. Look at the table. The table pretty much reads for itself, doesn't it? We are firmly sat on Equal points as the league leaders, Dominican Republic, on six points apiece. There's a goal difference there where Dominican Republic are out on 13 and we have nine. Our opponents are sat on a fourth in the fourth position, just one spot shy of the bottom of the table. Then comes the biggest game. I think this is the biggest game of the um, Congo Cup qualifiers so far. Maybe that's me being a little bit biased. I don't know. I'll leave you guys to decide that one. The showstopper, the blockbuster on home soil against the league leaders, Dominican Republic. This one's kicking off on the 13th, which will be a Wednesday. Again, if you are based in the UK. And the time for that one is 12 a.m. Nice and early. So I hope you guys will be sat here with me. 
watching the game and also looking at the clock because plenty of us no doubt will have work the next morning so that is how things is looking where our team is concerned I actually just had a call back um but all oh, looks like it's where Drew Spence, you have to tell me that you want to know about Drew Spence. Do you want to know the latest on Drew Spence? Because if you don't tell me, this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to hand over to my special guest. So before I make that decision, let me know in the comment section if you want to know why Drew Spence is in training. A reminder that her name isn't or wasn't, I should say, on that team sheet that I read out last night and earlier on in the show as well. So let me know. Rochelle is the only one that seems to be communicated. She's the only one that's playing tiki taka football with me at the moment. At the moment, the rest of you in the comments section are behaving like Manchester United supporters. You're just all grumpy. Here we go. As soon as I say Manchester, I knew there was something shaky in the comments. I saw Mr. Bolton and now I'm seeing my bro coaches. Just, I knew something wasn't right. I'm going to need you guys to communicate with me a little bit better. Do you want to know about Drew Spence? Drew Spence, there you go. There is the banner, Drew Spence back with the reggae girls let me know if you want to know why she's back with the reggae girls some of you were saying yes i got what two yeses so far i'm afraid to tell you rochelle and hot chili the guys in the comment section are letting you down they're not willing to participate with us tonight so on that note i'm going to sit quietly and i'm going to hold my cloth hold my cards close to my chest coaches desk is saying run the story why what's the rest of you saying why is she back? That's a good question. I mean, I know why she's back. I know you guys want to know why, why she's back. I'm going to take a quick break, actually, and I'm going to see what you guys are doing to the like button because my next guest that's coming on, I know he's going to attack you guys if you haven't hit that like button already. So let me just make sure that you're doing things accordingly and you're doing things. 22 likes. All right. All right. Okay, you have 22 likes. That's not bad. That's not bad. Brent, <laughs> why is she back? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to introduce my guest. And here's what's going to go down, guys. He's actually going to determine if I should give you guys that bit of news on Drew Spence. You guys would have seen him on here, the politician himself. <laughs> you would have seen him on here plenty of times, the politician himself, the prince of Jamaica, and also happens to be the prince of England as well. I leave him to decide which country he loves more. I don't want to brainwash him or corrupt his mind, but he is the prince of Jamaica and the prince of England. Tonight, I'm going to be asking him to speak and speak. I know he will. You guys are most certainly familiar with his face it is none other than mr richard stevens how are you sir greetings and salutations one and all crystal crystal my goodness gracious me a pleasure to be in your company <laughs> and my sincere apologies i was g-o-n-e Oh, <laughs> my goodness me. I, greetings, viewers and subscribers, Talawans, friends, Romans and citizens. I hope I have your ears. The reggae girls are back in town. Oh, yes. And they are waving the Jamaican flag, representing in the truest sense with the best of intentions, with a style and flavor, coming live and direct. We can concentrate our minds on activities on the pitch and minus the drama, we can concentrate on the interviews to come off the pitch. The reggae girls are back in town. Crystal, how are you? I am well because I'm sitting on a lovely bit of information. It's all down to you. I'm trying to give you that ball, that little cheeky assist. I don't know if you can put it in the back of the neck for the guys in the comment section, but I'm teed up. 
I'm roaring to go. I've got the information that they're also keenly, keenly waiting on. Say so it's over to you, Mr. Richard Stevens. If I should give them that information, all down to you when I drop that information for all them. Because right. I know that they are eagerly, eagerly waiting to know about Drew Spence. I'm not sure if you caught, caught last night's show or the beginning of the show, but we went through the squad list so the players who have accepted the call of the players who are available two names there from last night who pretty much got everyone cheering and celebrating and the game hasn't even kicked off yes was yet was the return of marlo sweatman and also the return of paige bailey gale as well i know you're familiar with those those two names and tonight as just as just as i was about to come on live stream i had to make a quick phone call notice um a certain drew spence in training chelsea's drew spence in training with the reggae girls and it is a latest picture meaning it's a picture from this month's camp so everyone's wondering why is drew spence in training i'm guessing you're also wondering as well richard because you look quite pleasantly pleased with that i am i am and i'm i'm, I'm wondering if if she's actually in the squad i the last i heard it was a squad of 20 that had been announced um there were some new names to me, as well as some omissions. I, I I counted around four, if I wasn't mistaken, that were in the last um, squad for the for the for the for the campaign. Um, but the new additions uh, seemed um, pretty tasty. And of course, Marlo Sweatman. Is it Sweatman? Is that how you pronounce her, her surname? Sweatman. Yes. I tell you, she was one of the early reggae girls that. I took a liking to a, a woman of stature, a presence in that midfield area. And um, I, I really wanted to get your take on, on, on Marlowe because she has been a yeoman. She has been a real servant and has been part of the reggae girls uh, system and Jamaican system for many years now. Um, she's a real soldier. And um, I really wanted to know if she's, um, is, she, is she being carried or does she still have something to offer? The heart might be willing, the mind might be willing, but are, is the legs? Are the legs? Is the is the body? I mean, what a, what a servant to to Jamaican football! I mean, she she could be like the Peter Cargill, uh, 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 far, far more far more um, you know, pleasing I'm gonna, I'm going but to leave you. I'm going to leave you to decide or make up your own, draw your own conclusion on Marlo Sweatman because I've been watching Marlo Sweatman play for a while now. We see what she's capable of in terms of you're saying, is that, does, does she still have it in her locker? Always say class is permanent. We see what she do in Hungary over there. Just a friendly reminder. She actually defeated Marlo Sweatman's Victoria, defeated Tiffany Cameron's um Eto fc so victoria defeated Eto fc over the weekend i thought oh that might be a little bit of a discomfort there are they still going to be friends that was one thing that was weighing on my mind are they is the friendship still on the card and i was pleasantly surprised but i'm not surprised pleasantly please i should say quite pleased when i saw this As you can tell, that is a picture there of Marlo Sweatman behind us at the airport at the time with Tiffany Cameron. So all is well where that friendship is concerned. Um, there's plenty to talk about Marlo, so we can talk about Marlo later on in the show. I'm going to actually have to bring in someone else. You guys are so familiar to this one as well. My guest, my special guest, you guys would have seen him on here a dozen of times. I'm not really sure how he's multitasking, driving and balling at the same time. How is that possible? That's a that surely is some Guinness, Guinness World Record stuff that he's um, dishing up for us. It is none other than Mr. Mikey Ballin himself. How are you, sir? I'm good, good. I'm trying to, my friend beside me here, Corey, doesn't know anything about the reggae girls, so I have him listen to you, introduce the reggae girls to him. Brilliant. Good evening, Corey. Good evening. How are you? Yeah. I'm good, I'm good. Thank you. How are you yeah, finding the show so far? It's, it's good so far. Lovely, lovely. You see, you see, people from Montego Bay don't know much about football, you know, reggae, uh, uh, reggae girls football. So I'm gonna bring him in. Okay, okay. <laughs> Doing the Lord's work, I love that. Yes. Mm. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, man. So, anyway, that's why I, I just jump in real quick to... Because I tell him should watch the game on Saturday. Yes. Uh, the reggae girls look better than the reggae boys. are boosting up like, you know, Asha and, you know, all these other girls. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it, you know these, these men nowadays, they think the girl game soft, you know. But I try to bring him in. Far from mm-hmm. that, isn't it? Yes. Um, the more men support the girls, is the better. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. Definitely. I don't disagree with that at all. So uh, the question here now I have for you now, why is Spence practicing issue of our passport? Why is Spence practicing issue of our passport? <laughs> that is a million dollar cost um question tonight, isn't it? I think that Mr. Blaine is pulling a fast one and um everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That is the million dollar question. Like I said, I'm sitting on that one. You can tell them I've added a little bit of height. I'm not. I'm actually not this tall, but uh, the, the information that I'm sitting on has definitely given me some extra bit of height. Um, still waiting on the guys so what, in the comment section. What I don't want to do, Mikey, is to give them the information, not even 30 minutes into the show and for them to run off. So I want to see just how loyal they are. If they can hold on, hold on mm-hmm. a tad bit more, and then I will give them the information that they're so desperately craving. But I'm going to jump out shortly, but Corey is going to be also one of a member of your fan club, so I bring him Thank in. you. Thank you. Yes. Oh, oh, well, I told him, Tal- yeah, when I tell him Tyler will TV him say, it's cricket. <laughs> 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 you have the Jamaica Tyler was. So. I know, I know, I know, I know. If it if it helped, one of my first love with sports actually was uh cricket through my granddad. So I I don't mind. Oh, okay. I'll take that. I'll definitely yeah. take that. Uh, yeah, Corey, I do, uh, Corey's leaving now. He's home, so I just dropped him off. So I'm heading home myself now. But when I get home, I will jump back on. Lovely stuff, Mikey. Um, uh, drive All safe right. until then, okay? Yes, Mr. Stevens, sorry about that. Back over to you. So you wanted to talk about Marlo Sweatman. I want to know what the guys in the comments section thinks of Marlo Sweatman. You know, I have tons of praises from Marlo, always giving her praises. Funny enough, the guys in the comments section also always have um, warm words about Marlo. You heard the guys, guys. Mr. Richard Steven wants to know what you guys think of Marlo Sweatman. So go ahead and drop some comments there in the comments section. Back over to you, Mr. Uh, Richards. How you doing? I am well. I am well. It's, it's been a long day at the um, office, as it were. So I I was on the couch waiting, waiting with bated breath, and then I was G O N E gone. Only Can to I be ask awoken. you something, Richard? Of course. Can I ask you anything you like. Because I've like. noticed this is the second time that it's happened to you, and it happens to be quite frequently. Do you think it's something to do with um, a lack of vitamin D? Because I, I learned this last year that because obviously, you know, of where we're from or where our parents are from, naturally we don't get enough vitamin D because obviously we're living in a cold country. And as a result of that, your body tends to feel more tired than it usually is. Like you might wake up and suddenly you just feel like you need to go back to bed again. So is that something that you're experimenting alongside a ton of workload? That's a good question. Inter- interesting. It, it it it's possible. Um, I think that it, what it could well be is that because of my passion for all things Jamaican football and jumping onto the due to wagon from last year. I mean, I I'll sleep at the drop of a hat uh, on any given occasion. But because of the hours and different um, Jamaica times, be being six hours. Um, behind or or, or I've been six hours a- ahead, I find that I have some very, very late nights. And when I get caught up listening sometimes to some of the conversations uh, from the likes of coach's desk, <clears throat> I find myself um, up at awkward hours. So uh, before I know it, I'm, 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 I'm catching up, but it's difficult to catch up on sleep. That That's one thing. It's very difficult to catch up on sleep. It's a it's a it's a tough concept to get your head around. So who knows? But yes, yes. Once I'm a, I'm 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 up and again, 
Um, you're probably unlikely I'm going to go to sleep until the, the wee hours of the morning uh, for now. But uh, yes, I like to pop the pills. I do like my vitamin Ds and vitamin Cs, but uh, who knows? Who knows? I think that might be one of the reasons. I reached out to Mr. Stevens, guys, because I had a feeling, okay, if I do this live stream, eight out of 10, he's probably going to jump on. And I thought, okay, why take that little bit of a risk? Um, I know that's more than likely that he will jump on. I thought, okay, let's just invite him on because he is always, always asking about the reggae girls. And I wanted to know because I already know, or you guys in the comments section, if you are familiar with other content creators like your coach's desk, um, it's IMAX. That's where you resign as well, right? Over in IMAX. IMAX it with JD. Um, I, I'll pop on to I Am Sure Sports. But IMAX it and coach's desk are the, the two leading ones. Of course, the Formula Sports um, is, is, is a show that I appear on as well and um, always receive a warm welcome. And we have some really juicy... Uh, conversation, intellectual conversations on the formula sports. Uh, uh, and yes, the Jamaican platforms, many, very many, many platforms and um, always try to get a flavor of what's going on. Um, I've even jumped on military Guna on the odd occasion. Top, 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 top content creators that you're mentioning there, Mr. Stevens. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with their work, do go ahead do go ahead, guys, and head over to their channel and make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Hit the like button on their latest content. More importantly, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I think I've always actually seen you over on Coach's Desk ever so often, so I know why you started um, supporting the Reggae Boys. But I've never actually, oddly enough, I've never actually asked you why did you start to support the, the Reggae Girls. So now is the perfect opportunity for me to learn a little bit more about you. Well, thank you very much, Crystal. I, <clears throat> I think the real push was after the Reggae Boys seemed to be spluttering uh, through their... Uh, Gold Cup and uh, then subsequent World Cup campaign. I was looking at <clears throat> the the burgeoning influence uh, and growth of the women's game in this country, and not only in this country, but in the in in, in uh, the overseas regions such as America, uh, Canada, and um, I love sports in general. This is the beautiful thing. The baseline is I love. Uh, sports, uh, Olympic Games, World Championships, it could be swimming, it could be rugby. And of course, the rugby world has um, uh, its own Women's World Cup, the Olympics, of course, male and female events. And you've got uh, so many sports where the women participating um, produce world-class performances and uh, off the field, they conduct themselves in a terrific manner. And I wanted to see what the reggae girls were up to. So this particular yeah. campaign... Um, in light of what they um, achieved in 2019 in the World Cup in France, I thought, okay, you know what? Let, let, let me tune in and see what they what what they're up to and what they're about and what they're bringing to the to the table. So the spotlight has been thrown on them, um, particularly um, from a Jamaican perspective, since the reggae boys um, has been, as I say, um, um, struggling to make an impact. Uh, they seem to be good um, uh, on paper, but on the pitch, on the grass that is green, it's been another uh, story. So I've been really impressed um, over the years with the likes of uh, watching America um, really strut their stuff mm -hmm. on the world stage. Norway have been terrific. Of course, I've got a big passion for Brazil, the Seleção. And uh, I used to watch, love watching Marta. I mean, what a yeoman yeah. she is. I mean, goodness gracious me, outstanding. Uh, but just came up short on many occasions, which actually surprised me, often surprised me. I really wanted to see Brazil lift a, a World Cup or reach the final, and they seem to um, come short. But watching the Americans and the Canadians um, fly fly the flag in terms of um, the creme de la creme of um, international women's football uh, uh, with England coming up now on 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 the rails uh, Spain um, coming up with of course the the current world um, uh, female football of the year uh, on their books uh, uh, and in their ranks it's just really proved an exciting fresh perspective and of course the 
the English league is burgeoning and um, watching match of the day. Now you see um, highlights and um, 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 promoting of the women's game and, and, and checking out the likes of Manchester City and, of course, Arsenal uh, with Medima and um, the likes. And it's been terrific. It's been terrific. So uh, I used to, I tell you what, hand on heart, I used to actually, <clears throat> used to have mixed emotions when watching the women's game. The number one thing was because I've been brought up watching the men through decades. I used to compare mentally, consciously and unconsciously um, the women's game and what they were capable of on and the style, the, the way they um, maintained the ball, the, the um, level of contact, um, how they converted chances, how they fashioned chances. Uh, used to compare that to the men's game and oftentimes they would in my eyes come up short um and i thought oh there you go look it's not quite the same thrill it's not quite the same game but i've got to confess the standard and this is an exclusive to myself and i'm happy to share with the viewers and subscribers i wonder what um the folks out there think the standard of the game internationally and certainly um, where we are in England, has season upon season, year upon year, really, really risen. And the quality, I've got to say, hats off. Remember, men have been playing football for centuries. The women, relatively speaking, drop in the ocean. So their level and their standards will take time to reach their uh, quote-unquote peak. But what they're delivering thus far, I tell you, got to say, great coaching, really good coaching. And the women committed, style and flavor, ability, technique, drive. And what's really interesting, they don't, which is similar to the um, rugby fraternity, they don't start having a go at the officials and giving it all of the... <laughs> giving it all of the mouth that's it's a refreshing a refreshing change to the surrounding the referees and the the contention and the the you, you know the disrespect i don't know if you if you share my my views crystal um but it, it's a refreshing change and it, it makes a difference because what happens then as a result is that you find yourself focusing on the game you're focusing on the teams you're focusing on the individuals and you're appreciating the patterns what the individual skills are and what they're bringing to the game and then you can then which is where i am at the moment start to compare and contrast how teams mix and match with each other the concacaf region has which is quite unique in the world of sports in a way i mean track and field you know the caribbean superpowers superpowers in track and field um you know next to the united states jamaica small but really talawa really punch their weight in the sprinting events uh long jump and they're spreading their wings now into the the shot put area but looking at the concacaf region it's interesting to note that the Dominican Republic, our, our forthcoming rivals, are actually ranked, I think they're ranked about 109 in the world right now, but they're higher than their male counterparts. And Jamaica's reggae girls are ranked, I think, 51st. Very interesting. So far and away above the Dominican Republic, though that's our, <clears throat> our, our, our immediate rivals, apart from the Cayman Islands, who, who hopefully we can take care of. But we are ahead of the Dominican Republic and um, the CONCACAF region with America and Canada. I think we've got five or six in the top 50, 51, including Jamaica in the world, led by the likes of America. And with Canada, uh, we've got Mexico, we've got uh, uh, Costa Rica. We've really got um, some really talented teams um, vying on the world scene and not just the CONCACAF scene. So. Having uh, the likes of America uh, with the Carly Lloyds of, of the past and the solos of this world, um, 
and so many um, stars who have, have performed on the international scene. I think it's great that the CONCACAF region um, uh, are, are leading the way um, along the likes of, uh, of Spain and, and England and, and Germany in terms of um, taking on the world and showcasing uh, international women's football. So that gives you a little flavour. I didn't actually um, get the chance to fully enjoy until subsequently the um, exploits of Jamaica in the 2019 competition. I never get tired of, of seeing that goal set up by Bonnie Shaw for the first, <laughs> first representative uh, goal in the World Cup. I love that goal. What a setup, Bunny Shaw, uh, an exceptional talent and uh, one I really hope can fly high um, and, and, and really find a place, even more of a place in Jamaican and the world scene in terms of um, our hearts because she's a, a terrific talent. I think I saw her, her score a fine header for Manchester City recently in, in one of their most recent wins and what a presence and what a, what a talent. But Jamaica reggae girls, there's a ton of talent that they've got and I'm fully behind them because they're refreshing. I love the interview abilities that they have. I love when they talk um, um, off, off, off after the game and off camp and, and off air, candid and honest. But their efforts and endeavours on the pitch, I am firmly behind them because they seem to be a, a tight unit. Crystal, I find that I'm talking a lot. I'm going to pull up and ask you no, to come no, in. You, 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 you have plenty to say tonight. That's the reason why I invited you on because I know that you're always eager to talk about both teams, both the men's team and the women's team. You mentioned quite a few different nations there, the United States and Canada. Some may actually wonder, you know, based on your location, why is it you didn't go and say, okay, let me go and support the lionesses that will be the england women's national team because you did say i've heard you say on a number of occasions that you supported the men's team the england men's team i'm not sure if you still do but you said you supported them up until the euros where we had three black players miss their penalty and i think it's safe to say that probably shifted your head and you decided to look elsewhere somewhere closer to home and that's how you found yourself in the reggae boys camp um just curious to know um why didn't you decide to say okay you know what whilst the men's team for england they didn't give me what i need perhaps in terms of i don't know if it's worth or self of belonging just wondering why you didn't feel the need to then maybe find comfort in their women's team but instead instead chose to find comfort in jamaica's women's team that's a very good question crystal very good question and <clears throat> I, I i could be about to give you another exclusive i i like to be as as coach minzy uh likes to testify to and acknowledges that i i like to shoot from the hip and the lip and <laughs> i am not a disingenuous fellow so <clears throat> The, the reality, the low and the, the high and the low of it, the short and the long of it, uh, Crystal, viewers and subscribers, is that I would like to put a little pointer and a little clarity needs to be offered. I've not really been a massive fan of the three lions, just to get some clarity. I have been closer probably to the Selassau and the Brazilian team um, over the years. I remember in the early 80s, uh, watching the likes of Zico and Socrates and Edir, uh Falcao, wonderful players, Junior, you know, the dashing, the dashing fullback, uh, you know, from back in the days. And now fast forward to the likes of um, uh, Cafu uh, from, from 94 and 2002, the Brazilian World Cup uh, winning captain. And I've had a, a, a special place in my heart for the, the Selecao for many years. Uh, the thing I find, and I don't know, what your take is on this crystal is that the english by and large i found them to be what's the word and maybe it's the fans or maybe it's the media they seem to be a bit too big for their boots i've watched some of the concacaf contents and i've seen the likes of um alexei lalas and um other um, american commentators seem to have a bit of a, a bee in their bonnet um, as, as, as far as uh, the English are concerned, and they, they feel that um, the English have a sense of superiority 
uh, where where football certainly is concerned. And uh, it's interesting to note that when it comes to the likes of rugby union, uh, the French uh, teams uh, often uh, look at the English and they think, oh, they're a bit snooty. You know, they're a bit of got a bit of an attitude. They think that they're bigger and better than the the rest of their opponents. And that's not really been my bag. I like to call a spade a spade. And when the World Cups, you know, roll, roll round and, you know, the English, you know, always feel that they're going to win it. It's our turn. This time we'll get it right. You know, mate? And all of this kind of thing. And, you know, it's... <coughs> it, it, Football's it seems to coming be almost, home. Football's coming home. They've had some really good songs, you know, The World in Motion. You know, <laughs> the John, John Barnes is... <laughs> Has um cracked a beautiful um rapping in, in, um, in those um uh, yeah the, the attitude the sense of superiority see, superiority is not something that has sat well with me so when I look on the world scene and that can include track and field you know I look on the okay. scene and I you know they they're thinking okay you know British championships they've they've done okay relatively speaking but internationally you know track and field is a global event can you run can you jump on your marks, get set, go. Who's the quickest? And Olympics and World Championships after World Championships, I've always just found myself gravitating towards my beloved Jamaica, my home from home. And uh, that's where I could see the performances. And I, I place such a stock in the achievements of Jamaican athletes and on the world stage, how they quitted themselves. Funny enough, they didn't do so much talking off the track, but on the track they did their talking and, and did it well so when it comes to dock to water and um i'm, I'm really enjoying their, their journey as i say they rank 51st in the world um <clears throat> so they've got a ways to go i think they're on an upward curve uh they've got challenges ahead of them and they meet challenges but i like the way that the players themselves acquit themselves in terms of dealing with the the, the challenges of where they're located, um, how they prepare for games, uh, their opponents, um, their expectation levels, which is something that I hope we can discuss because expectation levels where the reggae boys were concerned were particularly high. Uh, and I don't know how the, the team and the structure uh, handle uh, the fans, certainly, I find... Um, are uh, uh, in a in, caught between a rock and a hard place where um, supporting the reggae boys are concerned because, uh, as I said, on paper, uh, at their best, they seem to produce and have the ability and um, potential to to fly relatively high. But the performances uh, leave a lot to be <clears throat> desired. But the reggae girls, a lot of positive influences. So, so yes, regarding the lionesses of England. <sighs> Maybe it's that superiority, you know, of course we're expected, you know, we're, we're the best and, and we can beat anyone. Nothing wrong with having the, the belief that you can beat anyone. Uh, but I like to see the proof being in the pudding and where the Olympics and world levels concerned, the Americans have really led the the way and, and have really been the, the benchmark. Canada have um, joined the party. Spain recently have joined the party. And... Uh, yeah, I'm not one for uh, superiority complexes. <clears throat> I love seeing talented um, performers perform to the best of their ability. And if you're not at the top of your game, once you leave it on the uh, track uh, and do the best you can <clears throat> and perform when it matters, I say hats off. But that superiority complex, Crystal, that's the thing that has surrounded English sport interestingly not ne not necessarily where the women's cricketers or the women's football team is concerned again i think the lionesses i must say hats off to them this may be actually a first this may be the first where i may actually get fully behind what well, fully behind i can appreciate aesthetically and practically and realistically what the lionesses bring to the party because they actually are a genuinely competitive good team and they bring to the party a level of humility and humbleness mixed with a steely determination that runs through them that they don't they don't beg um your pardon they are not a case of um you know if only and you know if it wasn't for this and they are willing to go toe to toe 
and whoever comes off best props to them and i love that attitude the sense of just simple competition from the women's game club level to international level i think the the women's um england lionesses um may be actually the first english team that i can actually recall that i actually can say you know what i can I can follow you and, and give you plaudits for what you're doing. But heart on heart, if it's England versus Jamaica, if it's England versus the reggae girls, I think you know which team I'll be um I'll be pulling for whilst I wanna, not being for blood. I wanna like split it down the middle or flip it on you just a little bit there, because you spoke about what the lionesses bring to the table. But I wanna ask you what does reggae girls bring to you? To your table and why you're growing such a attachment or why you've or why you found a attachment with the women's team well i tell you what the reggae girls <clears throat> i've got a list here with some of the um 20 member uh party drew spence was not um on the list from what i gathered but there mm -hmm. are some really interesting interesting names and, and one of the things the reggae girls um, have brought and i've enjoyed actually watching them in action is that they've actually got some individuals who actually stand out and have got some kind of star quality or the x factor i think truly Car is it trudy carter trudy carter you trudy. are always asking about trudy carter i think trudy is one of your favorites isn't she she brings a little bit of the X factor in my eyes to the party. Um, and I think there's so much more to come from her. And um, professionally, um, <clears throat> uh, technically, confidence-wise, I think she, she's, she's got so much more in the tank to give. And I'm really hopeful uh, and confident and hopeful that people don't get on her back um, because she's always willing to try things. She seems to be uber confident. And I think we should encourage that. But um, alongside that, um, hopefully just allow her to be, um, uh, so a, a word to um, Vin, you know, if you're listening, Vin, you know, uh, allow her to do her thing and, and give her a little couple of tips, um, you know, to just um, hone some of the edges on her game. But um, she's a really terrific talent. Bunny Shaw, Khadija Shaw. I mean, <sighs> powerful powerful player skillful player and and from years back i saw interviews with her years years before she she hit the world stage and you know playing kicky uppies with um um male and female counterparts and um really really just had a, a desire and a, a a love for the game and, and 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 playing with boys or girls didn't really matter to her and she's just gone on from strength to strength i saw her interview for when she was at, um, at the Manchester City Stadium uh, one day. I'm not sure if it was in your programme, but she was being interviewed and, you know, she just acquitted herself so well. And I was wondering, how come this woman is not, you know, a regular in the starting lineup for Manchester City? I saw some players on walking behind her and, um, you know, flashing a lot of surprise smile. And you could see that, you know, she was really one of the, the the real stars of the party and and just uh, acquitted herself so well and listening to her you know she seems like a student of the game she seems humble but um determined and ambitious and a real physical specimen um pace and power you know the truth pace and power <laughs> but she's got skill to boot and she's just a striking figure um i think on the the international uh, stage and I really um, hope that she she shines more and more and it's terrific that she's at a high profile club such as Manchester City you 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 don't um, get into a club like that without having something so it's terrific seeing a, a Jamaican uh, really making a splash in 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 Manchester City here in England Tiffany Cameron I think there's another one. is Tiffany Cameron a character bubbly character I used to see this woman and been interviewed and lovely she's giving all of it i thought wait a minute but can she play she seems a real live wire but can she play oh yes yeah, she can oh yes yeah, she can so you know it it's it's a real treat as i say the combination of off field aura and on field it's a real delight rebecca spencer spence or spencer is it the keeper for spurs spencer spencer, spencer and spence spence for a dream what have they got here? I've got Rebecca Spencer. Rebecca Spencer for Spurs. It's an easy mistake. I think I think we're all going to make that mistake at some point. Yeah, it's, it's, they're close enough in pronunciations, aren't they? In, 
Indeed, and the mistake I don't want to make, by the, the mistake I don't want to make, uh, Manning's man, Manning's man, are you listening? I'm not going to mess with your program. I'm not stepping on your toes. I know that you respect Rebecca Spencer, and I don't want to mess with the program. She's a fine keeper, and I wish her all the very best at club and international level. A warm welcome to Rebecca when uh, she puts on the colours. In fact, they've landed in Jamaica, am I right? They've actually... Yeah, they, they have they, landed. They, 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 yeah. I did bring up some pictures there of the um, training sessions um, where you saw Drew Spence training with the rest of her teammates. Um, so, yeah, they've, they've landed, thankfully, all safe and sound, and they've gotten their first training session on the way, um, gotten that, top, that one under their belt neatly. Kyla McCoy. Is it Kyla McCoy? Kayla, Kayla McCoy. Kayla, Kayla McCoy. Look here, I tell you, it just took, it just took, just one look, just one look. It may have been two games, but McCoy, the midfield maestro, apparently that's not her natural normal position. She's a Glasgow uh, gl player, a trade at Glasgow Rain Rangers, Rangers. Is that right? Rangers, Rangers. Yeah. Right. Well, I tell you, um, Mr. Rain, Rain, Rains, uh, the the coach. <laughs> I think he pulled he pulled one out of the hat with that because she, she's a strike. Isn't she a forward? Yes, she is. Apparently, she is. but wow, she, I tell you what, the reggae boys, I, and I'm, I'm sure I saw in the comments, the reggae boys, you know, they've been baying and crying out for an authoritative uh, f set of figures in the midfield era. Ravel has been shining of late, full respects to Ravel, um, but it's been a real difficult defensive midfield position to fill where the reggae boys have been concerned. And I've got a personal um, appreciation and respect for that particular position in men's and women's football where Brazil are concerned. We've had a, a catalogue of defensive uh, midfield maestros. They do the, the, the dirty work and they do the simple work. They keep things ticking over. They're, they're part of the offence and they're part of the defensive uh, 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 system. And they are unsung heroes but they are absolutely vital to many a system we've had for brazil the likes of dunga we've had the likes of maro silva we've had of course gilberto the wall at arsenal and uh, uh and right now brazil going into qatar they've got the likes of casimiro and fred an unlikely hero fred all names um currently playing his trade for manchester united but these are the guys that re really do the the, the tough work in the engine room and McCoy, oh, a duck to water. I mean, she stood <laughs> out, and I, I'm looking forward to seeing her. She was purring like a, a Rolls Royce going through the gears for the reggae girls, and I'm really looking forward to McCoy um appearing i i'm, I'm sure she's going to be a starter um just a pleasure watching watching her play football intelligence hunger precision working hard a real pleasure who else have we got we've got the the, the swabies the sway imagine sisters you don't have many sisters in the world of sports in in, in, in track and field you've got the inga britson brothers uh who have done some outstanding uh uh, performances uh, on the on the track for Norway, but the Swabies, wow, terrific! And and playing in different um, places in the world, I think is um is is one of the Swabies. Let me see. I think yes, ones with with Rangers. SL. So that's yes. Chantal is with Rangers uh, and Rangers Alison is and with Angel. Angel, Angel, yeah. Angel City FC. Yeah. Yes, so in the WNWSL. Yeah, so there's a there's a, there's a, there's a mixture. Um, who else did well? Uh, Rebecca Spencer, Jody Brown, Jody Jody Brown, Jody <laughs> Brown, a, a a sensational young player. I mean, you know, a live wire, confident. You know, belies her age. Just a, 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 Jamaica, the reggae girls have got a talented bunch, and I, I tell you that here's the thing. Crystal, ranked fifty-one in the world at the moment. Um, I think they're ranked fifth in the in the Concacaf region, behind the likes of Mexico and uh, Canada. Uh, I think it's cost. Is it Costa Rica or Puerto Rico? We're gonna get a couple of the lists. Um, I think it's always get those. 
confused. So we've got America, Canada, uh, uh, Mexico, um, but we we are coming in, as I said, ranked um, around 51st in the world as of as of um, uh, mid or late March. But uh, I think that what I'm looking forward to now is, am I overestimating? And I, I wanted to have a look at the world rankings just to see, as I said, we've got, we've got the forthcoming two games with the with the Cayman Islands, uh, followed by the, the big one, uh, quote unquote, versus the Dominican Republic, ranked 109th in the world, but playing some good football. And um, it's going to be, it's going to be one on one, a battle. They've got the goal difference advantage as we speak, and I think they're going to be. <clears throat> I think well, yeah. Wednesday, Wednesday we've got what, Grenada versus the Cayman Islands. Friday we've got Dominican Republic versus Bermuda. But the Jamaican girls are going to be in action what, on Saturday and then Tuesday. Is that right? Uh, the timings actually do vary. I don't want to confuse anyone. I mm, do have yes. a few. I have a few tables to look at um so you actually touched the nail on the head of a couple of your um comments there with regards to ranking those are a few of the tables that i wanted to bring up later on in the show but i think i might as well do it now since we've touched on it i'm gonna go back i did touch on this one earlier on in the show someone actually asked about drew spence and just bring back up my shared screen so that we could all look at Drew Spence. And when was the last time Drew Spence actually showed up for Jamaica? Showed out, I should say, um, instead of showed up. Showed up, make it seem like she's declined. She has not declined opportunity to play for her country. So there we have it, Drew Spence there. Um, we were in the number 24, and you can see that that was back in, if I scroll up for you, this was back in October. Now, you all remember this nil-nil friendly, um, exciting game. Red card there for Costa Rica inside the six minutes. And um, this was a frustrating game. Red cards, a couple yellows flying here and there. What we saw this one, four ye um, yellow cards there for our starting 11. We also had a few players um, come on as substitute. Chinelu Asha, Sashana Campbell, Trudy Carter and Shade Olomolokun as well. Um, so that is how we look there last time round when Drew Spence uh, linked up with her teammates. We also had Paige Bailey Gale. I know a couple of you were excited to see to see Paige Bailey Gale on that occasion. Um, also Vianne Sampson. Some of you excited to see the likes of Vianne Sampson, as was for Jade Bailey, Jade Bailey of Liverpool. Just a reminder there, Jade Bailey and Liverpool are the newly crowned queens of the championship in the English um, second division there. So that means Liverpool women will be coming up to the Women's Super League, the FA Women's Super League. So they've gone to the big leagues. Congratulations once more to Jade Bailey. And Liverpool, um, Liverpool women, they'll be coming up to the Women's Super League, their top flight of English football. And as you can see, they also have the Swaby sisters. Again, guys, I know these two names right here, Drew Spence and Rebecca Spencer, they are similar. I know I've made a mistake on um, pronouncing their surnames, um, but yes, it is Drew Spence. Just a gentle reminder, it is Drew Spence and Rebecca Spencer. If I go over to some of you are still asking, you guys really want to know about Drew Spence, the latest on Drew Spence, don't you? Okay, I think I've kept you guys waiting long enough. It's been one hour. I've kept you guys waiting long enough. I'm going to take off this shared screen and go through some of your comments as well whilst I give you guys the latest. So as I was saying, before I came on air, before I hit the live stream, that's why there was a little delay, guys. I was supposed to do this live stream around 11.30 and I saw something and I was like, okay, I need to make a phone call. What's going on with Drew Spence? Um, go back over and actually read that team announcement for you guys, just to add a bit of context. I know some of you are probably wondering why are we talking so heavily about Drew Spence and no one else. Yesterday's show was pretty much all about the return of Marlo Sweatman and also Paige Bailey Gale as well. Tonight, much of the focus is focused on Drew Spence. If I can actually get up my team sheet there to give you guys a read through. Read through this team sheet with you guys once more. I could leave it on the screen and let you read it on your own, but it's not the same, is it? So let me go ahead and bring back up that shared screen and let me go and hit that team sheet for you guys hopefully you guys can hear me 
Um, if you cast your eyes on the top of the screen, you would see these two dates there. Um, do keep your keep keep an eye on the kickoff times because these two dates will change to the 10th and the 13th if you are based in the UK. I'll give you a reminder later on that as for the timings for these two kickoffs. So as you can see there, we kick things off in this window. This would be the April window against Cayman Islands and subsequently on home soil against Dominican Republic. Last two games in our 2020-22 CONCACAF women's qualifiers so the team sheet is as follow the return of Paige Bailey Gale, Marlo Sweatman, Mariah Gray, Yasmin Jameson, Sashana Campbell, Khadija Shaw, Trudy Carter, Sydney Schneider, Tierney Wiltshire, Kiki Van Zanten, Tiffany Cameron, Chinilu Asher, Shade Adamolokun, Alison Swaby, Chantel Swaby, Vian Sampson, Kayla McCoy, Rebecca Spencer, Jordi Brown, and Michaela Days. So you guys would have noticed that I didn't give a mention to Drew Spence. Um, Actually, and here is the big man. Let's bring him all on screen because I know that he's eager to know this one. Right in the nick of time, Drew Spence. We're talking about Drew Spence, guys. Um, so as I said, I made that phone call. I was just as puzzled as you guys when I look back at the team sheet. I was like, did I make a mistake last night? No, I didn't. Made a phone call and I said, hey, what's going on? I noticed that Drew Spence is in training. And um, good news, guys, that yes, it is the latest picture and she is on home soil with Jamaica. But unfortunately, it is just for training purposes, as I was told that there is still a hold up there with regards to her documentation. Whether that's Mr. Vin Blaine holding his cards close to his chest, I guess we're gonna have to find out when we have the, that imminent, imminent press conference followed by the kickoff against Cayman Islands. I trust that he isn't actually holding his cards close to his chest. And I'll take what my source has told me that it is trusted information that Drew Spence is in Jamaica training with the team and she won't be able to play against Cayman Islands or against the Dominican Republic. And that is due to documentation reasons. But let's not focus on the negatives. Let's focus on the positive. Huge, two huge positives there coming out of the Reggae Girls camp with the return of Miss Marlo Sweatman and also Miss Paige Bailey Gale as well. Mr. Mikey Ballin and Mr. Richard Stevens, how are you guys feeling? And guys in the comments section as well. I tell you what, we don't want to miss out on the comments section. I'm just having a little um, peek at what people are saying. Um, the likes of a shout out going out to Everton Jackson, uh, who asked me, did I miss out on uh, Chinyelu Asher in terms of um, those players that... Um, really wet the appetite not at all in fact asha gets so much attention i i i we're, we're spoiled for choice we're spoiled for choice but asha is absolutely a a, a a diamond in in the not too rough of roughs no she is a, a star player a talented player and i love the humility you see i mentioned star player and then i i got off that quick because this is a team that ultimately and ideally i like to and want to have a desire to see them really, truly united because a united team of mind and of action really can do wonders. And I think with the confidence that they're gathering, hopefully at their clubs, um, and they're, they're, they're all over the world, diverse, Scotland, Finland, Sweden, Hungary, America. I mean, diverse but I really want them to believe in themselves. I hope the coaching is of the highest order. And when they come to represent the reggae girls, I hope that Vin um, brings the coaching acumen and tactics that makes this team as robust <clears throat> and as competitive, not only on the, in the CONCACAF uh, 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 tournament and circuit, but on the world scene, because I think that this team can, you know, really do some really good, good things and um it's going to begin with that one-on-one -on -one with the dominican republic i tell you I'm, I'm, I'm just getting really excited um for just just thinking about it because the campaign you know thus far uh in, in this current um qualification period has really been exciting but there were there were you know one or two questions uh warren webster 
big up and respect to you, sir. Uh, I know that you're already asking questions such as, you know, should we be careful with the amount of minutes that um, Bunny Shaw gets uh, versus the likes of Cayman Island? We don't want to be flirting with the yellow card situation and a potential injury because the Dominican Republic is the big game. They've already got a goals advantage, and there were there were some 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 voices of um concern where the reggae girls were concerned in that they were expected to trounce some of the teams such as Grenada and Bermuda um, by bigger margins. And I thought, wait a minute, we don't want any toxicity coming in. The girls have done what they had to do. The coach, Mike, you might know something more about the coach as well as your good self. He was coming in for a little bit of criticism in terms of his uh, credentials and ability. And of course, we, we know that there's been some drama uh, regarding the, 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 the last uh, coach for the reggae girls. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm just looking for Jamaica to showcase their ability in the competitive arena. And the Dominican Republic cannot be underestimated, but I'm really looking forward to that clash. We've seen the already the, 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 the world rankings. I had a good look at it earlier uh, today, and I was pleasantly surprised uh, that um, Jamaica seemed to hold a healthy advantage, good people, a healthy advantage over the Dominican Republic in terms of world ranking and ability. And I'm confident, especially playing at home, uh, I, but by the way, Crystal, is it going to be at? Uh, would it be at the national stadium, or is it because of the um, the uh, athletics that's going on? Will it be at Sabina Park? I mean, the, the the game will be next week Sunday for us Saturday, so it should be all clear by then. If you're talking about boys and girls champs, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, that, yes. you, that that that, that oh. champs champs from history doesn't last one week, so we should be done and dusted by then. No, the, I um, think it concludes on the. I'm hearing it started today and maybe concludes on the the Saturday or Friday or Saturday. Which but but which we're playing we're before. playing against Cayman Island this week. Aren't that's we? that that that's true. We're playing Cayman Islands, which is away away, and then we're going to be there on <coughs> Tuesday. Mikey, have you got some information? I just wanted to know. I just think yes. home advantage will be good um, for the, the, the game reggae will girls. Played, but where will it be played? Sabina Park. What's the reason for it being played? Because at, what um, happened when you when you have boys and girl championship, they shot put the javelin and the um. <laughs> so you're the, talking the about discus. separation then, right? Yes, because the field going to be bumpy. They have to water the field, level it off, get all the bumps out. Because yeah. the shot put put a lot of bumps in the field. Yeah. So in the center of the field, so that is why it is playing at Sabina Park, and Sabina Park is maybe a better field than the stadium because Sabina Park was relayed in 2007 for the World Cup and it's sandy. Yeah. The only problem is they have like six pitches, but I'm sure they're going to put the field in a way that it only maybe affect maybe one pitch and they haven't played any cricket on it for quite some time. So the whole place is supposed to be green now. I mean, it, going... it looks good in training. The pitch looks yeah. good in training. Because so it's, okay. a, it's a sand-based field. Yeah, I don't think the national stadium is a sand-based field because this field was put in in 2007 for the 2007 Cricket World Cup. Yeah. So that that is the reason why. And Sabina Park is maybe a little smaller than the stadium. The field may be a little smaller than the stadium field. So it I does, mean, it does look smaller. I'm not sure about the estimate in size, but it does. Yeah, uh, it, it look does. Smaller. It, it may be a bit smaller. Um, because they're going to play a one part, a one side of the field towards the, if you know, somebody in the part, the Kingston Cricket mm -hmm. Club side, I heard they were going to play. Well, I used to see put soccer played on the other side towards the 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 the, uh, the beach area. So oh. uh, football, as I said, soccer football played on the other side usually, or they play in the center with the pitches in the center for like schoolboy football. Yeah, that was the last match I watched. Um, there was a final, wasn't there? It was a final I was watching. Um, schoolboy, I think it was JC um college um final. Yeah, but I think it was a derby on that occasion. Um, and it looked fine to me. Um, yeah, it's a it's a smooth it's, it's a level field perfect. because the only thing on that field is a cricket ball. So yeah. cricket ball is not going to leave a lot of dents on it. So, yeah. uh, so I, I don't that, think it's actually um, a uh, disappointing um, position to be in because um, it's not as if it's a case of we're going to be having less fans. Um, so I don't think it's disappointing. Yeah. Come to think of it, when you look at the field, um, the, the pitch actually looks in better condition. 
yeah, and they're already training on it as as we speak. The only thing is that if it, the uh, the fans may be further away from the field than at at, at the stadium. I don't I don't think it would be that of a difference. I mean, one of the stadiums that we should know by now that is definitely a athletic stadium is the London Stadium, so the home of West Ham. So yeah. when I go to the London Stadium, it is it is very distant away. Um, so From you're the, right in yeah, some yeah. sense, Mikey. But I think um, fans, West Ham fans, they they're more than used to that. So if you have a habit of going to the home of cricket where our our team is concerned, yeah. then that should just be second nature. Yeah. That should be nothing for you. Yeah. And I, 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 go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. No, no. I was going to talk about my player. If you talk about your, you spoke about your player. My player is Van Zandt. I like that lady. Really, Van Zanten? Yes. Oh, Van Zanten. Sorry, Oof, I don't get the name wrong. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's, it's yeah, I, I'm going to call her Vanny. <laughs> Kiki. <laughs> Kiki Vanny. Kiki. Well, I've seen her play college ball. She's very good, but she haven't got a full run yet. And I, I know she's young, and the coach is not used to her. And but she got what maybe twenty minutes in the first game. Who was against Bermuda? Hopefully she, she gets a get. Hopefully she gets a game in um in the in the um Cayman game. On as we come to Bunny Shaw, if we have a four goal lead at halftime, I would take her off and sit her down because I don't want to get her yellow card. Mm-hmm. That's that the straight. That is just a straight. And any other player that's on a yellow card, a starter. If you have a four zero five zero lead at halftime, you take them off because what's going to happen? Bermuda is going to tie with DR, so we just have to tie or <laughs> win the game. So what, Mikey? You can see into the future. Yes, I I went to this reader woman yesterday. <laughs> oh God! Oh God! <laughs> Mikey yeah. said it with such confidence. Mikey said, "What's gonna happen is we yeah. are going to tie with Bermuda." Right. I went to this reader woman yesterday, but she couldn't give me a lot of number, but she could give me the, the, the results of the games. You understand? Not a thing for her. Not a thing for her. Yeah. Hail of Island Cup, by the way. Hail of Island Cup. Hail of Hot Chili. Travis, big up. Um, and yes, the so, comment section. I'm having a look. We, we, we've got some good people in the house. Please hit the like button. Hit the like button and subscribe yeah. if you haven't done it. Hit that like button. You're in the house. You're warmly welcome. Show your love and appreciation. I, for I, I have a question for you. Hit I have a question button. for you two people. You think that Sydney is not relegated to second string? I don't. Oh, that's an interesting choice of word there, Mister Ballin. Really well, I, well, I, I, I was a goalkeeper. I was a goalkeeper, and I was second string a couple of times, so I know. So, yeah, so. um, I think, I think, and I think it's to no fault of her own. I did touch on Sydney Schneider on last night's stream in the sense that class is permanent. Interestingly, when she was at the World Cup, she was one of the most talked about players. Period. Full stop. Not just for Jamaica, but just overall um, in terms of her abilities and what she was putting on display. Mm -hmm. I think it's just unfortunate that things haven't gone according to plan at club level, which is why we've seen her move club recently, haven't we? And we touched on um, Sydney Snyder, Sydney, Sydney Schneider. Sometimes yeah. something yeah. of a tongue, um, tongue twister. Um, Sydney Schneider exactly going over to Kansas City, current day from Washington, and um, is she you know, starting? Best of luck, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it isn't that that isn't the case. I'll say so far, it isn't the case so far. Um, we well, did actually look at a couple of her games recently, so we can actually bring that up. I think it's, it's just like you said, you know, Mikey, you've been in that position before. I said last on last and last night's show that with the goalkeeping position, unlike the old uh, outfield position, that is one of the most toughest positions on the field to actually claim full ownership. Because when you go into a team, nine out of ten times, they already have a number one, right? It, uh, so just, yeah. just, to pick it, just to say something, when Andre Blake went to Philadelphia, he was on the bench for about two or three years. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not surprised. Before he actually became the starter. And the first year he really? became the starter, he got the, the number one goalkeeper in MLS, yeah. So, so when you come in out of college and you have an established goalkeeper, it's hard to remove that goalkeeper. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I'm sure um, the same thing in the premiership too. 
but I, I i i love your question i definitely love your question like i said i've been keeping tabs on sydney and kansas city um i think i should probably bring up this sh uh, shared screen for you i guys. think i think what spencer is the goalkeeper right yes yeah spencer um, is the goalkeeper so i think what spencer is beating her out on is footwork and how she distributes the ball. Game time. I think it's more um game game time. There's a little no. bit of rustiness there with with Sydney at the moment. Mm. Again, you can just put that down to the. Is fact Spencer that starting for Tottenham, or she's on the she's, bench? She's starting. Okay, but I she's think also, I just think that she has a better. She distributes the ball better than Sydney does. Mm. So she's like Sydney a, had a reputation like a, for staying on the line. She's she, she, uh, one of the criticisms. One of the the observations was that Sydney had a tendency to um stay on her line um not quite dominate the area uh as as rebecca does and as mikey says she seems to be much more confident um and able and willing to distribute uh with her feet uh yeah. in, in 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 the game so in terms of uh, a style stylistically she she brings um a little something different compared to sydney but i think they they both got uh, strengths and i think that you know jamaica are blessed with two quality keepers and i'm sure sydney will have noted that um rebecca's um ability uh with ball at feet is something that is drawing the attention uh of of, of both her club and um the national the national uh, selection uh panel so i i think um you know they, they can only spur each other on and hopefully that's yeah. the case and uh, raise their standards definitely sydney will get better if she gets starting time of course, game club. time. Nothing That's beats game what time. I'm saying. And we've, so we've got to understand. And got she's young. Yeah, exactly. We've got to understand that. She, I think she's like, what, 22 years old? Um, yeah. that's How old is Spencer? How old is Spencer? Spencer is 31. So, you know. So, Sydney, so, so Sydney has two more work up in her. Yeah, two or three more work up in her. Yeah. 100%. So, if she only decides to start a family. Yeah, she's, yeah. she's got a couple um work up cycles in her for, for, for certain. Yeah. So, she have a couple. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, you want to go with your best goalkeeper. You don't want to go off, um, what do you call it, uh, your favorite. <laughs> you want to go off who is the best person in the between the sticks. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I think, think I think Rebecca would probably be Rebecca. I'd probably uh, Rebecca is probably the one likely to start, but that's no slight on Sydney. Um, but no, whoever starts, not, not, I don't think anyone is expecting, again, um, it's not, you know, to be um, discrediting Sydney's capabilities and abilities, but I think based off form, and I'm trusting that's what the manager puts it down to, but the majority of the players that actually play for a club will be um, based off form as well. And at the moment, it's probably best to stick with what he's worked with. Yeah. Um, Because at the moment, we're, we're, we're in a fairly decent position but the ship could be rocked and you don't want Sydney to be on the back end of that because you don't want to put her in the firing line or to throw her under the back under the bus so for that reason I think we're going to be sticking with Rebecca Spencer and I want to say one more thing and maybe people in the chat may not agree with me but the best footwork goalkeeper in Jamaica is Spencer both male and female that's a great show. Mike, you come like you just come in and strike a match and say, you know, watch the world place bondong. No ah, man, ah, people ah, hear ah, the ah, truth. <laughs> people have to hear the truth. I mean, it's a, the it's truth. a great show. It's a great. It's a. It's it's a. It's a the great. Best it's a great show. Goalkeeper in Jamaica, both male and female, is Spencer. Mikey said that goes for both male and female. Guys, that is the words of Mr. Mikey Ballin, not my and, words, and Mr. Mikey if, Ballin. I can see the chat. It asks, see if anybody went Owen, Owen says 100% agree with you, see? Mikey. There you go. Fabian, Fab, Fabian Full, hope I pronounce your name right there. He says, we agree with you. See? See, man, you see we know things, but we not say it. Because Joe Fee <laughs> said, hurt man feeling. But man, if I work on them footwork, that is Both. We have, we have, we have, we have a um. What do you want to call it? It's a counter response there for you, Mister Balin. Um, what is it? Good. I can't see. So Blay, you ready Blay, for me? I can disagree with you, but Blair wants you to know that Mister Balin, Sydney, stop two goal in the World Cup. He's just letting you know that. I didn't say nothing. I didn't say anything about keeping. I said footwork. <laughs> I didn't say anything about stopping. I said footwork <laughs> and distributing the ball. 
you say? know what it is it's, it's it's an interesting conversation to have because what just what that goes to show is that we have a good squad depth and um in most of the positions that we've seen so far in terms of substitute we've seen a few like like for like substitutes where the outfield players are concerned um so at least at least we don't have to look back and be fearful you know if, if, if there is a scenario where sydney steps up i'm not going to be sitting here and be panicking hand in mouth because i know what she's capable blow up so i wouldn't yeah. be making with um sydney schneider okay one more thing for that gentleman who just said something about sydney what about the goalkeeper in the last world cup that got us there in the penalty shootout with panama she saved a couple of balls too oh, oh you know you're talking about what? one of my favorite players i'm not going to be what's her name again maybe i should mention name miss nicole mcclure that's who you're yes. referring to right of course so let's let's get keep it real and bring her name up too in the picture don't I like leave her that. out don't leave her out I, I, I like that like football. I I might not like it. Well, I I'm, like sure, that I'm sure I'm sure he didn't remember that. If we had saved them penalties in the Panama game, we wouldn't be where we were. We wouldn't get to where we get to France. Legend, legendary status. Legendary okay. status. There you go. Yeah, I mean, legend. all the all the. I mean, these you know, everybody that represent their country, they have to be at a certain level, and they all should be revered. Because you represent your your national team, so both male and female. I'm not putting on anybody, but I'm just. I just want to repeat it again. The best goalkeeper distributing the ball and footwork is Spencer. That both the male yeah. and the Full female. Respect. Yeah, man. I want to ask you respect. something, Mikey, and yes. also um, Richard as well. Guys in the comments section as well. Is there room for Miss Nicole McClure in this um, setup? Mind you, I said set up. I did not say to bring her into the team. I said set up. Is there room for Miss Nicole McClure in this reggae girl set up? What capacity and what capacity are you on the coaching capacity. Um, uh, uh, okay. goalkeeper coaching capacity? Who is the goalkeeper Mikey? coach now? Who is the goalkeeper coach now? I don't know who's the goalkeeper coach. I need to actually bring up that whole whole list there for you. But aside from that, um, is there room for Nicole McClure? I, I maybe not this cycle, capacity. maybe the next cycle because she's just getting her badges coaching. I mean, assistant coach at the college that we're I can't remember what name of the college is where she's coaching now. Princeton, so, Princeton University, Princeton, right? So, therefore, she's just getting her feet wet. So, let's let you get more experience in the coaching area. You don't want to rush anybody because you want her to get, let's say, her grades then, if you want to put it that way. And when she gets to a certain level. And we can say, okay, maybe she can be the goalkeeper coach for the females she, or the males. She has actually moved on from Princeton University, but that's a story for another day. I don't want to dive too much into that, but she's moved on from Princeton University. But okay, let's take it a step further. Let's let's look long term. I'm going to try and get that um, delegates there for yeah. you, um, the coaching setup and all the staff, because there was an um, announcement in the last press conference. So I'm going to see if I can bring that up for you. Yeah. The, he um, brought in three coaches, one from England, one from America, I think, or something like I that. Saw, I saw another coach on the yes. announcement list, right? Uh, it's yeah, make... a British coach. He, he's, he's speaking for this camp? Yeah, for this. For, for this, this yeah. camp, he, he is Scottish. I did a little background. Scottish, yeah, Scottish, Scottish, so, yeah, Scottish, sorry. He's Scottish, yeah. and I did probe the question of, you know, why is he here type of thing in a positive way obviously um mm -hmm. why is he here but i was told um quite clearly um that he isn't here to take the gaffer's job kind of funny because that didn't even come to mind i was just assuming um i was just wanted to know i should say uh, why is he being brought into the into the setup i well, think the same thing i'm to blame like what happened to a tapper i'm just being troublesome <laughs> I can't see it happening. Um, because, like I said, when I asked the question, that was the first response that he's not yeah. coming to replace the gaff. And I was like, well, I'm, you know, that didn't even come to mind. I just wanted to know why his name is actually being mentioned, um, where the reggae girls are concerned. Uh, I mean, so let me try and see if I can get that up. If, if he's start. good, if he can help make them better, that's that's good. The reason why I chose to ask that question is because of his CV. His CV is quite broad. You know, you have those travelers in terms mm -hmm. of the players who go from one club to the next and so yeah. on. Um, yes, I get that vibe from him. So that is the reason why I asked him, because what I don't want this to be is just a run out or preseason teaser. You know, if, if somebody's coming on board, I 
on board. I feel like they should be here for the long run. It should be a succession um, planning, nothing short term. So that's the reason why I actually asked that question. See so if I can actually get up those um, I, the names of the coaches there for I, you. I, and I must also say that the schoolgirls are playing football in Jamaica, but it's only 12 teams out of, and Jamaica have at least, I mean, they have a much more high schools than the girls high school than that. And only 12 teams, I guess because there's coming out of COVID, so maybe next season they will have maybe a full roster of teams. All right. So, which, is, which, is, which is a start, which is a start. It, it, it's a start enough. indeed. Indeed. Yeah. I'd like to take this opportunity to just um, acknowledge um, those in the comment section. They always make uh, a fine part of the show. Hail up to um, Coach Minzy, Coach's desk, uh, Wayne Evans, uh, big up. And a great good evening, Mr. Dre Owen Owen Everton. Everton, he's been making a few comments um, this evening, including um, confirming the venue of Sabina Park. I wonder, Everton, did you get your name from a, a certain blazing West Indian cricketer? Everton. Everton Weeks, perhaps? Great name, no, great no. name, but a pleasant good evening. He, oh, yeah, sir. He got it. He, no, I think it's Everton Mattis. Uh, Everton Mattis. Who is this? Yes. He played for the West Indies, but only two or three games. <laughs> only two. He's or Jamaican. He, he's only, he's Jamaican. I, the the name vaguely rings a bell. Uh, Mr. Weeks. He's of very course, tall and legendary. Slim. Very tall and, and slim. Respect to Early Everton, uh, Mathis. Everton, you may Early. be able to confirm where you get that name from, sir. But we we, we give thanks and praise. Uh, hey, Mikey, are you excited yeah. um, about the forthcoming fixtures? Uh, Cayman Island um, up first. And then, of course, well, the this, this, Dominican this is how Republic. I see it. This is how I see it. Jamaica got to score at least, you know, they have, to, they should score at least 12 goals on Cayman. And then that would bring them about level, I think, with um, with, with DR. Right, because we play in Cayman, in Cayman, and to me, if I'm just saying if Bermuda can give them six, we supposed to at least give them nine. But that's how football works. We know that. But I'm just saying, you know. And I, like I said, you know, I think that Bermuda is going to show up for the game against DR because of bragging rights. I mean, if they beat them, I mean, uh, even if they beat, um, if if Bermuda beat DR, DR is still going to finish ahead of them because of goal difference, more than likely. So uh, if they beat them, then DR will have to play an open game or tie with them to against us. They'd have to play attacking game because they would be a point behind or two points behind. So they have, would have to play for the win and that would leave them open in the back. Did you say, I've got two questions. Uh, you just uh, just put another one in my in my head. Yeah. I, I wanted to get the, the clarification on the goal difference situation. Uh, is it overall goal difference? So uh, it's not a case of head to head um, between Dominican Republic potentially and Jamaica, is it a goal difference against all teams that could yeah, so, determine who, who 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 finishes top? Is that is that right? Right. So if let's say let's say DR beats Bermuda, and we only beat Cayman, let's say four, then and then we tie with DR. DR goes through because they have a better goal difference. Okay. So goals, irrespective, come the end of the campaign, goals difference. Matt. Right. Would be a, be a right. Well, let's, I'm not, let's go, I'm not let's, overly let's concerned. I'm not no, overly concerned, no. but I'm glad I'm glad for that clarification. The let's, second let's, thing that you shot me before you say anything else, Mike, 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 yeah. did I hear? I don't want to mess with your program, but I want to get you clear. Do you suggest that Dominican Republic could actually drop points against Bermuda? Is that what you said or, or yep. did I get you wrong? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yes, you're, I'm, I'm right. Yes, you did. Yes. Uh, I think we, we, we need to go to the um the commenters and Crystal. Crystal, can you please? Wow, hey, Bur Mikey, Bur you, you, you're not a man who likes to sit on the fence, but that's a shocker. I was, I that's was, I was trying to find this list there for you guys with the, um, with the coach. I think they made a mistake because on the list that uh, was provided to us for the last camp, where yes. it's got all the players' names and beneath it, it has our... Head coach, um, which was obviously Mr. Vin Blaine, um, assistant coach, Everton Edwards, Clive Wedderburn would be the goalkeeper coach. Beneath it, it's the officer, San, um, Sanford Carabin. But I mean, the press, press officer that we've always communicated with has always been uh, Mr. Earl Bailey. 
So mm-hmm. seem that there might be a slight confusion there. With that, with that, um, I'm just wondering if the rest of the names attached to these positions are accurate, because definitely um, the press officer that we've been dealing with is Earl Bailey, not San Sanford Carabin. Um, so I can go through that list there for you guys. You guys should already know that the press of the the head coach is Mr. Vin Blaine. Um, like I said, assistant head coach Everton Edwards, goalkeeper coach Clive Wedderburn, Wedderburn, sorry, and Sandria Codlin is the physiotherapist. Doctor, looks like it's Gillian here. It's a little bit blurry, but it looks like it's a Gillian Lawrence. Um, physical trainer Jason Henry Kitman. Ronald Watson, that's not the kitman that, or maybe it is because Jamaicans go by nickname. So maybe it is Ronald Watson and field officer Tony Cohen. And like I said, it says press officer Sanford Carabin, but I've not dealt with a San, um, Sanford myself. Um, so well, sure if there was a mistake. Well, for me, well, cr- Crystal, me, you, need to be dealing with Mike. you need to be dealing with Mike. Mike, you're not, I'm not going I'm not gonna let you off the hook, by the way. I'm not going to mess with the program. What's he done? Because I was focused on, on his request. What have you done, well, Mr. Batman? Well, I, I, I know that you were otherwise distracted, Crystal, because if you actually got wind and caught wind of what Brother Mikey had just said, I'm sure that you would pipe up. So I'm giving you the opportunity, Crystal, to pipe up. <laughs> Mr. Mikey Bailey has suggested that the Dominican Republic, and for those who are asking the question, what's the status, who's playing at home and away? The Dominican Republic, I believe, are playing at home Mikey, do you hear me? Yes. I believe they're playing Bermuda. at home to, to Bermuda, and he's suggesting right. that Bermuda are going to take points off the Dominican Republic, which will leave them having to win in all likelihood the game against Jamaica. Crystal, do you see the Dominican Republic not doing anything other than taking the full quota of three points off the Bermudans at home? I'm all ears. It's an, it's an interesting point there from uh, Mikey. I told you, Mikey just struck a match before he came on here. He's really struck a match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, be, he's been <laughs> a, a <laughs> nice little <laughs> something but, under there. On I, I understand. I fully understand where he's coming from. Because if I put back on that shared screen for you guys uh, once more, or maybe I could just jog your me- our memories. If we are being honest with ourselves, Please was do. that Please first do. game against... Bermuda, because our first game on home soil, um, and bring that up for you guys. Maybe you guys can remember how that game panned out and the fact that it took us a while to actually get within our strides um, just before the opening goal against Bermuda, which is the opponent that Mikey's um, speaking about. The only, the only disadvantage Bermuda had in this round is because all the games they had to play away. So let's go ahead they, they and look a home at court. Bermuda. This is how it looked last time round against Bermuda. First games um, out for Jamaica again on home soil. And this one, this one actually was actually played at the National Stadium. And as you can see there, it was Jody Brown with the opening goal inside the 21st minute. And we doubled the lead through Trudy Carter in the 31st minute. Then we all know how this one panned out. I'm a little bit of a frustration there. And we had Khadija Bunisher double double there for Khadija Banishaw in the latter stage of that game. Um, if we're being honest with ourselves, um, Bermuda held their own, held their own despite mm-hmm. of the result. That 4-0, I don't think that was a reflection, if we're being fair to Bermuda, that perhaps wasn't a fair reflection on their behalf. Most certainly, without trying to sound biased, it's a case of the superior yeah. team getting the better of you. But Bermuda most certainly hold their own and they're not going to be a feeble side against um Dominican Republic based off what I saw against us I don't expect them to be cowards and let Dominican Republic run rings around them let me tell you my reason for this Bermuda has a couple college players on their team so does DR Bermuda also have a couple British players on their team and that is experience so DR have a whole like you know that about six of the girls that play on the under 20 World Cup qualifiers play for DR and I think about three or four of them starts on the DR team, senior team. So we're talking about younger girls playing against an experienced team like uh, uh, Bermuda, which have more experience. And plus they're now playing together for like, this is going to be the third game together. And, you know, so I think that the more they play, Bermuda plays, the tougher they get. Just like Grenada. Grenada's gave us a, a little hard time. I mean, although we beat them, 
the second game they played much better than they played against DR. So they're getting better, you know. So I think that Bermuda is going to show up and make and and give them a run. That doesn't mean that DR can't beat them one zero or two to one, but I think it's going to be a tied game. Therefore, when DR comes here, they will have to play to win. And when you play to win, you leave your back open. If they beat Bermuda, then we will have to play to win if we don't score 12 or 13 goals against Cayman. I don't know what the goal difference is, what the difference, or whatever it is. You expect Cayman to, to roll over 12 goals, you say? Yeah. We, that's what we have to score. I didn't say we're going to score it. That's what we have to score to maybe get even on goal difference with DR. What's what's the current goal difference, Crystal? Could you just... Um, Let me... What, there's somebody the, um... there in the comment section, Mr. Sutherland there. I'm not ignoring you. I've actually seen your comment just lining up my tabs there. So when you see me looking away, it's because I'm trying to line up a couple of tabs to open on the shared screen so that we can all take a look at the table. Um, sometimes we may say things and people probably in disbelief in terms of ranking, they're probably thinking, surely not, and position as well. Okay, so let's just open up that shared screen once more. And if we go across to the Reggae Girls, and most importantly, what we want to look at is this game against Cayman Islands. Just a gentle reminder there, um, this is for Mr. Sutherland is asking, this, is the girls, are the girls looking to play? Yes, they are. If you're in the UK like myself and Richard, we'll be watching the girls um, take on Cayman Islands away from home on Sunday, this coming Sunday at 1 a.m. Just a gentle reminder, if you are based in Jamaica, the time difference is six hours. So please go ahead and do your maths if you are based in the states or canada so as you can see here we're all talking about the points so we are joined joined with six points there where dominican republic is concerned the obvious one here is the goal difference dominican republic have 13 as their goal difference and jamaica have nine if we look across or down the table where we have our next opponents which is the cayman islands they have minus 10. so that should add a bit of um context there when you come when it comes to drumming up your opinions so so therefore we need to score we need to if if i i we gotta see who's playing first who's playing the earlier game because if dr is playing an earlier game then they could see if dr beats let's say bermuda three i'm just saying so therefore we are behind by seven so therefore we have to get seven plus i don't know what what time the games are on saturday i don't know if both teams are no but isn't isn't them Aren't they playing before us? The day before yes, us? Yes, they are playing before us. They're definitely playing before us. Um, again, I'll bring that up for you guys. I think they're playing on the Friday. I think they're playing on the Friday against um, Bermuda. They're playing for Friday. To the guys in the comments section. I believe so, I therefore, Dominican. So, so, therefore, that's our advantage then. Because if they if they win and they're going to win by two or one, therefore, we know what we, we, we got to do. To the guys seven, there eight. in the comments section... Apologies if it sounds a little bit repetitive. Um, I did um, read out most of this yesterday or share most of the information with you yesterday, but I am aware that there are a few new viewers tonight. So for them, it won't sound repetitive. So apologies to those of you who might think that tonight's show sounds repetitive. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reopen that shared screen for you guys once more and look at Dominican Republic, as I've said, this is pretty much the blockbuster fixture when we face off against Dominican Republic. First up, though, on Saturday night, that is if you are based in the UK at 12 a.m., they take on Bermuda. So it's most certainly, most certainly worth a while if we keep an eye Saturday on Saturday night? This game um, turns out if you're based English in the time. UK. English That's time. That's all English, English time, Mr. Yeah. Valen. Midnight. So wait a second. So so what we play but Jamaica's playing on Saturday also, right? That's the game we're referring to. Jamaica will be playing Cayman. No, we're we're referring to um let's go back no, over to No, I just want to make get this correct. Jamaica's playing Saturday too, right? See, these times are really confusing. So Jamaica are playing um let's see what time Jamaica are playing. I think Jamaica are playing Sunday for me. So that will be um that will be Saturday for you guys. Um let's look at Oh, you... I see. Okay. And, and you, you said, see what I'm wait. saying? Yeah, you get to be mixed up with the British business. Okay, yes. This is Mr. Ballin. Mr. Ballin. Hold I on, let me look. On... I'm looking at my TV now. Hold on. I'm, Mr. Ballin, I, I... I keep on telling you guys, listen carefully, guys. When I read okay. out my times, I am reading it from 
the UK. British, yes. Which is why I keep telling you guys six hours ahead. All right. All so right. Let me, let, let me go back and read that for you guys. I don't know if you guys want some visuals. You might want some visuals to all. Um... Yeah, we, you know, we're getting all the eyes going bad. Right. So here we go again. Let's try that one once more. If you are based in the UK, right? Saturday, April the 9th, 12 yes. a.m., Dominican Republic takes on Bermuda. Okay. Right, the game that we're going to be focusing on and watching, the tenth oh. of April. Okay, okay, that's Friday night. That's if you Friday. are Friday if you are based in the UK, if you are based in the UK, Sunday the tenth of April, Cayman Islands host Jamaica. Right, let me repeat that one once more for you guys, um, in case there's any confusion. Saturday the April of nine. If you're based in the UK, I am six. If you're based in Jamaica, I'm in the UK. I am six hours ahead of you guys. All, all right? right. Six hours ahead of you guys. Dominican Republic versus Bermuda. That is going to be played on Friday for you guys. Please do the maths with your timings if you're based elsewhere. And we move on to Sunday, which will be a Saturday for you guys based in the States, Canada and Jamaica, where we will be taking on Cayman Islands. There's a lot of confusion, but I do try to be as clear. Right, as I, I get it. I get it now. I get it. So you get it, Mr. So, Balin? Yes. Yeah, so therefore, no, that's a Jamaica advantage there because it depends on how much. <laughs> if 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 Camp, if Bermuda do lose, depends on how much they lose by. So that's an advantage Jamaica by Jamaica playing the game the, the game the following day. Indeed, indeed. So if, remember to hit the so, button. Remember to hit the so like button. What, what hit would the be, like button. What, share the visibility, what, folks. What would be good if the game ties, and then that would put them under pressure because they would have to win or lose. If they tie or lose on on Friday, Friday, U.S. time, that that that's better for Jamaica. I was saying something earlier, uh, Mikey, that yeah. regarding the, the reggae girls, it's 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 a pleasure. Uh, and I think that what we need to do is just continually encourage positive vibes, positivity, and uh, a, a calmness around the team, um, because I think they've conducted themselves ever so well. They've really been a credit to Jamaica and the Caribbean, and I think that um, I think they can handle ha handle the business. It, it it could actually just be a case of one game at a time they've got to take care of cayman islands they can't underestimate and they've got to you know watch their p's and q's and do what they need to do absolutely they'll have um the advantage of knowing that they've seen what the dominican republic have done uh in their game but they're gonna have to concentrate on what they've got to do what they don't want to do is come a cropper come up a cropper and come up short and not be happy with what they uh produce so i'm hoping and wishing for a healthy camp I'm hoping for a, a united camp and the tactics will be right and that they go for the juggler um, as necessary, but they need to treat the Cayman Islands with respect. They won't be coming there to roll over. They will be the home team and um, it will be interesting. It will be interesting. I'm not going to underestimate anything. And I'm really looking forward to a good game of football with the reggae girls, hopefully, of course, coming out with the three points um, and leading into that um, uh, meeting with the Dominican Republic. I'm I'm really confident and I'm looking forward to Jamaica getting the upper hand over the Dominican Republic and that it doesn't actually have to come down to goal difference. So I'm really looking forward to all the games and hopefully we'll be able to watch these um, games live. I'll be looking at the um, uh, group Canada, Cayman Islands um, uh, game, which will be taking place. So, yes, it's it's, it's going to be an exciting week and a, a refreshing week. What 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 people what people must understand also is that Bermuda still has a chance to get to the next round. So they're going, they're playing for something. If Bermuda beat DR and we lose to to um, to DR, Bermuda may be in the business. So you got to look at it that way. To say Bermuda has something to play for. It's not like they're not, they don't have a chance. They still have a chance to qualify for the next round. I think the regular girls are going to be a very... They, I, I, they no, are a professional. Gonna, they're a professional unit, and all I the teams what, what, are going to be what, professional. So I think that whets the appetite, and it's going to be a case of 
you know, to the victor, the spoils. So I think it's going to be an excited um, period for football. And I'm I'm really looking forward to the games um, coming thick and fast over the next I, few days. And just 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 stay positive and um, we'll we'll hopefully have something to, to, to celebrate. I'm looking forward to the Bermuda uh, DR game because I'm going to watch it tomorrow. Definitely. I mean, on Friday, because I want to see Bermuda as one of my uh, British brothers or British sisters, or Caribbean sisters, you know, get the better of a of an ex uh, Caribbean team. I don't want to miss. <laughs> so I, I'm, I, support, I'm supporting for. I'm supporting for. I'm. I'm. I'm, my, I'm totally supporting. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna wear pink on Friday. <laughs> and I brought me the shorts. Huh? He, he's 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 really going for, it, isn't he, Crystal? <laughs> Mikey, ball, Mikey is balling today, guys. He is absolutely balling today. He's Listen. on a roll. He's got a spring in his step if, tonight. I can tell you, you that. If, if you have a show on Friday, I'm going to be wearing pink. Guys, I'll go let me know in the comment shirt. section because here we have Mikey that's putting me firmly in the in the spotlight. You see what he did just there, guys? He's basically telling me that I need to have a show on 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 Friday night. So, <laughs> so, so everyone gets to be wearing pink. Guys in the comment section, do you want me to do a live stream? Uh, Bermuda versus Dominican Republic on Friday night. It's all down to you guys. Carl, we'll be supporting Bermuda. We'll my be lovely co-host just draw me out. I wasn't expecting that from him, but he just draw me out. So let me know in the comment section. Do you guys want a show from me for this anyway. Bermuda versus Dominica game? Anyway, Crystal and Richard, I'm going to have to jump out again because I have to do the father the duty and go pick up my daughter from work and come back home. So if you're still on when I get back home, I'll jump back on. Girl dad. Is that what they call him? Girl dad, right? He's a girl dad. I love that. Love that. Yeah, so, travel, so, Mikey. so what happened is that if you guys, I've been listening in the car, but okay. if you guys are still on, I'll jump back on. We probably will still be on because there's okay. just okay. about 40 minutes. About 40 minutes. Uh, you're a right. top man, Mikey. You're a top man. You're a top man. And a well, top right. father. You Safe travel. You have to do it. You have to do it. What do you mean? Do. Yeah, man. All right. And cool, cool. Yeah. Guy Take dance. care, Mikey. Yeah. I like the cut of that man's jib, you know. I like his style. <laughs> I like his style. Yeah, man. Mikey Lively just every came time. And strike a couple match. Yeah, he has lovely energy. Just came and strike a couple of match. And there you go, he's off again. Hopefully he'll be back. Warren Webster said, if you love your mother and your sister and your auntie, mash up the like button, Crystal, losing some sleep to accommodate us. You know what to do. Mr. Warren Webster, special Big. love for you all the time, Warren. Yeah, Pick up yourself, the guys, in the comments section. Father Let's see what I you guys it. are saying. I max it, yes, resident over there on I max it. Um, with we'll the respect rest of every the other day. guys. See what you guys are saying in the comments section. Owen Owen says yes, but we will not be supporting Bermuda. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll be doing a live stream for you guys for that game, um, Bermuda versus versus um, Dominica Republic or Dominica Republic versus Bermuda, um, as it will be on their home soil there. Um, this one will be played on Friday. Um, so Saturday for me and Mr. Stevens, Mr. Richard Stevens, that will be at 12 a.m. kickoff if you're based in if you're based in the UK, like the rest of us, we are six hours ahead of you if you're based in Jamaica. If you're across the pond in the United States or in Canada, please do go ahead and do the math and work out the kickoff time where things are in your neck of the woods. So you guys are saying that, that you want a live stream. What about you, Mr. Richards? Fancy a live stream on Friday night or Saturday, I could say, for us? I'd, I'd be delighted. It'd be interesting. Um, I, I hope that I've got some visual because they've been showing the games, if I'm not mistaken, on YouTube. And I hope that um, remains the case. So um, I'd be happy to do a watch along. Are you inviting me? I am always, always. I, I think at this point, I don't need to give you an invite. The door is always open. Come in, put your feet up and stick the kettle on. I definitely don't need to give you an invite. <laughs> <laughs> my home is your home so go ahead and relax wonderful wonderful <laughs> wonderful thank you so much oh no that 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 would be delightful that would be delightful thank you so much i mean uh, what's your uh, you would actually expectation levels crystal expectation mm. levels how how have the reggae girls in your opinion dealt with 
um, expectation levels, um, maybe as far back as, well, not too far back, from, from the World Cup of 2019 and the, the lead up to the World Cup and qualifying. Can you give us a little brief history of, of how the reggae girls have been expected to progress and how they handled uh, expectations? <laughs> from the fans and the media, I guess, but That's fans an particularly. Question. Um, when you think of, you use a key word there, expectation. I think you have guys in the comments section there. Um, Travis McKenzie, I know him from the last World Cup cycle. And Tennessee Lewis, I just found out that I actually knew of Tennessee Lewis from the last World Cup cycle. And I think given that we were familiar with each other, it's safe to say, and the rest of the guys in the comment, se comment section who was there at the last World Cup cycle, it's safe to say that there was no expectation there from the guys at the top in regards to um, the reggae girls' achievements. And you can just um, identify that by the way they were supported, or I should say the lack of support from those at the top. There's a reason why you had the Sedella Mali come on board. There's a reason why you have the reggae girls' foundation and so on. So I think, you know, not to be disrespectful or dis discrediting towards the girls, but I think the, the support that they needed wasn't there. Um, now there is better support, and you can probably say that loosely better support there from the uh, Federation, but initially there wasn't any support. So if there was support, were there expectation? I think the expectation probably lies in the in the the fan base the supporters um when we saw what the reggae girls were capable of when we matched up their abilities and their um capabilities we could easily identify that this is a team that is worthy of backing i mean regardless of their capabilities and their abilities i think the fact that they done the jamaica black gold and green so effortlessly well that you know despite what was happening internally um, and whether or not they stood within a chance of qualifying for the last World Cup, I think given who they are, not just as footballers, but also as human beings, as people, we always um, expected them to to do the unthinkable because it was there for plain, uh, in, in plain eyesight that they could do it. The Federation probably didn't believe in them. Corporate Jamaica probably didn't believe in them. I'll leave that for them to decide. But the 12th man... I think um, the reggae girls fans know the reggae girls. I should say the reggae girls know that they have committed a have a committed fan base that is pretty much their ride or die. You look at the games um, in terms of number of um, turnouts. I remember when the reggae girls came over to the UK back in would have been October two thousand and eighteen. And um, they were at, they were in Nottingham. They were playing against Nottingham Forest women at the time. And they, that, and that occasion, that game was the um, highest turnout in terms of supporters turnout for women's football fixture played on that weekend. Um, so oh. that speaks volumes in Europe at the time. And, and that was just, obviously that's history. That's um, record breaking stuff there for the women's team. And that was just a, this was just a friendly. There was nothing there. Think about it. It's, it's club versus country, country versus club. It is the reggae girls senior national team. And it wasn't even their strongest matchup. It wasn't their strongest starting 11. No disrespect to the women who showed up on that occasion. But with that being said, again, bearing in mind that it was Jamaica, the country versus um, Nottingham Forest, the club, it was still a sold out game on that occasion. We had Freddie McGregor as well in attendance. That was special. We okay. had a few other um, names there um, um, in and around. Maps was there. Adrian Mariapa, he was there supporting the girls as well. So I think, like I said, the fan base have had expectations of the of the women's team. Yes, it's not a hostile fan base, thankfully. They're a soothing fan base, quite ex, um, accepting of the women's national team, protective as well. It's safe to say that the reggae girls fans are um, extremely protective of their women's national team, and rightly so. But for me, the, the fan base has always, always been there. I think that's the so fan important. base has always been there, as, well, as has the um, expectations. That's terrific, and it's it's it, it's a good vibe. It's a good vibe. I can see Fresh God has entered the the equation in the building. I wonder if he was there for the um, Nottingham Forest game. Fresh God, full respect, sir. 
full respect, fresh guy there. Big up, big up, big up. <laughs> and and Wayne Squire asking how you were feeling. You were a bit under the weather, weren't you, um, Crystal? Yeah. Um, I don't know what happened. I think, mm. I think we I actually think it was yeah, I think it was. Thank you guys for your concern and your present um and your um prayers as well. All the guys in the comments section, um, thank you for your prayers. I think what happened was um I ended up like I said, ended up closing off on that live stream um, for the Reggae Boys last game and literally just got ready, went to work. And I checked the weather and the weather said that it was 60, it would be 60 degrees. Not knowing that the weather, the, the, the weather is actually giving me the update for my current location based off where I am at the moment in East London. So I needed to make a trip to South London for work purpose. And um, I had my sunglasses. To be fair, I had on my proper winter coat, but because it said 16 degrees, I brought my sunglasses with me. Because I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have a good day. Today's going to be a little bit, you know, on the bright side. Kid you not, showed up in South London. It was chucking down with rain. I looked out the window and it was snowing. So you can pretty much summarize that. I've gone from work, working from home, where I'm in the comfort of my own house, in the warmth. And the one day that I stepped out for work, clearly I must have like caught something, um, whether that's to do with the change in the weather. And that just sent my head flying. And before that, um, a couple of days before I was doing the live watch along with the, for the reggae boys, I was having like back to back headaches. Um, and, you know, with headaches, you have to manage them because if you don't manage them, they can easily um, go into migraines. And that's what I was trying to avoid. So I was getting back to back headaches and the little knock on effect of that, you know, hot and cold weather. So I think that's what happened. And I was like, OK, I'm not feeling good. And the reason why I didn't push for a live stream was because of the ring light. And like I said, I had headaches. I had headaches for about like almost one week straight on and off. I did a live stream last Friday um, for another channel uh, over with the Pixelist guys. And I could just tell, I couldn't even, if you watch back the live stream, I was on there for maybe 10 minutes. And then I was telling the guys that I've got to go because my headache is coming back. So I just left their live stream. And by then I realized that I can't give you guys a weekend updates because I'm just getting headaches on and off and mm. not really feeling well, bit of a tight pain in my chest. Someone actually said to me, do you have COVID? I was like, I don't think it's COVID. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not COVID, thankfully enough. But yeah, felt rough for about a week, but feeling good now, though. Oh, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. And I, I hope some of the comments um, and well wishes of um kept you in good spirits and um perked you up i can see that is it tennessee who, who you mentioned earlier i think he's referring to one of the, the the games that got him hooked the game against haiti do you remember that in was the it in against, haiti he's like i think tennessee is referring to the game against did he say that that's, that was the one that got him hooked i'm actually looking it says he went to the game against Scotland. This was an interesting game here, Scotland. This was our last game, last friendly game there before we jetted off to the World Cup to make our debut. And this one was special because it was actually, um, we'll both be embarking on our first World Cup appearance where the women's team is concerned for both the reggae girls and um, Scotland. So that was a bit of a special, special game. Okay, I think you made mention of the uh, of a Haiti, the Haiti game, which I... I think I may have um, caught on YouTube. Um, but I think it was a little earlier um, to the, the the comment there. Um, no, it wasn't wait, Tennessee. one second there, Richard. No. Oh yes. Nothing to do with the with the record boys. I was feeling unwell way before I started. <laughs> <doing this. laughs> Nothing to do with the record boys. Um, I soldiered through those live streams, but I was feeling unwell before I did my record boys content last week. And it just so happened. I think what took me over the edge was the fact that I went out in the cold, bitter cold and snow, and that just made me feel worse. So, yeah, it's nothing to do with the reggae boys. Crystal, I wonder if I may... Uh, bless up Ian. Bless up Ian. Ian Campbell, full respect. Thank you. Remember to hit the like, share, and subscribe button. You are in the house. You are warmly welcome. Share the visibility. Help out Talawa TV. Help yourselves. We respect you. You respect us. We know that. Hit that like button, hit that like, the thumb button, share and subscribe and give thanks and praise. Crystal, I've got a question. I, I, I posed this question on another stream. In fact, it was, Warren, do you remember? I posed this question on IMAX it with um, Captain JD, full respect each and every time to 
to JD, um, the analytical boss. And the question I asked Crystal, and it was actually put to me that we shouldn't touch this with the proverbial barge pole. So may I ask you this question, Yasser? The question is, Crystal, promotional work, the promotional side, the publicity and marketing side of the reggae girls. Now, it's interesting because I, the question I asked at the, the time, and I'm going to put to you is, I've seen some publicity and promotional work by the reggae girls, and it involved uh, makeup, hair, hairdo, uh, lots of laughter and giggling. And the question was, and I'm going to put it to you, do you think that the feminine, female side of the reggae girls uh, should be put to the fore of marketing in terms of raising their profile? Or do you think they should keep it strictly or ostensibly football relating? If you're doing kick-ups, if you're doing... Should it be <laughs> football related or should oh, they okay. um, embrace have, the um, have... other aspects of their... Of their yeah, go, what, what, do you, what do you think? Or are you going to say... I have no I don't know. idea what you're referring to. Um, so I need you to actually repeat um, what you said for me because I, I don't actually um, know what you're um, referring to. Um, so, okay. So you said it's about makeup right players is that player wearing makeup or because yes, this, this one explored me okay uh, marketing i'm not i'm talking about mm -hmm. marketing promoting promoting um the, the women's game and so promoting the reggae girls um particularly but i have yeah. not seen too much on um, promotion um when it when it comes to um the women's game in general but i know so for example in england um oftentimes well ostensibly you your focus really i've seen the focus on the lionesses and their football achievements um when they're interviewed it's a one-on-one -on -one interview and they're they're just talking football but do you think the the more feminine side of of the women um in terms of um glamorous looks um, um a promotional shoot do you think that should be um promoted to um in, uh, raise the profile of the reggae girls or, or do you think, um, do you, would you have an issue with that? And do you think that um, for the benefit of the reggae girls to be taken seriously and credibly, credibly they should be um, promoted by looking at their achievements um, on, on the pitch, on the field and off the field? <laughs> um, so are we, are we talking about image here? We're talking about that, that, uh, Chris. Crystal coming through clear as I'm a trying, bell. There, to, you, there you go. Image, that's what we're talking about. I'm trying yes, to understand you as best as I can, and I'm trying to drum image. up different um, examples in my head. And I think it probably comes Please down do. to societal expectations. Um, one, trying to police a woman's body and try to tell us how we can and cannot behave. Um, I will say this. How many times have we seen high-profile marketing products marketing brands team up with high profile footballers where they're by which they're probably um probably promoting a perfume or some sort of cologne or some sort of shaving equipment and they are topless where is the where is the um uproar when it's the men's team it's the, it's the male, male players that are being pro promoted in such manner um i think there's always going to be politics around that conversation and again that comes down to societal expectation of how a woman should behave um of course there's nothing that we can do about it in regards to us being women i think it's more about the the individual again i have no idea who you're speaking about but i guess it's down to how the individual sees themselves and whether they are comfortable with whatever it is they're doing um because it's difficult to argue against somebody who finds always fully comfortable within the within their own skin and everybody shouldn't be comfortable within their own skin that's the reason why they say you know we must not and we should not discriminate against a person um based on how they carry themselves um so i think it probably comes down to comfort Again, if the player is comf comfortable to go in front of a camera and do whatever it is the person behind the camera is asking them to do. Aside from that as well, they have to probably touch base with their clubs. So is their club 
okay and or happy with them to be in this spotlight. Also, not just their club, but their uh, manager or head coach where their national team is concerned, are they okay with it as well? Because some of that, unfortunately, because there is that double standard where women is concerned, there might be a knock-on effect. There might be some penalties to pay um, because it isn't a level playing field um, where the women's and the male players are concerned in terms of what the male players get away with in comparison to what the female players get away with it's difficult to answer your question because i don't know which example i'm working with i don't know what player you're referring to i don't even know the situation even though you've tried to explain it don't know what it is you're referring to um but in terms of branding branding is a little bit of a tricky one you have to get the professional aspect right you have to get the balance of is the player comfortable again difficult to push back against what a player does if they are comfortable with what it is they're doing and also if their club see no wrongdoing in it and if their manager or their head coach at the international level sees no wrongdoing in it then there really and truly isn't an argument but um yeah i don't know what you're referring to so i, I don't even know if I, I can't really answer your question question to be honest with you no problem no 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 problem at all crystal um i, I just remember that there was it was watching one of the youtube a youtube video and there was a photo mm. shoot and music and um it was a photo shoot it was a photo shoot and there was music playing and uh the ladies were um dressing up i think it was different wigs and um uh, you know colored wigs and um they were having a good time but i think what you said was very interesting it's about feeling comfortable in one's I'm own I'm so confused, skin. sir. Um, was, is this about the reggae girls or is this just about a random, random... No, reg reggae girls. It was, the, it was the reggae girls. It was a reggae girls promotion. A reggae girls promotion? So who, who was doing the promoting? I, I'm not sure. I, I, I saw, literally, I saw it on, on, on YouTube. So it was, it was interesting. You, you know when you do special features, when people do features on... on, on individuals or, or teams and it was a it was a fun photo shoot so they were dressing up so it was behind the scenes and they were dressing up and um you know laughing and giggling it was very very, very interesting very interesting if so, i see so it i'll i'll I'm, i'll, I'll, I'm I'll so send confused, it over to you so i'm confused so are you but saying image, image is the, the thing that you, you're, I, you're are, are you are you saying that the reggae girls or the reggae girl was in a photo shoot or are you saying something completely different because i'm 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 lost for one some you've definitely lost me with this one i want you to be found crystal i want yeah, you to be found please, please so be <laughs> find me because I, I don't know like i said i can't answer your question because i don't know what it is you're referring to but if we're talking about image then yeah images um i don't think the the same rule applies to female athletes and that's across the board where sports is concerned um the, the men traditionally they can pretty much do whatever and get away with it when it comes to how they um how their body is marketed um in any given sport compared to their female counterparts um again i don't know what you're referring to so yeah yeah you've lost me with that one so i don't know what it is you're referring to but in in general would you would you have a comment in terms of in, if you're generalizing could one make it i think you've made actually a very good point which is unfortunate in a way that you say mm -hmm. that um the, the playing field um, can sometimes be what, It's uneven. Unfair. It's, it's, it's um, most certainly it uneven. Un, it's, un, uneven, it's yeah. A, it's not a level um, playing field. But, um, yeah, proceed with your, with your question. No, I, I, well, I think, I think the, 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 the marketing of the reggae girls, I think that they've got so much to bring. In fact, as I've said earlier, I think the reggae girls are such a, a great example because the way they conduct themselves, the interviews they give, um, mm -hmm. I, I think they're a great example in terms of diversity. Um, you know, th there seems to be very little drama. I mean, we've already alluded to the, the, the clubs that they play for. Finland, in Sweden, Hungary, America, Britain. Um, and and they're applying their trade in Scotland, you know, Bonnie Scotland, they're applying their trade. And they, when they come together, um, as a unit, there's a unity of spirit um, on purpose, and the vibe in the camp is is beautiful. Now compare and contrast that to the reggae boys. The comparison. I feel, I feel like there's something here that I'm just I'm 
clearly I'm I'm not in the I'm not in the known here. I'm reading the comments then. You might have to backtrack a little bit here, Richard, because I'm clearly Me? not in the known with um this whole marketing around the girls. Um I don't know if it's again individual marketing, um player to player or if it's the how the reggae girls are marketed from a federation standpoint. Um but I'm gathering but you can't leave a lady being topless between yeah, and um, judging by what some of the stuff that's been said in the comment section, I'm, I'm guessing that there's something here that I clearly don't know about. So you might have to just update me on whatever it is that I've clearly um, missed out on. Okay, no, no problem. If I if I find a link, I'll 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 I'll, I'll send it to you um um in, in in due course. But the the the, the in terms of the reggae girls, as I was saying earlier, just just alluding to. I think the reggae girls, I think they deserve a, as high a profile as they they can get because I think that what they bring to the party in terms of their footballing acumen and the way they conduct themselves um, and talk about the game and, as I said, compare and contrast to the reggae boys um, where there seems to be an issue in terms of, you know, all the, the whole thing about the foreign and local uh, players, uh, you know, that's been hugely frustrating. I mean, we're over here in England and... You know, we're, we're of Jamaican stock and we are pride of our heritage. And you'd think that, you know, we're all eligible to, to represent um, and we have a huge pride in representing Jamaica. But when you hear the issues around, you know, uh, representation and quota systems, it, it can be frustrating and irksome. And, you know, the, the JFF and, um, you know, what their priorities are in terms of having the quote unquote best uh, team on the pitch and best squad available. It's just really refreshing where the reggae girls are concerned. And back to the original question you asked me about how I got on board and what I love about um, uh, supporting the reggae girls. I think that the way that they conduct themselves and the way that they perform as a team and are composed, the way they actually actually are brought together, it seems as though it is the the best players available. The, the players that um, seem to. Um, uh, fit into the tactical requirements of the team. Um, there don't seem to be any um, bigger heads and big up, you know, and people who are feeling that they're superstars and they, they're not willing to do what others do. They seem to muck in together and I think they complement each other ever so well and they represent and they give of their all and they give of their best. That's why when it came to, comes to this goal difference um, uh, scenario, I'm cool in the gang. They are doing what they need to do to the best of their ability. And I hope that Vin um, just recognizes the talent. And I'm sure he does that. He has at his disposal and allows them um, and encourages them and supports them uh, as fully as possible to, to to perform. And I'm really looking forward to the, the, the coming days and the, the, the campaign ahead. I, I don't know if I'm sure you feel the same way. I'm just reading what some of the people are saying here in the um, comment section. Smith is saying you can't have a lady being topless versus a man being topless. There's different ways to take topless photographs. Even if the lady was covered when it is still a topless photograph, there will still be a negative um, backlash where that player is concerned um, in comparison to if a man was just taking a picture and showing their um, six pack. Even if the lady was, um, say, topless and she had her back shown towards the camera so only thing you can see is just their back and nothing else they would still be faced with a negative um backlash um given the sports that they play and so on um so like i said there's definitely not a level playing field there um but, uh, but regardless whether you're a male player or a female player you just have to work out what it what it is you want for your branding. You have to talk about what, what brand expectation you set on yourself um and just take it from there um i've sent you something there richard i don't know if you can see it from from your end oh is it in the private chat yeah it is okay i um if i can if i can i'm just gonna go through um the rest of the yes go 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 ahead but it go should ahead. be on billboards um, come on, business owner support. Yes, yeah, she should be on billboards. It's not. It's not just bunny. There's a host of reggae girls that is um, marketable. Um, 
see you guys are keeping some secrets there in 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 the comment section what's what's going on in the comment section clearly i've missed out on something whilst i was away over the last couple of days haven't i um clearly um it's funny because i had a similar conversation in terms of marketing about almost three weeks ago now um with someone who has she's um worked with one of the top 10 clubs in top 10 male football team in the premier league and we discussed marketing for men and marketing for women and yeah it was just we actually spoke about so many different stuff when it comes to you know what the male player can do and what the female player can and can't do so that's the reason why i um made those two comparisons there and yeah it does come down to societal expectations everybody knows what a man can do a a woman can't is it fair absolutely not but that's the way the world works that's the way the world is set up at the moment see somebody in the comment section speaking about bashing the the reggae boys nobody has bashed the reggae boys so um i don't know where you're going with that um nobody on here has bashed the reggae boys so you're definitely incorrect how can their reggae girls go up against canada and mexico in the rest well what should they do yes that's a step-by-step -step process isn't it that's definitely a step-by-step -step process mr warren webster i've seen your comment i don't think i can bring that one up definitely seen your comment yeah that's um yeah there's um there's there's matters there that needs to be sorted and addressed as a matter of urgency isn't it yeah i mean i, I don't disagree with you there um hot chili they definitely need to learn how to market their players both the male and female players as well um they need to get better at marketing them because they're not being marketed as well as they should and pretty much anything that has jamaica on it does well in terms of its selling abilities people always want to buy into jamaica jamaica can destroy any of these teams because we have the players to do so only thing is the problem is the defense yeah defense is our weakest area on the pitch i know we've drummed this home repeatedly on a number of um broadcasts so a little bit of an update someone in the comment section i'm sure they asked me to read out the team the squad announcement i'm gonna actually get back to reading the squad announcement before i do you can see that the banner on your screen says drew spence back with the reggae girls but in what capacity i'll give you a gentle reminder for those of you who already know um the situation regarding drew spence for those of you who are out of the loop um drew spence actually made the travel made the trip to jamaica where she pretty much ticked off her training session there with the rest of the squad um on the issue there only the concern there is that she's not part of the actual team announcement meaning that she isn't eligible to play against cayman islands and subsequently the dominican republic and that is due to paper work okay so let's go and actually um bring back up that shared screen there for you guys um let's see oh okay my shared screen was actually on already let's go down and look at that list with you guys so you can see the two names at the top there is Paige bailey gale and marlo sweatman both both players respect respectively have made their return back to the senior women's national side followed by mariah gray yasmin jameson sashana campbell khadija shaw trudy carter sydney schneider tierney wiltshire kiki van zanten tiffany cameron chinalu asha shade odomolukun alison swaby chantel swaby vian samson kayla mccoy rebecca spencer jordy brown and michaela days so that is how things stand um in terms of our national call up you guys would have noticed that alika keen alika keen she scored that rocket in the last window 
unfortunately, unfortunately, she is unavailable. Um, she actually missed the weekend game. So it was Eto FC, Tiffany Cameron's and Alika Keane's club took on Marla Sweatman, Victoria FC, and they lost 2 0. So Marla Sweatman walked away with three points um, over her compatriot, Tiffany Cameron. And for that game, Alika Keane actually sat that one out due to illness. I'm going to see if I can actually find out a few more details there um, for you, Owen. Owen did make sure I made made that phone call before I came on air because I was a little bit surprised, obviously pleasantly surprised to see Drew Spence in training. Wanted, wanted to know what is that all about? Does that mean she's part of the team? Double check for you guys. And I was told that she's actually not eligible to play due to documentation reasons. And um, during the week, guys, we're going to be going through a preview. We have a preview to get through, so we still have to preview the Cayman Islands game. I'm also going to be returning back to your screen, whether that is your TV screen or your mobile phones, to talk about the big the blockbuster. The blockbuster would be, no doubt, against the Dominican Republic on home soil. And that one is not at the office unfortunately so if you're planning on going to the office um don't double check your ticket there if i can get this one up on screen show you the location for the stadium there um home of our cricket ground right there at the bottom right there so let's click on that so do not show up at the national stadium <laughs> for that game against um dominican republic because you're gonna get what the duck get and you don't want that believe me um so mr steven mr steven sir how are you how are you doing i'm well i'm well i was just doing a little roving reporting um on on your behalf um i've found the link i've i've sent you the link i don't know if you can yeah, see because i know some of you are keeping secrets from me so let me go and see what you guys are disappointed with you guys in the in the comment section let me go and actually watch this for myself i i'll, I'll allow um what is this is it, is it a long video how long am i working with here it's about 14 minutes but if you go halfway through um you'll see if you fast forward and just 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 scroll through you'll see there's the the said photo shoot that's all i was referring to um I, you know that i'm as I said, I'm transparent and um, it's full love and respect. So this was the, the particular um, right, video see. I was alluding to. So um, <clears throat> again, um, let me be crystal, no pun intended, crystal clear. <laughs> the reggae girls are a team that Jamaica should be absolutely proud of, just as we should be proud of the reggae boys and all of those who um, represent uh, the, 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 the jersey, um, good and true. Uh, and I think that, you know, I, I mean, you know, the reggae girls, I think they should be, you know, even more high profile than they are. And, you know, they're really, you know, they're flying the flag. As I said, you know, the CONCACAF region currently contains the world's, you know, number one ranked team in America. We've got Canada flying high, Mexico, you know, really performing well. And Jamaica ranked 51st, 51st at the moment in the world. According to the world rankings, the Dominican Republic, if you didn't hear earlier, if you check the world rankings, they are ranked 109th. It's ironic that both the Dominican Republic and the Jamaican uh, women's representative teams are both ranked higher than their male counterparts. So, you know, there's a lot of flavor, style and flavor, as um, Coach Minzy likes to say, that is being brought to the party. And... Uh, I've got a lot of time for the, the reggae girls. Uh, you know, Asha, look out for the likes of Asha, Jody Brown, Tiffany Cameron, of course, the outstanding Bunny Shaw. We need to not quite wrap her in, in, in cotton wool, but we need to um, appreciate that there's a, 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 a massive game potentially on the horizon in the Dominican Republic. But we don't want to sleep on the Cayman Islands. You know, they're not going to come... To, to roll over. Jamaica have the quality and I'm sure that we'll see them shine. But uh, what we want is finishing top of the group. And uh, under Vin, I hope that that job is successfully achieved. The Dominican Republic, they've offered a really good test. But you know what? You know what they say, that the tougher, the harder they come, the harder they fall, one and all. 
uh, and I'm hoping Jamaica don't fall, but they rise, rise up and meet the challenge that is indeed in front of <laughs> Richard, them. Crystal, what have you know, got, my dear? I don't know what I'm actually searching for. Um, so the video is like, okay, so what, what, what minute am I supposed to be looking at? Oh, my goodness me. Well, <coughs> Check it around eight minutes. You'll see. You'll see. Um, if you fast forward, maybe seven, eight minutes. You'll see. Uh, uh there's a literally there's a cameraman. Um, and, and one of the footballers is in, at the stadium, uh, with a ball, uh, in the hand, and 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 the girls are commentating. One of them is saying, you know, um, you know, it's unusual. They've not done this kind of thing before. And they've got a ball in the ball in the hand, uh, and and they're wearing a t-shirt. And um, it's a photo shoot. Um. Seven eight minutes. Can you have you have you got visual? I I saw that. That's exactly that said video. Uh, let me give what, you, spin. you can you can look at the comments and I can um actually just check out the minutes for you. Would that help you? Mm, I can um I can scroll through. Yeah, if you scroll through, you'll see um literally there's a long lens camera and they're just doing it's all it's all in good fun it's a the story i think it's a, yeah it's a part one of the 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 jamaican reggae girls journey eh? seven eight minutes It's all quite on the Western Front. In the meantime, this is an opportunity for you good folks out it there. It is quiet because I'm still trying to find yes. this thing. Um, Island well, Park, I'm not, in, I'm not ignoring you. She plays for Chelsea. You ch you check out some of the comments and read some of the comments and um, 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 pipe up as you will, Crystal. I can more than happily help you in the meantime. How's that for you? I can give you the minute to look out for. Go, You, you go ahead. You check out because I know that people want to hear from you. Yeah, I, I tried. All right? um, I I'm going to mute it. Yeah, I was I was a little bit confused. I was, I'm still actually um confused because if I'm looking at that video, that video was like almost ten years ago. So, yeah, um, I don't know. But yeah, in terms of marketing for both the reggae girls and the reggae boys, it, it most certainly has to be bespoke marketing. You can't market the reggae girls in the same way that you would market the the reggae boys because, like I said, we don't live. We're not operating on a level playing field in terms of societal expectations and the policing of um, women's body and um, what type of image you're trying to <coughs> uphold. So- um, My apologies, Crystal. My sincere apologies. I've just had a look. 21 minutes. It's okay. a longer video than I anticipated. 21 minutes and 17 seconds. Go forward or backward from that. 21 minutes and 17 seconds. It, it is a, 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 a old old video because it is the journey. 21 minutes and 17 seconds. All is right, let's let's I've give this another Go ahead. People. Do you want me to keep talking in the meantime? Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I'm gonna get the comment section up here and see what um, the folks are saying. Uh, here's a question. Um, we, I don't know if we've asked it or yet, but the long and short of it. Two games to go. The reggae girls face the Cayman Islands and then the Dominican Republic. When it's all said and done, when the smoke has cleared, have we come out of the proverbial Bermuda Triangle? Do the reggae girls qualify as far as you're concerned, viewers and subscribers? Do the reggae girls top the group and proceed and make their way eventually to the World Cup? Do they top the group, viewers and subscribers? Jamaica, do they top the group? And do they outstrip Bermuda, Grenada, and the Dominican Republic? It's a yes or a no. There's no in-betweens. A yes or no will suffice. I'd love to see what you guys are thinking. I, Diddlywinks, the reason boss, without question or hesitation, is a yes man in this case. It's a yes, big up Jamaica, big up the reggae girls. They will do it. It won't be easy. It won't be easy. Okay, back to what you were saying now, oh. Mr. Stevens. Ex explain to me what exactly what you was referring to. I think I might have seen it, but I don't want to um, jump to a conclusion. What was it? Um, what part of the video was he referring to? It, 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 it literally, maybe I didn't explain it well enough, but the, watching that video there, do you think that that's terrific 
um, fun and 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 those kind of um that kind of publicity and promotion is good fun and good for 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 the reggae girls in terms of getting them out there in the in the in the, in the public and in what? um the, the to the attention of the the, the world. Well, I think I think it just goes back to it's it's actually quite um shocking that I've never actually come across this video before and it's almost um, okay. Yes, yeah, se seven literally oh. I did I've never watched that video before. Um, okay, I'd never seen ago. it before. That was the first no, time because I, um, I was so doing my research. I, yeah. I think like I said again, I'll still stick with um image, what image you're trying to uphold. I think in the circumstances with what you're um touching on, I think it's about getting the right people to do the job. Um, so getting football people to do the job. You can't treat footballers the same way that you would treat musicians or actors. It's different industries. So it's just important when you have people in and around the reggae girls, uh, be it at board level or within the coaching setup that they are football people, just what, just as you would expect at club level, be it at your Arsenal, your Man U, your Liverpool, Man City, you need football people because their visions will be fit into what is expected of footballers and um, athletes. But I think um, that's probably, I don't know if I've answered your question again, because um, I can only assume that I'm looking at what you've probably looked at. And yeah, I think it's just a case of just footballing people you need footballing people around your your, your football team be it at national level or um club level it's, it's one of the best way to um to create um great vision get football people involved because like i said i am a football person i am a sports journalist i can't then go and unless i upskill myself i can't leave the football industry and go and start writing about music or start doing this on music that, that comes with homework that comes with understanding the way I would capture a football a footballer or a track and field athlete is different to how you would capture a um, actor or a musician it's different flavors um, so yeah you need to be in the known you need to understand your audience I think that's that's important because in that situation you're not going to put the onus down to the player the onus is down to the person who is delivering whatever message they're trying to deliver if Correct. you are the person with behind the, the the camera you should have mapped out whatever goal you're trying to achieve what's your story what story are you trying to achieve again you can't treat footballers the same way that you would treat entertainers two different industry that you're working with so the onus is down to the people who are there to be the gatekeepers this is where a gatekeeper would come into play so if the reggae girls had a gatekeeper say it like say it their assistant um coach or maybe not their even their assistant coach their um press officer press officer would have interjected if the press officer was um on set that day probably would have interjected and said well actually um let's do things this way for this reasons or that reasons i don't know this one was almost a decade ago things have changed things have moved on since then and i don't actually expect to see similar content i've never seen content like that around the regular girls this is why i've floored i was like what what is this about i didn't know if it was the reggae girls that did it themselves or so yeah um it's good to know that it's a content that was from almost a decade ago but like i said it's, it's about getting the right people behind the team pointless hiring somebody who has worked 10 15 years in the music industry and say come and um do some content for the reggae girls visually it will probably look outstanding but what's the storytelling what story are you trying to tell? Can't tell a story if you don't know your players. Can't tell a story if you don't know the history of the team because you're just going to fold. Um, so that's what I think anyways. I don't know if I've answered your question there. Talawa TV's headed up by Crystal Davis always comes correct and on the money when it comes to tackling the issues, the big issues with sobriety and insight. You've hit many a nail on their head, Crystal. I know that it's a touchy subject. And I was wondering why you were um, 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 a little quizzical, but the context and where you're coming from, and now you've given me context because it was a, a, an eye-opener. And I think what you said there about having um, footballing people and, and, yeah. and having a clear vision about what you want to get from... Look, you've hit the nail on I, their head I don't there. Know so these people, be and be I'm not beautifully put. To, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to defend them because i don't know them um but i can say that 
maybe for them it's just a case of you're in the given the the um people who created the content um you're not football people with all due respect so in honesty they probably did it out of pure innocence they're trying to do the right thing but they don't have that leverage in terms of knowledge of we do things differently when we're handling sports and athletes so i think the intentions were pure but it's just them just not having that level of understanding to say this is how we do it when we're storytelling or marketing um footballers um because i don't think that's something that you would see now almost 10 years on I, I don't think you're seeing that now um like i said i've never seen it that's why i kept on pushing the button saying like what is this about us um i think how it came across it was that it was a recent video so i was like well how come i've not seen this was it when i was on well um so yeah um that one floored me but only reason why i wanted to know was because i thought it was literally a video that was just done the other day okay right and also so more importantly i was thinking was it a player that did it and yeah so that's why i wanted to know um but yeah i can't speak for them but you know that's the way i see it anyway that doesn't mean i'm right but that's just the way i see it no that's fair enough that's fair enough context context and opinion no problem yeah. at all no problem at yeah, all. That's, that's how I see it. But how about you? Um, how did you? Well, I should ask you. Why did you um choose to ask that question? There is no wrong answers, by the way. I'm just intrigued to know. Well, there was I someone. Think. There was there was a question in the in the comment section that I saw around. I don't think it was from Warren, uh, but it was around uh, marketing or promotion. I think the word was promotion, promotional, and um how the 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 ladies are um um publicized because as i said you know they're, they're a successful team uh they've got um an upward curve that they can follow uh and they they are as i said they're very eloquent uh they are a glowing example of diversity out of many one people uh it just makes me really proud to see them in action uh on and off the pitch um and if we're talking about you know promotion promotion of course marketing is uh, uh, very big uh, in 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 the Western world, so it was just interesting to see how um, the reggae girls are uh, marketing, uh, are marketing, uh, and it's interesting when you got the you know it, it, is it a case of getting the, which is why I was really fascinated by your answer. It, is it a case of um, embracing uh, the musical aspect because you know Jamaicans love it is musical, uh, musical aspect, and cause... culture kind of thing. Should that Abs be embraced absolutely. and absolutely, different things? Richard. And where do you find the balance? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Crystal. Be because if you're looking at that from a musical standpoint, what you're thinking of instantly, if we're talking about history, you're thinking of like say '90s dancehall. That's perfect if you're an artist. If we we're talking about a musician, we wouldn't even be having this conversation really and truly because it's expected when you're a, when you're a musician. That's how you're expected to be marketed. So that's why I'm saying that for them, it's probably just a complete oversight that they just there was no disrespect, but they weren't no further thinking to say, okay, um, you can do that with a with with a musician, be it your up and coming um artist or one of your artists that's been in the pipeline, a veteran, but you nest you, know, you can't necessarily do the same for somebody who is a athlete because it's it's going to be it's people are going to it's it's gonna divide opinions know that you're going to have some people that say there's nothing wrong with it and then at the very same time you're going to have some people that says hold your horses that's not acceptable it's not the worst thing that i've seen if i'm being completely honest but i think the way in which that um especially that maybe a couple of seconds i don't know if that's like five seconds um i didn't count um within that little time frame that's more suited to the music and entertainment industry because if we're talking about it from a music standpoint, like I said, me and you wouldn't even be having this conversation because we wouldn't even look at it like that. We're just like, okay, yeah, 90s dance hall, that is it. Even nowadays, that's how some people um choose to to dress, maybe when they're going to like a festival. But football isn't a festival, so that, that's my opinion. It's a festival of sport. That is what it is, <laughs> a festival of sport, sporting <laughs> endeavour. And the reggae girls are a shining example. I think Mike is looking to to come on board again. I yeah, I think I think Mike is um sorting about sorting out his background there. Um, oh, okay. For what he's doing, I can, I'm assuming he's sorting out his uh 
his background. That was a quick 40 minutes there. Mikey's like Usain Bolt on the on the <laughs> track, isn't he? On the road, a road track. I did I did put the question out there, um, Crystal. I don't know if you if you've got um your eyes on the ground as to whether the chat and views and subscribers remember hit the like button. Crystal is there pro pro providing outstanding service. Hit the like button, show your appreciation, and share the visibility and help the channel maintain its high standards and high exposure. Fantastic job. Thank you very much, commenters and subscribers. A warm welcome. I was asking the question out there, when the dust settles, do we think that the reggae girls will top the table? Cayman Islands and then Dominican Republic. A yes or no? Are we confident that they will Ooh. top it or will they come a little short i'm 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 i'd suggest that i expect at least 80 percent plus strongly i could go 90 percent plus would say yes they're going to do it but i could be counting the chickens before they have hatched what say you crystal hot chili hot chili's gone over stone cold steve Austin. hell yeah right <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> Give me a couple of cans of beers to go with that. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> you know what? With this one, I will, what I will say is, guys, I still do have a preview to come up when it comes to the Cayman Islands and the um, Dominican Republic as well. And I think by the time we get to the the who are they playing bermuda by the time we get to that bermuda or dominica versus bermuda we should be able to say okay this is how things is looking clearly for us at the moment the table don't lie table don't lie at the moment the table is in favor of dominican republic and football is played on the day um that's, that, doesn't, that doesn't mean that i am that i don't carry belief with um, with um, Billy for the women's national team. I've said it from the start before this qualifying period got, got on the way that I firmly believe in them. But let's not ignore what the table is currently saying. I still believe that they can go all the way and qualify. But there is still two two cup finals to play for. And that starts off against the Cayman Island and close off on home soil at the home of our cricket ground, not the national stadium, guys, home of our cricket ground um, against the blockbuster fixture, the fixture of the CONCACAF Women's Qualifiers hosting Dominican Republic. Probably dive more into that. Not probably. We will be diving more into that when the preview comes out, um, around the corner. But um, I'm feeling steady. I always get nervous when it comes to these games, though. But because, you know, when you, when you love something so much, you, you're always going to have nerves. Um, and I learned that from my sports editor. Um, it got to a point where I, when he, my early days when I just came into the sports industry and he would send me to games and I'd be going to um, the Emirates Stadium and Stamford Bridge. And he always check in and ask, you know, how I am. And I'm like, I'm nervous got to the second year and he's asking me how I am and I'm just like I'm nervous and he's like you know I said to him one day I said I feel I feel bad saying that I am nervous and he was like you know if you're nervous then that tells me that you care so and I thought that's actually quite fantastic and you can probably say that about the, the, the players as well maybe you have nerves of steel but when it comes to a person's line of work and whatever it is there um passionate about if there's no nerves there then it's either nerves of steel or they simple simply don't care we have mr blake here um is that lance lancely blake is that how i pronounce your name um please do correct me if i completely butchered, butchered your name but they've gone for yes they will win both games and top the group heaven yes high in confidence and i'm not going to knock it um mikey mr Balin, how you doing on your side well, my, something's going off with my camera. I don't know what it is. So I mean, I'm not very, it's a smartphone and I, the, smart, the phone is smarter than me. So I got to ask my daughter to figure it out later. <laughs> You're here in spirit and in good voice. So we give thanks and praise nonetheless. Yeah. I, I don't know. It just went, you know, just like that. Well, hopefully the reggae girls don't suffer a similar technical hitch. No on, their, no, no, on their journey, no. Mikey. Can we, can we, can we ask you that question? I know we've got a preview to come 
from Talawa TV. But as we speak and at this moment in time, are you, uh, bottom line comes to it, 100% or 95% confident that um, the reggae girls will top the group? You've sort of suggested already that the um, Dominican Republic will be um, having their backs proverbially to the wall and uh, on the ropes and uh, Jamaica will um, produce the um, proverbial knockout. Yes, Jamaica will be the R. Um, uh, I, that, I'm 100% confident of that. Also, you guys are talking about when I was driving about um, females doing adverts and promoting, like, can, you know, be topless like men and all that. But if you remember two World Cup cycles ago, the American striker scored a goal and took her top off and had on her sports bra and they made a big deal about it. While women Thank walk in sports bra all exactly. over the place, every week, they run around Central Park in their sports bra, but she exactly. just happened to take off her sport, take off her jersey and was waving it and running around her sports bra and they made a big deal of it, which I don't understand because women and run on Mikey. the streets in Manhattan every day in sports bra. And Mikey, right. sorry to interrupt you there, but yeah. this is where it comes back to me saying it is not a level playing field. Because how many it. times, how many times do we sit and watch club football where the guys are wearing their monitor, that their heart monitor and stuff like that, and they take their um, tops off, and you can yeah. clearly see it. The sports bra is there to obviously protect your female parts, so you can't yeah. necessarily see it. So this is why I say that there is double standards there um, where the men and the um, um, women players are concerned. And I'm glad that you have the older heads, the bigger heads, wiser heads in Richard Stevens and also Mikey Ballin that can clearly see the point that I'm trying to make in the sense that it's not a level playing field where women and men are concerned. In, in New York City, it is, though. It's a level playing field in New York City when it comes to men and women, when it comes to topless because in New York City, women are allowed to walk on the street topless, but you can't go in public transportation topless. Because okay. I don't know if you guys know, it's in, down at 42nd Street, you have the, um, the, the the cowboy that wears underwear. And you take a picture of all the tourists. And a lady went down there to do the same thing, but she had on a sports bra and they locked her up. And then they went to court the women won, and now the women can go topless. Anywhere in Ma anywhere in New York City, it's not a crime, but you just can't do it in the on public transportation. So it's kind of a level playing field there for the women in New York City. Learn something new every day. I was <laughs> I was I was I wasn't aware of that, but the unevil uneven playing field is something yeah. that, as Crystal alluded to, is um very much. But very but, much there so that's but interesting still, but even in, even on tvs here in the states because that well, i went to england i was in england in 2000 early 2000 and i saw a lady doing an ad topless and i was shocked that can't happen in, that can't happen in um in the united states because you remember janet jackson had an accident at the uh super bowl where the guy accidentally pulled her pulled the bra thing off and so i mean you have, to the video. you have to slow the video so slow to actually see and they made a big deal out of it. I mean, you have to slow it down to like slow, super slow to see a nipple. And they made a big deal out of it. It's not fair, but, you know, that's how the world shakes. You know, that's why when you go to Jamaica, you can go to Negril and walk around topless. So advertisement for Negril. <laughs> go, go on the grill and be kid. oh my god you just remind me of something guys you know i went home um latter stage of last year guys i was in uh, saint mary big up saint mary lovely lovely place to visit yeah. my god I, I took a trip to a beach and a river and i was in disbelief i couldn't believe what i was seeing i never knew that jamaica have a nude beach of course um, Mikey, that's the first that's the first time I've seen that in my whole life. The only thing I didn't like was they're a bit up themselves, like you know, sticking the the, the, the tourists sticking their noses down and on the locals, trying to say the no locals can't come um close enough towards them. Um yes, I understand that you, you pay to be there, but we had to pay to gain to gain entrance. So what was the deal? And I hmm? usually at at resorts, um they have a sign 
that says topless bathing only. I mean, nude bathing only. And yeah, there was no signs. Just just okay. security well, that, well, walking well, around. Well, no well, signs. Well, that, well, that's bad then. If if there's no sign, everybody need, can go anywhere then. Yeah, but there was. There was what what I, I didn't like, Mikey, was that they were basically saying the locals couldn't come over on their part, but they could come over to where the locals were. And I was like, well, uh, how does that make sense? Surely you. Oh, like the son of them. Mm. Yeah, I was like. You're not better than us. Yes, I'm not a Jamaican local, but I was born there. But I'm I'm carrying their burden because I'm thinking yeah. you're not better than us. I don't care if you live overseas or not. Like you can't come to where the locals live and mm -hmm. dictate that we can come and play where you're playing or swim where you're swimming, but you can't come. Well, over to well side. I, I'm just trying like to think. That. Was these people Caucasian? Well, ding, 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 ding. Well, you know, you have what you call Caucasian privilege. Ding, and ding, they, ding, they, ding, they think ding, in Europe or North America, but that privilege don't work in Jamaica. Hmm, 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 hmm. They don't know that. Yeah, yeah. Enough, enough said. Enough I said. Think, I I so, and so, I like the fact that the Jamaicans were harder here, and I said, "You guys are, you guys are." No, no, you, you, you have to, you, you have to fight. If if it's if you're in Jamaica, you're Jamaican. I mean, you can't let anybody come from far and around your place. Yeah. Tell you where you can go, where you can go. And when yeah. you go to put them place, they might tell you, say, "You can't come here." So one thing. One thing I wish we could do um, more about that in terms of, um, you know, taking ownership of where we live is um, when it comes to um, the supermarkets as well. Um, obviously, um, again, whilst I was back home, I saw something that I didn't like. Um, there was a guy, uh, obviously, I don't know if he's born in Jamaica, um, definitely don't look like he's from Jamaica based off his accent. Um, um, it's from an um, Asian country, that's besides the point, no issues with that. Um, clearly, he's the shop owner, and we know who usually owns the shops in, in Jamaica. Uh, what I didn't like on this occasion is these have clearly recruited minors, so these people, I'm sure they're not even legally should be working for you, and you're sat on your high horse and you're dictating. Basically, all you're doing is collecting the money whilst the, the, the black people of Jamaica, the young black men of Jamaica, young black boys of, of Jamaica are doing the hard labor. That's another thing that I didn't like, and it, it really, really, um, it, it paid me to see that and as well more so i understand the kid is just doing their job but it's the way he was being spoken to the way he was being at one point i just lost my call and i was just saying like who do you think you are just because you own the shop and you're the one that's collecting the money that don't give you a right to look down on people um but mikey is right the way um um tourists or the way foreigners go to jamaica and treat jamaican people we can't do that in their country so jamaicans no, need to be no i i, I want more. to correct you there not they treat Jamaican people. Jamaican people allow them to treat them that way. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that's, yeah they that's do the difference. Be more firm and um that's your land at the end of the day. You don't belong right, to but, nowhere else but, but Jamaica. But, but, but we're not supposed to be rude. We're supposed to be firm, but not rude. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. You know, and that's because be because we need them because they provide jobs for a lot of people when they yeah. come and spend their dollars. So mm -hmm. you we need to be mm -hmm. firm and fear but not rude and some like, of us get rude and yeah. we shouldn't you know because it when if you root to one tourist you just lost 10. exactly it's mannerisms at the end of the day isn't exactly. it but at the, at the yeah. very same time it goes for them as well like let, let me remind you you are yeah. on our country we can't yeah. go to your country and disrespect you so respect goes both ways yes. um, when, you're, when you set up a business in jamaica that doesn't mean that you're better than the people of jamaica give them some respect at because the end of the day you you wouldn't want people to, to um ill treat your children so why are you ill treating someone else's children it really 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 unsettled me and i didn't like it it happened in saint thomas as well um marent bay didn't like that but okay. There's someone here who I am glad that he has wiped his tears. Apparently, his side got tucked in by Crystal Palace um, the other day. And I was told that he was weeping. He's been weeping. I do feel sorry for him. I'm not going to name the club that he supports. But you guys do know this man, man of God, the pastor himself, Mr. Manning's man. How are you, sir? <laughs> you're, just, you're just, good evening. Um, oh, is it Marty, where you are? <laughs> Good morning to you and Richard and all the other people in the UK. You know, we support the same team that just uh, that just put that out there. So Which team uh, you support Manning's band? Oh, you mean? Come on, please do not let, I don't want to. Oh, you mean? 
that no, just tell me. Good. Just tell me. Crystal, can you please tell him for me? A troubled mic here look, you know. A troubled mic here look. Must no, if support the wrong red team, man. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> my team is not doing, not doing so good either, so I shouldn't even talk. So. What is oh, your team? Man, man, you. Manchester United, man. Yeah, man. Me old man, you know. Me <laughs> Manchester man from the 70s. <laughs> yeah, man. But yeah, man, good to be here. I, I saw you guys. Uh, I saw you guys on, and I just finished. And I said, no, I can't have you on discussing football. And I don't come on and show you some love at this time because I know you always come on and support me. So I just thought, let me just jump on and you know show some love to your work and your channel. But you know, big up to you, Richard, and to Michael, and to all the persons in the comment section. Yeah, I'm here. You know, just see if I can participate in the worthwhile discussion that you're having. I know it's probably close to your ending time, but yeah. No, I was actually going to reach out to you. I'm glad that you came on. I was going to reach out to you later on in the week um, ahead of that Cayman Islands um, fixture. So I'm glad that you're actually here now, although I'm still looking to um, preview that game. So I'm glad that yeah. you're actually here. Yeah. Well, Manny, 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 Manny's man had um, Vin. You, you had Vin in the studio, didn't you? Yeah. Yes, he was on, on sun, Sunday evening just talking about the team and just some of the challenges they were having in terms of the paperwork. Mm -hmm. um, but and injuries just popping up and they had to keep changing the team. Um, but like I said today, I have greater confidence in how the, the reggae girls manage their affairs more so than the male side because I think there are less egos involved. So if they say something is going to be done, I believe them that is going to be, I have no reason to doubt them. So I think the, the two players that, um, I know one is in Jamaica and they're still trying to get her to play, right? Um, Spence Drew, um, I think there is, there is a goalkeeper and then there's a next player, a next Drew. Drew right. Spencer, um, Rebecca Spencer. Right, Rebecca is the goalkeeper. Yeah, Rebecca Spencer is the goalkeeper. Drew G Spencer is the midfielder. Right, uh, so she's, she's actually in Jamaica. Yeah. But I'm not sure that everything is set for her to play. You'll notice that she's not named in the squad. Yeah. Right. So, but the process, right. So you have those little things. And that is why I, I'm more confident that by the next round... Um, she, you know, if not this round, she will be, but it, it's, it's females and, and sometimes things happen, you know, so, but I have a lot of confidence in them that all the players, because unlike the boys, the reggae girls have always recruited players. That, that has been their modus operandi. So we can't, and like I was saying to people, do not look at the boys program and just start following female football and start cussing organization and stuff. It, it has not been the case, and it's unfair to speak of Sidella Marley um, from U Busby to U Menzies to Lauren Donaldson, even Vin Blaine. You can't, you can't deal with them the same way you deal with the male program because they have not had players stuck in airport, players complaining about travel plans. Their contract was signed, and nobody's complaining. So, yeah. <laughs> man, is, man, is man, I have one thing to ask you. Um, what's your last name? My name is. The last name. I don't need your first. I, I'm going to have to give him. I have to give him a full name. Okay. Augustus, <laughs> Zephaniah, Zacchaeus, Alphonsus Brown. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, because that name sounds like a money name. Joke. It is. It is tenet with two T's at the end. Okay. So, so I just, just, just for your information. My great grandmother last name was Tennant. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, from Hanover. Oh, we we let, you know what? <laughs> Hello. You know what? Oh, well. Yeah, you know you could be a family because yeah. that's where um my grandmother is from. You know, Riverside? Riverside, yeah. So me hey, really dead man. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, this, this is a show for family reunion. Get a lot of crystal, but yeah, but, but that could be the case. You know? Riverside, my grandmother, my great grandmother, come from too. Yeah, and my grandmother is from Riverside as well in, in Hanover. I still have yeah, families here though. And there's no river there. Well, you know, I can't say that I've ever gone there. <laughs> so I don't know. 
Yeah. Man, yeah. Man. Er- er- yeah. Oh, so I was going to say, I was going to ask Manning's man. Manning's man, I did call your name a little earlier in the broadcast regarding a certain Spurs goalkeeper, and I didn't want to mess with your program. I know that you seem to have a special affinity uh, for <laughs> a, a, a certain your love. Yeah. Yeah, man. But could could you just um at this uh, at this moment just take the opportunity to comment on how you have found the reggae girls' uh, conduct off the field, um and and how they've represented uh, Jamaica. I have nothing but ringing praise, but you may have been yeah. uh, you've been closer to the Listen, ground and spoken with them. Yeah. Can you just um, enlighten us? The hardest thing for me is the two goalkeepers. Right up until this point, my favorite. I feel bad to say, like my favorite player on the regular girls team has been Sydney because wow. she was so young and she was saving penalties for us. People, I think we forget how important she was to the whole um, campaign and competition. So she has always. But when Rebecca came in, right, and she, I'm telling you, she is exceptional. It's a good problem to have. But I would I could not be the coach because and yeah, yeah, like <laughs> like Rebecca is very good on her feet, but if I have a penalty that I need somebody to save and and, and, and Crystal can probably respond to this. I, I want Sydney in the goal trying to save that penalty. But if I need someone who can make some passes out from goal, Rebecca. But it, I think it's a good problem to have. Um, I also believe like the, the, there are less egos in the girls and probably more emotions. And so I'm very sensitive. And I tell, I tell Vlog, you have to understand female before you can really even analyze their game. Like, it's not good to come out and say, it's when you can say, yo, that man not good. An idiot baller that. That's not the kind of word that you use to speak when you watch female football. And I think if you don't understand that, you shouldn't do like a post-match show or a pre... So I don't do it on my channel because people come in the comment section and say things that are from male sport, not women's sport. That's how I see it. And so I, okay. I choose not to facilitate it. That's just me because... Um, I understand that the, the emotional side is is stronger for the female, and it just takes what these comments can get to their ear, and trust me, it affects them. And I know some people are not going to um, agree, but I know because I've seen it. Uh, I mean, Crystal, is Crystal is a female. Maybe she can speak to that even more. Mike, well, I have I'll... a question to ask you. Go just, on, just, go on, Mikey. Before you go any further, which goalkeeper in Jamaica the best footwork, both male and female? In Jamaica? Jamaican goalkeeper, yeah. Which Jamaican male and goalkeeper? Female and female. Well, when you're talking about footwork, are you Pass talking the ball about... Out. Okay, Pass passing the ball, the ball out. out. All right? Yes. No, uh, my answer is going to be very strange. Listen, I believe when I watch Andre Blake for Philadelphia... I'm going to try to find an excuse now. No, I'm not... <laughs> Mike, you easy. You're no. asking me a question. To <laughs> All right, go, go, here. Go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, it, go ahead. It's, listen, it's not fair to compare Leon Bailey with Jody Brown. So it is not fair for me to compare Andre Blake with that. I, I don't like that because... Yeah, politician. No, but it's two different... It, it's football, but you don't do that. It's It's... I think it is disrespectful to females and it is disrespect to male to compare male versus... Like, I would not compare Shelley and Fraser Price with Elaine Thompson. Era. Why not? Um, Usain Bolt. I would not compare oh, Usain okay. Bolt. Okay. With, 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 because it's two different... It's, and they're they are both successful. They're equally dominant. Elaine and Usain is equally dominant. And to say Usain is better than Ilian, like that's crazy. It's it's male and female, well, both dominated their sport. No, so no, I wouldn't no. do that to Andre Blake because, you know. Well, this is where I'm different than you. Yeah. I would say Usain is better than Ilian, no better than better than um, Shelley, but but Ilian can join Usain on the table if Ilian win the double next Olympics. Because Usain win three times. If Ilian win three times, they might equal footing. 
<laughs> but Shelly only win one time, two times. She need one more. Okay. Uh, that so that I I can say that. And if Ilian win four times, Ilian better than Usain Bolt. Me not, that's me either. That's how I am. Just straight. So I can ask you, which goalkeeper in Jamaica can pass out the ball better? Okay, which, which, which Jamaican, put, goal, put, which Jamaican yes. goalkeeper can I'm, pass out the ball better? Yes. All right. I'm saying that if when I watch female football and men football, the pressure that they come under is different. <laughs> it's hard to compare them. It's it's too different. Like I'm very sure. Listen, I'm very sure. Man is, is, no, man is no. Let me give you an example. Chris and maybe Crystal can be a mediator. If Andre Blake, listen, Mannings and Mikey, this I just find out that you're both cousins. I don't get involved with family. No, but that drive me out. <laughs> no, all I'm saying is that if if Andre Blake yes. was playing on the field with all females to kick that ball out to Shamar Nicholson on the opponent's side, I think you'd be just as good because he's under way less pressure. No, so, hold on. No, man. You're, under, you're underrated female football players. You, you see, that's why I didn't want... You hear what you see? This is where I don't want to have the conversation because you see, you know, once I draw it, that is what is going to happen. And I, right. that's why I don't want to... I don't want to get in the conversation because it's going to go down a path that somebody is going to get disrespected. Nobody not disrespected. Well, that, I, I, I don't want to discuss it, honestly. All right. Ask, okay, ask then, Richard right. or Crystal. That's not something we, we, I want. We, we, we already answered the question already, and many people in the chat answered the question already. Okay. But we just want to get your opinion. That is all. I, I give you my opinion. I don't compare male and female when it comes out to football. That's my opinion. <laughs> I, I, I must say, it, 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 is in, it is interesting what man is. I'm listening to what man is saying, and it is interesting because uh, earlier in the show, Crystal and myself were talking, and I was referring man is to my experience and, and how I first um, uh, got into following the reggae girls. And I was talking about my early experiences regarding uh, watching women's football and my expectation levels. Uh, were coloured slightly by my experience of watching decades of watching the men's game, which has been developed over hundreds uh, of, 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 of years. So watching the women's game was a, a different experience, but with time and, and, and getting an, a, a proper perspective, a different perspective, you appreciate the game um, for what it is. So comparing like for like is interesting. So I can see where you're coming from, man is man, to a certain de degree. Um, and it's not about disrespecting. So I can empathize with where you're coming from in the answer you gave. But I also understand where Mike is coming from, which is why I gave the answer that I, I appreciate oh, 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 the oh, skills oh. of Rebecca Spencer. I, wish, I appreciate Rebecca Spencer's ability to pass the ball out. And I wasn't embarrassed to say that. But I also empathise with exactly what you're saying as well. Though mentioning Andre Blake, because um, I don't know if you'd finished your answer if you were going to draw on other keepers. I think there's right, another Jamaican keeper use, who is quite good. There is use, another. Go ahead. I was going to use Burnt Leno. Who? Burnt Leno, the Arsenal goalkeeper, who they mm -hmm. say is very poor at distributing the ball, and the Arsenal female keeper, who is very good at distributing the ball. And if you ask them, they'll tell you, are you kidding? You can't, it's not a conversation to be had because it's two different, it's two different level. The high press game and the time and all of those things in the male game and the aggression is, is way more than in the female game at this point, as highly competitive as it is. So I think it's unfair to the female and it's unfair to the male. Like if you ask me though, of all the Jamaican male keepers, that's a different question because I don't have Blake in, in terms of distribution of the ball in the top five as a Jamaican goalkeeper. Okay. I, I don't have him in the top five. Mm -hmm. 
if you ask me who is the number one, I would say, uh, listen, I love Sh um, S Sydney, but I'd say from what I've seen, Rebecca is leaps and bounds above them. She's probably the top one in CONCACAF outside of the United States keeper. She's better than the Canadian keeper, better than the Mexican keeper. So I have her right there with the, um, the girl that keeps, so she's right up there. But to now begin to compare them across the, the sexes is kind of a little bit... <laughs> yeah, yeah. But well, I tell you what, it. keeping it keeping it constructive, keeping it constructive, which is what Talawa TV is all about, and the reggae girls definitely is all about. Um, there's been a good vibe around the the the, the, the Jamaican uh, reggae girls camp, um, following their their campaign so far. With two games to co, Mannings, what's your take on the remaining two games for? The, the reggae girls are you optimistic on what are you looking for and and what do you make of the dominican and bermudan um uh, challenge because in some circles even their challenge is not quite uh dead as 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 yet what's your take um with the final two games to come this is where great richard takes over from crystal and he begins to ask the question <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right good question richard listen here's what here's what i believe i believe that the dominica though the game is played in dominica on friday they are going to struggle against bermuda because i think bermuda is going to beat cayman islands tomorrow i think they play tomorrow no grenade and cayman islands play tomorrow dominica and bermuda play on friday right right and then yep. All right, so I think that game is either going to be a drawn game or even if even if um, Dominica Rep win, they're not winning by more than one goal, which would give them a five-goal advantage over Jamaica. So they would have plus five. I think Jamaica going to beat Cayman Islands by around six goals, which means that coming into the last game, I think Jamaica don't have to win. All right. I also believe that we have a stronger squad composition now than the first two games. Marlo is back. Um, and I don't know, like I said, if you have not been watching Jamaica's team, you don't understand how important she is. So if you just started watching, you don't realize that this side has like gone up a notch in terms of the midfield. Because Mackay may not even start. The fact that they have the, the Leicester um, Bailey Gale, who may not even start. Because Mackay gets to move up front with Bonishaw and, and Trudy Carter may be on the bench. Oh, you got you got to be careful of that one. You don't want to upset Richard. Richard is he's he's very protector of Trudy. You understand me? So um remember in the last game as well, the two sisters came off because they're um um, Swaby sisters, they were injured. Um, so I think we have a stronger midfield, better offense. Um, um, Asha as well. Um, if you watch the so Marla and Asha play a whole lot better together in midfield. The only the only one would be missing, you'd say, is Havana. No, yeah. you, you understand me. So if, if you follow the football really and truly, we we are the squad is smaller in size but stronger in quality. I don't know if Crystal feels the same way. Um, I'm expecting to see the Swaby sisters start because we know that, um, literally, um, for Chantel Swaby, because we know that she plays a trade in Scotland for Rangers. I kept a close eye on her and I saw that she resumed play quite imminently after that knock that uh, Mannings was touching on. And Alison as well, she's looking in good shape there for her team over in the National Women's Soccer League. So I'm expecting both the Swaby sisters to, to start despite picking up that knock in the last window back in February. The squad is definitely grown in quality and it's, it's crazy that whenever we're having these discussions, it's healthy discussions that we're not trying to say that this player shouldn't be in the team. It's, it's more or less who is starting. And whenever we're, whenever we're having these conversations, it's always a headache because if I said to us now, pick your front three, we're going to have disagreements naturally we're going to be having disagreements because we are we are that good and i think what we saw with been blamed the last time round was him trying to the gaffer trying to test out like for like substitutions um and i think it'll be interesting to see if we see more of that 
for the next two games or if he's just going to say, look, I'm going for my strongest um, starting eleven because now it's cutthroat. Now it's not a case of, I think in fairness to Vin Blaine, what he did in the last camp was he tried to please everyone, tried to please, tried to have a happy camp. There's nothing wrong with that, unfortunately for the gaffer. If it doesn't go according to plan, it's inevitable that people will say, you shouldn't have done this, you should have been cutthroat. Whereas with me, I don't think that he's done anything wrong with regards to how he's um, set up against his opposition so far. I think it's, it's wise of him as the interim head coach to go into the team and to not step on nobody's throat, um, nobody's heels or so on. Yes, you can argue and say that he is the man in charge, so what? But at the end of the day, what what this tells about, what this tells me about Vin Blaine is that he cares about the players and their feelings and we have to take into their, their mental well-being. If you're a player and you are travelling all the way from Scotland to Jamaica and you're not even getting say five, 10 minutes under your belt, you're going to be feeling a little bit worthless. You're going to be thinking, am I not the manager's favorite? And that's um, for any player that has to travel across the globe. If you're not getting at least 10 to 15 minutes in the tank, it's inevitable that you're going to be questioning whether or not the manager is your favorite. Naturally, you're going to be having these types of thoughts because you're basically playing under a new gaffer. Because um, before that, we had a, a different gaffer in um, Hubert Busby Jr. And we know the reason why he stepped aside at the moment and he's not involved with the national women's team. So as ever, and for Marla as well, Marla is coming in. She's going to be playing on the Vin Blaine. She will want to make an impression. She would want to remind people why she's called Marlo Sweatman. The guys in the comment section, the guys on screen, I don't need to explain to them who Marlo Sweatman is. But, you know, Manning's, um, Rich, and also Mikey, we know, guys in the comment section, we know that we have a host of new fans who will be looking at Marla and saying, what is Marla Sweatman capable of? Now Marla Sweatman, she's got a little bit of expectations on her shoulders. A um, little bit unfair, but it is what it is. She has to go out there again and reintroduce herself. And I think she'll do a good job. Yeah. Uh, so listen, uh, here's, here's my front three, right? Like my front six. Like when I think about this, it, it's amazing, right? People are not going to agree, but I'm going Marla, Asher, and Makai as the number 10 with Bonnie. This is against the Cayman. Bonnie, Brown, and um, Bailey Gale from Leicester. Okay. Up Paige front. Bailey Gale. Paige Bailey Gale. So you, right. um, you, drop, you drop Tiffany. I'm telling you, I'm telling you how difficult because I'm, I'm thinking that, I'm thinking like who plays, like I have my two center backs already, I have my goalkeeper. Um, Sashana Campbell on, on, on at left back, and I'm thinking who plays right back. That's it. That's it. that's a position that I still think we need to fill in our team. Who plays? Yeah. So, so there that, you go. So that would be you've dropped. I think that means you've dropped Tiff and you've dropped Shade as well, right? From that. Attack. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Unless Tiff gonna play right back. Jeez, I'm peas, my names. <laughs> No, but who's gonna play right back? That's it. We don't. I mean, because yeah, who, yeah who's gonna play right back? Van Flasser is not in the team. No, she's not in the team. On few um no. players aren't in the team from the from the February. Because I think she played right back, um, in one of the games. So who is going who, to? That's it. Is there? Is there? Is, the, yeah. Is there? Is someone? Is someone set? Who's in the pole position to uh, running to play the the, the right back role? That's Definitely. what I'm going to be um looking at again. Um, the defense yeah. is a problem for us. Exactly, isn't it? right back is a problem, and left mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. if, if 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 funny if um if Sashana, who is a right back really, but they had to put her at left back. Well, you're going to utilize it, so it has to be a case of um um utilizing, uh, Wiltshire um. Sashana at um in in defense. There's no way they can slot Cameron in right back. I don't know much about Wilshire. Tierney Wilshire. I'll send, can you tell I'll us send a little it to bit? you in the oh. in the comment section there, um, yeah. um Richard. I'll send okay. something over to you. So only Wilshire they can put at right back and, and keep and keep Sashana at left back. Yeah, they can't I can't see them um put in. There's no way they could put um Tiffany at Right back, you know, no so. way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I like the I like the way you broke down the um the broke down the the the, the potential 
uh, way that this this um, group could unfold, Mannings. Um, you, you said that with Dominican Republic playing first, they could, um, if they get the win, it, it won't be by a landslide, and that could result in um, Jamaica be, having the opportunity to, to to turn around the goal difference um, to a plus one, for example, one or two, which would leave the last game between the Dominican Republic um, uh, as a, a case that um, Jamaica don't have to win the game and it would be one that you don't want to lose. So a point, a piece, would result in Jamaica coming on uh, on top. And that's been the best case scenario that I've been hanging on to. I think Mikey was suggesting that Jamaica should give um, Cayman a 12 goal, no, but we are um, which I wasn't, I wasn't we are keen to on the 12 Trust me, Richard, yes, I've sir. not gone to a regular girls game that we have dropped points. Wow. And I will be at Sabina Park. So we Respect. are going to... Respect. That's a good woman. That's a good woman. <laughs> but you know what? Um, I think somebody's suggesting like that if they could. But you can't move the Swaby sisters from center back because we have no other... Um, Connie Plummer, is, we, don't, we, we don't have any other center back really in the team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so they are your two most experienced makeshift center backs. So they have to play there. So you can't put either of them out. And, because there's nobody else. Um, I know they were trying to get a player from Crystal Palace who plays wing back. Siobhan. Yeah. But I mm. don't. I mean, that didn't come through at least for now. I think she's a right back as well. But that, that is what we need to fix for the next um, round. Our I have defense. a question. Yes. What happened to Blackman? That's her name? Blackman, right? Blackwood. Blackwood. Blackwood, yes. Injured. Injury Injured. recovery. Yeah. Oh boy. Injury recovery. So the so the defense line then is a midshift defense line then. Yeah. The, so we have to score goals then. Four goals, but not leave ourselves wide open. Yeah. It's about getting that balance um, right, isn't it? Man is bad. What do you think about Van Zander? You ever seen Samson. I, yeah? I I I I think if we're leading the game, the coach may put her in to see how, but I don't think he's going to change the centre-back pairing for this game. Like, I think you'd, if he's going to play her, she's going to play right-back. Because he could do that because she's a right-sided centre-back. So that? he could put her at right-back, but he's... I, 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 I mean, Crystal, like I said, we follow this. Listen, if the, if the Swaby sisters are there, one is a centre-back who normally plays with Kanye. They are mm -hmm. not going to move them. You can't, mm -hmm. you can't keep your don't well, I'm saying you can't, he can, um, theoretically, <laughs> because he has he has more than um two centre backs to work with, he being the gaffer, so he can. But um I'm with um Mannings on this one. I can't see him separating the two Swaby sisters because we, we need them. Um we need them um as that pairing. Um so don't given how diluted we are, given how um feeble we are at the back, I, I don't think he's going to um change of the right. centre back pairing. And Sashana played well at, at left back in the game at the stadium. She really played well. Sashana is uh, holding her own. Yeah. Holding I, her own. I, I have a next question. Let's say one of the Swaby sisters go down. Who is going to who is going to who is the backup centre back? Well that happened in Bayern. Yeah, remember that happened. Who? Re remember that happened though, Chris. Yes. But, right. Because but both who? of them were substitute one one didn't play and one was substituted. We were without both of them for the Grenada game, game, I believe. So who came in? Who came in for them? Um, you're talking about Alika Keen, but remember Alika Keen isn't here, right? Yes. Because she's um she's sick. So who? So who's the backup centre back then? So we she was Brian one of Sanson. those. Yeah. So then put Brian as centre back and put the other services at right back. No, uh, no, but you can't. Why not put her at right back and keep the Swaby sisters together? Oh, okay, then that could work too. But yeah. that's if she used because, to play right back. You must also remember we conceded in the Grenada game. Right. I don't think we you, you remember we conceded a goal. And that could work against us if we we put tie and goal difference. So the point is that we need to have our two best centre backs played at centre back and take the risk out on the outside. Yeah, the two best available centre backs. Yeah, the two best available. Yeah. That's my thought, but you know, yeah. I'll tell you yeah. something that you're um you're giving uh credence to suggesting that
maybe the reggae girls aren't as as strong in depth as we think. I was going to ask earlier, what do you think, Crystal and um, Mikey, and, and and now you're here, Mannings, um, what constitutes Jamaica reggae girls' strength and weakness? Um, I'm 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 picking up for the first time definitively that the defence really does have a, a question or two. It may not come to bite in these fixtures against the likes of Cayman and then the Dominican Republic, um, fingers crossed. But going forward, for, for, for the reggae girls to uh, make that step and come a little closer to the likes of um, Canada and, uh, and, and, and Mexico, uh, do you think that um, we need to um, throw the fishing net far and wide to actually get more strength and depth in the defensive areas? I'm picking up in the comments, I'm looking there and uh, does seem to suggest that the the Achilles heel or the hamstring of the reggae girls currently is the defense, which I find a little surprising. Um, are, are, is there real quality out there that we're missing, or is this the the best we have at our disposal? Um, what 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 say you guys? Um, guys, I'm really sorry. I'm just res responding to a really important message, and once I'm finished, I'll just join in in the conversation. All right, so I no can problem. respond. I, are Mike, Mike, you want to go first? No, you go ahead. All right, so um, one of our best defenders um, has been our captain, who is out. So we, we, we have her out. She is a center back, all right? Um, we, we also have um, ODG's Blackwood, who is also one of our defenders who is out. So we have, there are players who are better who are not playing. If those players were included, then we wouldn't be having the problems we're having. It's just that players are out for different reasons. So two center backs are out. Um, but, um, Bonflasso is not here either. Um, so that's a wing back, um, right back, as well as um, Blackwood, who is out as well. Um, you have like Matthews. So, so we have players that are out who could play in some of those positions. But there are also other persons who are out there to come in the team as well. So maybe they need to recruit. I've always felt that we were a little thin at centre-back though. Um, I, because even with Kanye um, and the Swaby sisters and Samson, I still think we are still missing one other quality center back, especially when we get, um, we're going up against the likes of um, USA. If you watch the last game when the USA, we played the friendly with the USA, I think they defeated us um, four, four goals to nil. You, you, yeah, you can tell that our center back needs to, it, um, we need to do some work there against the top teams. But I think we have enough now to make it through this round. But when we get the thing is that we have, we have, we have uh, the problem we are going to have is what is who do you select when 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 Drew comes in when like the, the midfield and forward good players are going to not like they are not going to be playing. That's a good thing. Ah <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> we will see. <laughs> you have depth. You know, um, but I think that the coach will be ready for the next round because uh, I think that the football season will finish in England and most of the places, right? So he's going to have time to get the, the other girls who don't have them paperwork yet and girls that he's thinking of, the latest thing of getting in the team. So when it comes to the US games or the next round, we'll be ready. We'll be stopped, and and we're going to move from there, and I, and we're going to qualify because we're going to knock over Mexico and maybe Canada. You know, USC is a, is a bridge, maybe a bridge too far right now. But one thing I must say, ever since the, ever since the nineties, I've been watching the reggae girls, not watching them, but following them because he wasn't watching, was following them. And when we used to play the US, it used to be nine, it's getting smaller, eight, seven, six, now it's four. I believe that within the next five years or the next workup cycle, not this one, it may be just 
two, or we may, we may beat them. Because we're getting better. So we're improving, and we and we have we, we have a forward that's maybe going to be maybe the best forward in the world in four years' time. And and that and that we have as a plus. Because she went to take two defenders to stop her. In she playing over there in England and getting her stepping up our game. Because she playing as better players, so she went to improve. So, you know, I think that when when it comes to the next round, we're good. As long as we get as long as the girls that are injured are fit and ready to play. I don't think they're gonna be match ready because they've been out for a while, it looks like. Yeah, yeah. I don't um, think we'll be seeing the captain for this um for the campaign. If she plays it's probably what, going to go into the what she have? What kind of injury she have? Uh it, um she, it is not injury, man. Oh. I'm that one is what we call a personal one. Mr. Yeah, that's the personal, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, she's well, she's out due to um personal reasons, but yeah. will be available um when possible. Yes. I'm see okay. I'm seeing I'm seeing in the comment section that um a Jez 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 and Andrew saying that Wilshire is a pretty consistent player. I'm looking forward to to seeing the, the link that you sent me and looking forward to, to seeing a bit more of Wiltshire. Can I ask a question at this juncture, uh, gentlemen, uh, uh, ladies, regarding the manager? At the moment, um, I don't know if, um, uh, if I missed anything. Has Jamaica, the reggae boys, appointed a coach? If they haven't, um, Paul Hall, of course, was the interim manager, maybe um, due to be appointed full-time. But with regard to Vin... How important do you guys feel that the manager or coach's role is regarding the reggae girls and compare it to the reggae boys? Um, the reggae boys were lacking uh, a system of player pattern, but Paul Hall seemed to be well on the way to trying to um, install and instill such a missing quote unquote pattern and system of play. How important is a, a strong coach at the reggae girls? Uh, level and do you think that we have a coach that can mix it going forward uh to mix with the likes of mexico canada uh and and, and america and do the the current reggae girls justice uh manny's man so you're talking about the, uh, so let me say this right yes the coach um, break break it Vin, down vin blaine before he because he wasn't fired remember he left the job leading up to the campaign that we qualified for the World Cup. But he had done a lot of the recruiting of the players. Okay. Leading up to that campaign. So when you men's came on and stuff, they got a lot of the, the, the girls and the team that he had been working with. Okay. Okay. So some of these same players, I mean, good job that you Menzies and Busby did because they brought in some other player. Remember, there there was one player in particular who came in at the World Cup, I think Havana, um, and stuff. So you had players who came in in the final stages. All right. So with that being said, he does have um relationship and knowledge with them. I did an interview with Ricardo Fuller, and he spoke about Harry Redknapp, and he said that Harry Redknapp. He's never out on the field doing anything, giving any instructions in his time as a coach. He says what he does is he comes into that locker room and he says when Harry Redknapp talks to the team, they feel like they can run through a wall. And he comes in and he gives a halftime team talk, all right? There, there are some coaches that understand the psychology of the game. And what I mean by that, because that is one of the pillars. One of the pillars of the football is this understanding the psychology. And so I think what he has is he, he's very strong relationally. I think uh, you Menzies was a very tactical, because many players didn't get along with you Menzies, you know, but he got the job done. Because he's more tactical in his coaching style, or, right? In other words, you have to do this a particular way. Vin Blaine, I think, is more relational and, he's, and he taps into the mental fortitude of the players and speak to them from there. So it's, it's a different approach. 
Um, but I think because the tactical ability um, has been developed in terms of the system that the girls play, and a lot of them are playing professionally, I think at this point, because they have played a World Cup cycle for the most part together, what they need is a kind of coach who's going to come in there and give them a reason to go out there and win. Like to make them feel like, listen, you can run through this wall called the USA. I think that is a stage that oh, I don't think Bonnie Shaw need to learn how to how to run off the ball anymore. I think she needs to know that, listen, we are going to put the players around you that going to prepare you to beat the United States easily and beat Canada easily. She, she needs a kind of coach around her that says, listen, we are building the kind of team that when we go to the World Cup, we are trying to get into the finals. I think as, because uh, these girls have gone you know like how you have plants i don't know if you do farming right sometimes you have to transplant stuff for it to flourish so you have it in a small pot and then that pot was good for that season but now it's time to transplant it it's just like an artist was working with a producer he transplant himself and becomes his own producer so he had have more say i think some of these girls have been transplanted from the tactical now to tapping into their psychological to push them further. And that's how I see it. What 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 Bin Blaine also have is that most of these girls played for him before. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe seventy five percent of them or maybe sixty percent of them. Because I know Asha, uh, Mala, lots of them play for them for, from under seventeen, under twenty and form a national team. So they know him. He knows them. The new ones now. He he he's going to get into their head to buy into what he's dealing with as a coach. And if they buy into it, then you know they can be unstoppable. You know, like like we all said, you know, the defense is a little you know sore spot right now. Um, so we just have to you know go see the dentist and you know fix it up. It's going to be a very interesting area because you know uh, the 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 defense in any team is 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 crucial to a winning but, a winning campaign that, you know it, but, it, it, it's um that's but, where the, the top teams are, are no, for the, defense. No. Yes. the best defense is a great offense and that's what we have if we have the ball they can score an interesting if concept. we have the ball 60 percent, 70 of the time that. they can score I've heard that said, um, Crystal. I, I, I think Warren's going to ask a question as to the style. What is the style or formation of the reggae girls? Maybe you can shed some light on that. And do you agree with Mikey that the reggae girls' um, best form of defense is offense? And would that cut it at the this round? For this round? No, for this round. 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 I, okay, this I, round. I, 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 I would say I think Jamaica can. Yes, I, I could tend to agree with that. Crystal, what, what, what say you? What was your what was your question? I'll leave you to, um... <laughs> the question I, was, I said, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Mikey, go ahead. I said, what the very girls have, I was... Manage, watch it, you know, watch it, Mikey, watch yeah. it, Mikey, what, watch it, what, what manage, manage dangerous. Go ahead, Mikey. Yes, what, what I'm saying is that for this round, the very girls' best defense is their offense because their offense may put the other team under so much pressure that the defense don't have to worry. What do you say? It's an interesting one that um, I think we it's 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 a it's a it's a unique way of looking at it um, because if we look at our first game, first game was against Bermuda on her home soil. I think I was surprised by how well we performed in defense, and if we look back at that game in defense, our defense pretty much were in the heart of all four goals that were um, scored against Bermuda. Um, so they literally got the goal started. Um, all of the four goals comes back from the defence and that's something that the defence definitely deserves credit for because that is the area, no disrespect to the girls. I know we're saying that it's a makeshift defence, um, no disrespect, but credit more so to the girls for, to the girls for um, taking ownership of what's at stake first goal first game back on home so um home soil a few um debutants um 
in and around the squad. I'm sure there was nerves there, and you heard it from Bunny, the captain. You heard her say that there were nerves, nerves there, and without Bunny coming out and saying it, you could identify that because it took us a while to get into our rhythm. I think it's no secret that we will be aiming, we as in the gaffer, he will be aiming to play flamboyant attacking football because it's in our DNA. That's what we're all about. People will link it back and say that we're um we take inspirations from Brazil. Um, they have samba, we have reggae. What does both um, samba and reggae offer? It's all about dancing, it's all about movements. So I think that's what he's trying to create with this um, reggae girls team, but difficult to critique him because doesn't matter what he adds to this team, inevitably, if we're being honest with ourselves, our weakest line will at the moment is and always will and always have been our defense so difficult to to, to, to critique him um for those of you who are critiquing him harshly uh, maybe you have to hold fire and wait for him to actually get a balanced team before you draw up your um uh, your opinions of mr vin blaine and what what uh what he's done so far i know a few people have been a little bit disappointed particularly with that game against grenada Six nil in uh in the grand scheme of things we're looking at um six, six one sorry um six one is a complete thank you man in six one is a complete hammering and um uh, fair play to Grenada with their goal because I thought that one was neatly taken it it's what happens when we switched off and it just goes to show we switched off for a second and we were made to play to pay the price six one is a hammering but people were expecting it to be 10 nil or maybe when we weren't expecting Grenada to um be on the score sheet but they were on the score sheet on that occasion um so there's plenty of work to be done um but that doesn't mean that we're not fully in support or in belief that the girls can go out there and do the job and go on to the next um step the next round of the qualifiers but loads of work to be done again i can see why some people critique vin blaine last at the last and i don't know what you guys make um mannings mikey richard guys in the comments section i heard some people say that um if we fail to qualify for the world cup then it's all down to vin blaine and i disagree with that strongly strongly disagree with that um yes he can take part ownership and i don't think he would um um distance himself from that but i wouldn't put full blame in the laps of vin blaine given the manner in which he took charge of this um reggae girl squad uh, but that's my opinion um where your question's concerned also also just remember why i said when he said about good offense if you remember the, the bermuda game the first game miss spence the goalkeeper was almost in their half the whole game <laughs> Because she, she was playing like a center half, a deep, deep center half, right? And in the green of the game, I think maybe only two or three shots went to um, Schneider. Again, but Schneider don't go out as far as Spence does. So um, so yeah, think about it. So the defense is working, what he has so far. And that defender scored, no, she was midfielder who scored that goal, right? The, 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 the best goal so far for our campaign in Grenada. That one came from like a bullet in the night. The screamer, the screamer, the screamer. Defender, she's a defender. Right, that was a bullet. She's a utility in the night. player, though, so you could essentially you could drop right. her in but, um, midfield. Right, if you right. so that so it's so far the defense is working because Spencer Spence played almost in the other in Bermuda's half, maybe entire game. Yeah, yeah. So the defense is working so far. Cause the offense is playing. We, our offense is, is pressuring the other team. I I actually want to um get a different opinion because maybe I'm using like my journalism hat when I'm um critiquing or analyzing Vin Blaine. Yes. Um, I think it's a good opportunity All to right. actually put this one on Manning's. Yeah, let me say this before I even get to Vin Blaine. Now. The first thing that uh this the final stage right so we need to remember this the final stage will be played in mexico and there'll be two groups and there are two seeded teams the united states and canada all right those two those, those two teams because because only two teams will qualify as 
automatically first place and second first place in each group so if you put their seeded so united states will not will not be in the group with canada so you have the united states in one in a canada and b that's your two that automatically qualifies no you have mexico as the host who jamaica beat in the playoffs to get to the last world cup let's not forget that all right so jamaica <laughs> needs to beat right mexico so let's hope that we don't end up in a group with the usa jamaica and mexico like let's hope that usa and mexico is in one group and jamaica and and canada is in in the next group can you refresh us as to who goes through thank you for the reminder manning's um just i almost lost track of that somebody yeah. said that that yeah. it was it was panama panama beat mexico no no huh panama beat mexico last time i think to qualify no to knock them out they didn't get to the final round yeah to knock them out hold on panama so but also, panama knock out mexico they didn't even get to the, mexico didn't even get to the final round all right panama um, knocked, them out, knocked them out before like in this stage that we are in now panama knocked them out in this stage okay all right so so jamaica qualified as third place yes god we beat panama in the in the third place playoff okay so we beat panama went right so mexico sorry about that so mexico will be the host so we need to bear yes. that in mind all right so hope your advantage there you go so i think i think like we need to put those things into the mix i still believe that um i've been following the canada team right so in 2000 and was it 2019 our u20s beat the canada team right so i think um you see somebody you see somebody is saying that jamaica beat mexico last time because i'm sure that jamaica knocked out mexico i'm sure yeah. that jamaica knocked out mexico the last time we when we qualified uh, for maybe the World jamaica Cup. and mexico beat panama then i mean jamaica and panama beat mexico then and not them out both of them knocked them out jamaica no jamaica and mexico went to the playoffs and jamaica knocked out mexico I, I, uh -huh. like, all right, so, check it. I don't remember, so maybe you're right. Right. I'm going to the scorecards here. Right. This so is, this I, is I what think, I'm listening out for. I think that I would prefer Jamaica in a group with Canada. Costa right? Rica. All right. Somebody again. Somebody said, "Oh, and he's saying that we did." Somebody saying that we didn't. So we didn't play in Mexico. Crystal knows. Crystal, I remember. Crystal went to the World Cup. Sorry. Um, yeah. What, what we, was it? What we're talking we about? The, for the World Cup. Did we play Mexico? The 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 revenge would be between Panama and um, Mexico. So Panama declined. If it was if we because remember the penalty shootout was between Panama, um, that pivotal penalty shootout to send between us between Panama and Mexico. Did we play Mexico in 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 the group? And Mexico in the in the group i don't recall i don't remember playing mexico i think it's panama playing them but it was it was panama if you're talking about the important game um four two on penalties it was panama no no we're talking Jam about all right who, who knocked out mexico put, put, put out panama. Put out no, put panama. Out Kebron. hold on put up kebron mas Solomon's comment i think second to last comment because he's saying that jamaica was in this in in the same zone with mexico and no. beat them one nil it wasn't Jamaica and Mexico. It was Jamaica and Panama. So they no, man. No, but Panama. the reason why Pan Mexico ended up playing Panama is because Jamaica beat them and qualified. So they had to play the playoffs. No, Panama beat Mexico. Yes, in the playoffs. Yeah. And Panama qualified. But the reason why Mexico got to the playoffs is because Jamaica beat them. No, if I don't like recall if, if playing they had, against If they had Mexico. defeated Jamaica, Jamaica would have played Panama in the playoffs. I don't I don't recall playing Mexico 
definitely don't re- recall playing. You might be right, but I, I don't recall okay. playing Mexico. But yeah, but I mean, but double check it though. But I don't recall playing Mexico at all. But I know it was the, the revenge is always going into the next round. The revenge would be between okay. Panama and, and Mexico. Mexico. Right. Yeah, hundred so, percent. But I, I okay. don't recall playing. Mexico. All right, I would have remembered three, because we there's there's um there is a dislike there. Um, so, um, yeah, Panama and, um, the revenge will be Panama and, um, Mexico. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. So I think it's going to be, um, the zone is not going to be easy. So when people say that, like, we have a good team and we have to get our act in order. See, somebody is saying that. What are they saying in the, in the comments? So somebody is saying that, um, some, some person is saying that. scored. Mikhail, good off, good evening, sir. Mexico beat, sorry, Panama beat Mexico and Jamaica beat Costa Rica. Um, all right, so he um, did not play Mexico. Yeah, I don't um, recall. But, right. you know, yeah, that's what I remember. Yeah, Panama beat Mexico. Um, yeah, it was in the revenge is between Panama and Mexico. Reggae for sure. girls. It's between reggae girls. Look at um, Manning, but even because I said it on Manning's, I'm pretty sure we spoke about this on our last. Yeah. where we said 2019 that, that, where, where we said the next round the one to look forward to would be panama versus mexico because that's their revenge um it's, there is um it's not between us and um mexico it would be panama and mexico with their revenge and panama wanting us for their revenge oh so yeah man the, the infamous penalty shootout you guys should go and watch that infamous um penalty shootout there with he, then Hugh Busby's, um, sorry, Hugh's, Hugh Menzies' women at the time. So go ahead and check that one out, guys. Um, the 4 2 on penalties. But yeah, my memory ain't that great, but I don't recall ever facing up against Mexico. I would have remembered Mexico um, just because I of don't remember Mexico because I, w- I watched every game. Okay. I keep, I can, yeah, I can't don't remember, remember Mexico. Fucking Mexico at all. But we knocked out Costa Rica. We knocked out yeah, we beat Costa Rica. I've, yeah, the, 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 and, but the most important one there that we're all sure of is the Panama, um, Jamaica and Panama penalty shootout. That one was tense. Um, remember that one like um, it was yesterday, but yeah, I don't recall. Um, but anyway, man, is man. we don't want to be in Mexico. We don't want to be in any group with Mexico. Yeah, we, I don't want to be in a group with Mexico and the United but this, States. But, I want to... But, but this Canada and Mexico and Jamaica I don't want that. No, <laughs> Mexico must be in the other group. But every, exactly. But, but you know what happened? You know what happened lately? Every time we have a group, Jamaica always end up in Mexico group. But there's the male or the females. You always notice that it's like like them fix it. But big people, what I'm 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 listening carefully to. <laughs> it's been quite fun listening to what you guys have been um running around trying to um ascertain whether Jamaica played Panama or Mexico. Uh, very it's interesting. Yeah. But um, uh, I tell you something. The fun and joke aside, could you just offer clarity? Um, because it's it's nice to jump on, on board and see um the road to 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 the next World Cup um looming large. The two groups of four is the next stage. Does Jamaica have to win? I think if I'm not mistaken, it's it's a must. You you have to finish top of your group to make the next stage. Is that right? No, 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 no. You, for the World Cup. No, for mean, get... well, for this round, you have for to this round. Only one team qualifies, the top team. And then the next right. round, there are two yes. zones of four. Um, the first place team qualify for the Olympics and the World Cup. Right? There'll be a playoff between, I think, um, third and fourth. So you, you'll have the semifinals. The two teams go to the final and third and fourth, there, there is that game that is played. For the third team, right? I think the third team qualifies and the fourth team has a playoff. Right, Crystal? Sorry, guys. Yeah. I'm trying to um, mount yes, it yes, Sorry, I, I, but you sound like you're on the, the, the right team. Yeah, first team. Yeah. One team goes through to the to the um, next round. No, for the second round, the group, of, the group of four each, the next round, the two top teams qualify for the World Cup and then the, then the, the two second place teams play off each other the third the one that wins qualifying then the fourth one plays again in a some like what's happening with the men now what's happening with costa rica now they have to go play in a in a federation game or something like that to qualify 
Okay, for the for 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 the um for to the get in the World Cup, right, right. Because right. so, yeah, so we so we could says, have four teams. It says um, uh, it says the tournament will serve as a Concacaf qualifiers to the the 2023 FIFA World Cup, right, in Australia, New Zealand, as well as for the football tournament at the 2024 Summer Olympics in France. The top two teams of each two groups will qualify for the World Cup, while the third-placed teams from each group will advance to the Inter-Confederation playoff. In addition, the winner will qualify for the Olympics and the 2024 um, Gold Cup, while the second and third place teams will advance to the CONCACAF Olympic playoff. Right. Well, the world, the the World Cup traditionally is is it in is it traditional that the World Cup is the is the big the big one? Yes. And it's only the top two, the top the the, the winners of top each four. group, top four. Top four, the top two in each group make yes. the World Cup. Right. Right. Now you see that brings into perspective. Now here comes the question. Right. So I'm 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 working off that. Okay. Working off that. How concerned or are you not? I, I detect that you may be, but what's the gap between Jamaica and the likes of Mexico and Canada in not that much. you are your well, you you seem to be very keen on not being in a group with Mexico, should we not have um, the mentality and more, i.e. the players at our disposal that suggests that even if we do come across Mexico, we have it in our capacity and we're not afraid to duck the challenge of a Mexico? Or uh, is uh, that threat big enough to actually be genuinely concerned that home advantage plus the quality that Mexico bring to the table listen. Um, mean that Jamaica would struggle in such a group if that's how things play out let me tell you something um let me tell you something richard go ahead you don't want to play in mexico against mexico if you have to qualify for anything hmm. because they will put you on the highest mountain hmm. and the first 20 after the first 20 minutes you finish they have the height advantage the fans advantage so you going against 13 people against 11 right now and then if you get some spanish referees then you have 14 and 15 and 16. so <laughs> therefore so therefore you don't want to see mexico no make somebody else play them i this think the way you should probably look at this one um richard is if you're playing in the men's champions league if you're aiming to go in the men's champions league final and you're a club like manchester city do you want to play liverpool in the semi-finals or do you want to play them in the finals you don't want to as as, as great as manchester city is i'm sure manchester city do not want to play liverpool in the semi-finals you much rather take your chances in the finals even though liverpool are the kings of champions league you still prefer to meet them in the in the finals but i'll side with mikey on this one you don't want to be going up against um Mexico on home soil. I trust that Mexico, given what we do, where the women's team is concerned, they're not exactly going to be upbeat about playing against um Jamaica. Um, but again, we have to keep an eye on our defense. And the fact of the matter is it is a depleted defense. Um, so that just kind of adds weight to what Mikey was saying in the sense of us not wanting to play against Mexico on home soil. Can you imagine the strength from their 12th man, that intimidation factor? And as well, the dodgy match officiating, that's not something that we um, want to experience. Crystal, you see, what, what, what I'm trying to explain to Richard, no matter if we have every player that we want, we have Plummer, we have this one, we have that one, we have every player that, that Vin Blaine wants in defense, his best defense. You don't want to play Mexico in a playoff game in Mexico because they're going to put you on the highest mountain and <laughs> we're not going to meet in Mexico long enough to adapt to that ear. And after 25 minutes, they'll be sucking oxygen. They have to act have oxygen tank on the sideline every team you put brazil in mexico makes them get them a hard time up at that high level that's why it makes it that that's the 13th man and the, that the 13th man they have they have a hundred thousand fans in the stadium 
and then they will have the, the altitude. You can't beat that. You, what I'll you, say, too much against you. What I'll say is that, like, listen, um, I want to encourage because at the end of the day, you know, a lot of people come on forums and talk about the football. All right. Yeah, I can understand people not going to the regular boys much. I went to all of them locally. Um, even when we were losing, still went there. All right, I can understand you not going to the reggae boys much. Tell me when have you seen the reggae girls lose a game at home? All right, Never. what I'm trying to say, a lot of you, a lot of you need to go and support the girls, man. Get a ticket. If you're overseas and you have a cousin in Jamaica, buy them a ticket to go and support the girls. At the end of the day, the, the girls need support and to come and talk about them and they they have qualified for the world cup i mean they're getting big and stronger and then people like you go to the stadium and it's a hundred people there's 200 people and it's their families like come on we can do better you have no you can't say they're losing 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 because they win I mean, if they were playing the USC, I could understand you having reservations. But, but come on, man. Get your ticket and support them because that is going to be important in that Dominica game. Imagine yep. if they turn up at Sabina Park and see it packed to the, to the roof like when they're playing um, the CPL and Chris Gale is there and the Talawas who, even when they were losing, it was packed. Imagine if when they turn up at Sabina Park they see the party stand packed with people and, and flags waving. What do you think is going to happen? You think these girls playing in 60, they have 60,000 seats in the stadium. Many of them have not played before 30, 40,000. So let's turn out in our numbers and support the girls. That it's is true. It's 6 o'clock on a Tuesday evening. You knew this from from the, the the thing was given out. You could have taken the day off. You have no excuse. You could have taken the day off. You could have applied for a, a one-day vacation and go and sit down in at Sabina Park from morning. Eat some KFC or something. Take your wife out. Take your girlfriend out. Go out by the airport and try and touch a plane, even though you never go in one or something, and then come back to Sabina. But come on, man. Support the girls. <laughs> That's it. No, man is man. You see, you see, if I was in Jamaica, I'd be at every Jamaica game. If I when I'm when I'm visiting Jamaica as a visitor and Jamaica is playing, whether it's Jamaica cricket team, whether it's Jamaica football team, may I go watch a netball match one time? We just go. Yeah. You understand me? Because I am there and I just go. Listen, so, so JFF, where you're going? I'm you Listen, here. JFF need to promote the JFF boys staff, team, the, the men's team. Sorry, it's when you come on for the girls. Them don't need no promotion. You don't need to promote. These are females. You don't need no promotion for females. You hear female play football. You don't need no promotion. Match on the twelve. What kind of promotion? Go and go buy a ticket. Both promote. No, <laughs> no promotion. Man the is promotion man. is they qualify for the World Cup. You don't need no more promotion than that. Man, this man, I have a question to ask you. <laughs> the, the girls qualify for the World Cup, right? And you can't, you don't, when you go to Jamaica, and when well, I haven't been into Montego Airport in a while, at Kingston Airport, you see the track and field people, then you see some cricketers, I think, but you don't see the World Cup girls. Why? You, you, you want me to tell you why? Because why? when you go to Champs on Wednesday, you're going to be packed. When you go to the regular girls' game, it's 100 people, I'm telling you. I'll, no. Just family and friends. No, no, and no. 200. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about why the Jamaica government don't promote the reggae girls as a tourist attraction. But here's why I'm telling you. Because, here's why. Here's why. When Usain Bolt, watch this. When Usain Bolt or when there's a truck meet, yeah. check it. There's so many people there. It makes sense to put that in the airport. When there is a reggae girls game, not even the locals support it. Why do we believe the tourists are going to support it? So I am saying, if, if the local people don't go and watch... Listen, I go to girls' game, and, and I've gone to girls' game in the girls' league, and apart from the people associated with the officials, it's two or five spectators. That I can excuse. When the national team is playing, 
the national team, people are complaining. The national team got the opportunity to have fans in the stadium, the female team. Mm -hmm. And they didn't even sell off the tickets. So now people are saying it's because the process was difficult. Now they are saying, listen, you don't need no vaccination. Turn up and buy a ticket. Oh, well, you need to promote it. Oh, when it's not promoted. Oh, why well, then promote it so late? Oh, oh, all right. No. Go and support the thing. Man is man, I promote it. The match is playing at 6 o'clock at Sabina Park on the 12. One more promotion you need. Go buy a ticket for $1,000. Man is $1, man. $1,000 is like 8 US. All right, 8 all right, US dollars. All right, man is man. What kind of promotion? You don't, listen, don't promote the product for no $8. <laughs> eight dollars promoting product for yeah man is about me ask you a question suppose the regular girls invite the brazil female football team to come play a stadium we think it will sell out you know because that would be sad because, because, brazil, they're because, brazil. because they're going to watch listen if, if you invite the brazil male team nobody ain't going to watch the regular boys you know they're going to watch neymar Absolutely. and um martinelli <laughs> And then people there. Hey, they go there man in now ramping a man in San Martinelli. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 you think they're going there because whoa, I want to see, I want to see um Andre Blake. <laughs> I want to see. Yeah, no, no, no. I want to see Lamar Walker. No, they will tell you, yo, me have to watch Neymar. You think if Argentina <laughs> come in here, who you think they're going to watch? It's Messi. Not Jamaica. It's sad, but it's true. So let us not fool ourselves. Yeah. So what like, they, they, they wouldn't go see Marta. Huh? They wouldn't go see Marta from Brazil. Uh, listen, I doubt if the Brazil team came to play Jamaica, we would have a full stadium. The female yeah, team I, you're talking about? The female team. Let me tell this. I believe... Even Marta? No, I believe if Jamaica and the USA play a competitive match in Jamaica, say we, we play a two-way series yeah. and for something, and we draw over there... Yeah. And the playing us back in Jamaica, mm -hmm. the stadium going to be packed because you know what? Americans going to come down. <laughs> and that going to force Jamaicans to go because we don't want to be, we, we don't like shame, you know. And we don't want the match playing the stadium and more Americans in there than us. So we going to ensure we find a way, even if the government mean to go into the constituents where they run and give people ticket, they would ensure that Jamaica get at least 15,000 of the tickets just to make sure America don't flood out the stadium. <laughs> but what I don't get, Mannings, and obviously I'm asking you um, because you're based on home soil, unlike um, myself, Mikey, and Richard, why haven't they at this stage, and I say they as in the, the government and the federation, why haven't they collaborated and said, let's just give the tickets to, to high school children? Simple. Yeah, I, I said that to them. Listen, I proposed to them. I proposed to Vin Blaine and said, listen, you want the stadium full? When they're keeping parties, right, Crystal, in Jamaica, I don't go. I hear. I see mm -hmm. the posters, right? They say, listen, ladies free before X and X time. Yeah. All right? So you know that if the ladies pack up the party, then the men go and pay to come in. <laughs> <laughs> so here is what. All you have to say is, listen, all right, ladies, you come in free if the person you come with buy a ticket. So ladies free, but you have to come with a meal. So, <laughs> so hold on there now. Two for one. So hold on there now. Suppose fancy cat show up. Suppose fancy cat? Yeah, can something interesting like woman, you know? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> No, but it's a little fun, I guess, man. It's a little fun. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, do, do, do. But what I, what all I'm saying is that the truth is, with the female program from Captain Horace Burrell, there was no heap of promotion with it. I can tell you that. So, the players, I, I'm going to say this, the players, the players have done their best. And the truth is, I've spoken to players. They don't even feel comfortable. They don't even feel comfortable talking to the media because they don't feel like the media promote them. And, and here's something I had to do today. I had to say, listen, 
I have a program about female football. Don't come ask me about reggae boys and who not get paperwork. We can't even have a discussion to discuss the female football without juxtaposing into it something about men. And you know what is funny? I really see us discussing men football and, and, and include women's stuff. We, we, we have our platforms and from this from from this beginning of the pandemic from in 2021 up to this point every day there's a platform talking about men football and if crystal is doing her show about the female football somebody's going to come and discuss the reggae boys somebody had to ask about andre blake because we can't just we can't just discuss the women and make them feel good so the game can't be promoted because we just don't think it is at the place. And at the, let me say this again. See, female, female football is pure. I really got to a match and see a female get a lick and ah, whoa, and act like, act, act like, I mean, the man touch him on his ankle and it look like his head is going to fall off. I don't see females doing that. There's a purity in the game that you see when you watch it. So that come out true. and support the ladies. That when is true when, to, when that men is true are playing, all. you need yeah. to promote them because they're losing. You don't need to promote winners. These girls are winners. They don't need no promotion. Bonisha is a winner. Bonisha was a top player. You when you hear that Bonisha coming to play for Jamaica, where well, you need to promote. You don't need to promote that this is Bonnie Shaw. You know how much money people playing for go watch her play for Manchester and Jamaicans are come tell, tell us about. You think Ma Manchester, listen, people pay how much money to get Bonnie Shaw, to get them kids a sideline to sign her autograph. They pay extra for the sideline seat to get that. And then when she's coming to play for Jamaica, we're going to look at this big superstar and tell her that if people don't promote it, nobody's not going to come watch much. She don't need no promotion. She's a superstar in global football. And when you hear she come into your country, you run out, go watch her and bring your shirt for she autograph it. And you, and you put that in a little glass thing and you put it up for 30 years from now. No promotion needed. Great, Sorry, great, Christa. great, great, right. great, great, right. great, right. great, 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 great speech there, Manning. Please do not apologize. You're, you're, great you're speech, Manning. To share, your, share your opinion, so please yeah, don't apologize. On that shining the light, shining the light on women's football and um, deservedly so. As I said earlier, man, as I was saying, there is a kind of a purity. The, when you're watching the reggae girls, you can concentrate on the game itself. There's no, there's none of the um, over theatrics. You're watching the style of play. You're watching the the passing. Uh, you're watching the chances creating, being created, and you're concentrating on the game and. Um, I think that's very refreshing. And again, it's the the interviews after. I think they conduct themselves excellently, marvelously, marvelously. And I think that they um they deserve to have a, a spotlight uh, shone on them. I'm, I'm I am a little surprised at the um uh, suggestion that attendance wise we may not be looking at um, if not a packed stadium, uh, certainly a, a a really good attendance. I, I I'd be you know if I was in Jamaica, I'd love the opportunity to go and watch the, the reggae girls. What are the prices? Do we know what the ticketing, pricing um, and, and promotion of, of these um, next games are, Mannix? You're on mute, Mannix. All right. So a thousand dollars is like is like five pounds. Four pounds. Four Does pounds for a ticket. Four pounds. They should be snapped. Those should be snapped up. I, I, they're, they're good value. I mean, football is good entertainment. Is, it's that it's is entertainment. That, that is free. That is free. That's entertainment. Yeah, it's around four good pounds. Entertainment. The, the pound is close to 180 something. So it's around four pounds because $1,000, somewhere around here. There's no way. There, you, know, you know, even. You know what? That, even the football players who play the JPL, they should even show up to show, support the girls. I mean, you know, and take them family. You know what I mean? Because Jamaica playing. I mean, Jamaica is just Jamaica playing. When I when I was living in Jamaica, whenever Jamaica playing, whether it's cricket or football, 
I am at Sabina Park or at the National Stadium. If it's at Jerry Park, then I can't, I can't, you know, I'm not going to travel to Jerry Park because I'm from, I live in Kingston. But if it's in Kingston and Jamaica playing, I am at the game. I mean, you know, because it's Jamaica playing, that's your country. I mean, if you see Bolt go back now and go run a stadium, stadium sell out. So why them can't do it for the reggae girls? Yeah. This, and I'll say it again, um, because somebody said, Bonnie Shaw, all right, so Bonnie Shaw is not a new phenomenon, you know, and Jody Brown, you know. Hmm. So, let, so let me remind you that this, at 15 year old, Bonnie Shaw was a top player in Jamaica as a 15 year old. So she didn't just pop up when it came to France. She was scoring 10 and 11 goals and 9 goals in one game. A 12 year old, Jody Brown, was playing parish football, scoring six and seven goals and 13. So, so, so people who are in the football know these girls. Anybody what? in football know them. So, the, so I'm saying that. So she was out there a long time doing her stuff. If you are a Jamaican, will promotion help? Of course, but my, my, my assumption is that the persons in these chats are people who are football fans. So I am saying, I can understand you promoting for people who don't know, but if the people on Crystal's channel who are in Jamaica, on my channel, and on all the other vloggers' channel, if they, I can understand, remember I'm saying that, you don't even need to eat, buy no ticket for the main team. But I am saying, with the female team, they have not disappointed us. No. Why wouldn't you know? Even with the lack of promotion, you are on these platforms. You hear Crystal talking about it. All the vloggers, you are on these platforms. You know these things. Why not just buy it? Why are you going to complain that it needs to be promoted? You are hearing it. Why not say, you know what? They should have promoted it, but I'm still going to buy a ticket. You're not saying that. You're saying that they need to promote it. I am saying to you, in spite of them not promoting it, you know buy a ticket. Buy a ticket. So, so man is man, why don't the GFF just say all school children come in free? Why do they have to do that? We can't look at nobody that comes to support the game. So why everybody don't, nobody goes to champs on Tuesday. Why they didn't make champs free today? Okay, we got your point. There was like, there was under under 500 people at Champs today. Why did they make it free for school kids? They charge them a minimal amount. Okay. I hope we are pleasantly surprised. Crystal, is this, in, in terms of the attendance, um, I don't know how much time we've got left on this particular broadcast, but I'm going to be sticking closely following the, the reggae girls. Are you slightly surprised with... What man is man is saying in terms of the attendance, um, and can you give us a, not, a breakdown I'm, in terms of um, the history surprised. of the reggae girls and attendances over the, before over I the forget, years? Um, before I forget, check the Dick Kerr. Do go ahead. Let me write that in our private chat. Um, I've said it, Dick Kerr. Dick Kerr women's. I know you I was supposed to tell you this earlier on about um, women's football in England and the intentional. Um, disruption in terms of the stifling the growth of women's football in England. It would have been much bigger than it than it is currently had um persons at the higher echelons of life not interfered and purposely stifled the growth of we, uh, women's football. I've um written it in the private chat. So Dick Kerr's women. Those of you in the comment section can go ahead and read up on um Dick Kerr's women as well. I'm not surprised at what Manning's um, touched on, actually. And I think he hit the nail on the, e the head. The only thing I can say in regards to what Manning's has said, just to add um, some strength to his um, comments there, is it comes down to culture. It's a cultural thing. When you look across in Spain, I'm sure it was looking back to last season, Atletico Madrid, I think it was the um, the Madrid derby where Atletico women's, or, um, women's team and Madrid's team's concerned, that was um, sold out. If we look now, um, currently, I'm sure you guys can see that, what do you see here? 
50,000 tickets allocated to FC Barcelona members for the Champions League semi-final semi -final in the Camp Nou already sold out. That one looked like it was sold out in minutes. That's a Champions League um, semi-final for the women's football. So there's a couple um, people out there who are in the unknown and they don't know that there is a growing appetite where women's football is concerned. I've taken a glimpse at some of the comments almost alluding to the fact to um, alluding to saying um, women's football isn't attractive in terms of attracting numbers and spectators. You couldn't be more wrong. If we go over here, this was from early January, January the 14th, 2022, Barcelona. And this is the women's team because you can see that these are two female players. 70,000 tickets sold out for the El Clasico match at the new Camp. So there is, and there has always been an appetite for women's football. Don't let no one fool you. Don't let um, the lack of promotion from who we expect it to come from manage is absolutely right. There's no more, there's no more excuse to say that it's not being promoted. If you're saying it's not being promoted and what you're telling me is myself and Mannings and the other um, content creators, we're not doing our job effectively well then because we are, when we sit here, we talk for hours on end, we're trying to promote the game both for the men's team and the women's team. So like I said, his history shows, if we're looking back at the history within England, history shows that there's always been an appetite for women's football always been an appetite in terms of the numbers i'll need to dive a little bit deeper in terms of the numbers in supporters that have shown up at the women's um game particularly on home soil but what i will say that there's always been um spectators and that is actually how i managed to find a new community within the social media landscape is there's been that common interest sincere interest in women's football more so unfortunately for the men's team there's been that sincere interest for the women's team in comparison to their male um, counterparts. And again, I do add that it is unfortunate. I will go back to something that I said earlier on in the show. When the reggae girls made their first historic visit to the UK back in 2018, where they played against Nottingham Forest women, that was the highest attendance turnout for a game played in Europe on that weekend. That was just a friendly, that was club versus country, Jamaica as the country versus Nottingham Forest as the club highest sold out game for that weekend of football. So people are there and Jamaica, um, sorry, Nottingham Forest is in their home. Yes, in the grand scheme of things, Nottingham Forest has one of the highest Jamaican diasporas in the UK. Um, so that kind of add a little bit of context as to why that one was sold out. But the point I'm trying to make is that game was meaningless, meaningless game um promoted very well by the voice newspaper as well because um voice newspaper was um was um cheering that one up and putting things together from a uk standpoint but more so more importantly it doesn't matter how well the voice newspaper promoted that that's down to the fans the supporters they showed up for a game that essentially means absolutely nothing and mannings will um be mannings and the guys in the comment section you guys will remember that game that wasn't even our strongest starting 11 no way near or some of the players that played that match never actually returned to play for jamaica yeah. again that goes to tell you everything that you need to know um so the girls the girls are like um gold dust they're they're, they're like that black diamond um and i'm not sure why other than putting it down to a cultural acceptance i'm not sure why fans on home soil aren't showing up i wish i was in jamaica and i would definitely get the yeah. chance to meet my let, let me say crystal yeah. um isn't at the last world cup wasn't jody what was jody brown what did she, she was want? like 16. and she was what the best one of the best you young players. players she got the you young, be, young best young player in the conquer Cup, yeah and conquer Cup. she was the best youth player, young player this is a, yeah right this is a jamaican all right mm -hmm. my my banner remember when we play the first set of games it has jody brown and it has khadija shaw as the figures of it right I am saying, can will if you promote it, will it work? Of course, because it does. I am saying that for the you, you don't need promotion because the people are saying that it needs to be promoted. I am saying to you, you know, you know. Will you buy a ticket? Because you know, will you buy a ticket? 
and will you go to the game? So if you will not buy a ticket and go to the game, what difference would promotion make for you? Because you are not going because of lack of promotion. Because you have heard before the date. Why aren't you buying a ticket? You understand what I'm saying? So when we come and we say it needs to be promoted, not to you, I'm talking to you. I'm saying, why haven't you purchased a ticket to go to the game? Don't tell me it needs to be promoted because you know. No, Richard is fine. Richard says, if I were in Jamaica, I would have bought a ticket. I'm talking to you who live in Kingston. One bus drive away from Sabina Park. Why aren't you purchasing a ticket to go? You don't need promotion. Here's one thing I know. It's when people get things free, they don't put value on it. And if you keep allowing people to get the game, listen, people need to know, like, listen, Bonnie Shaw is a superstar. Jody Brown could be one of the next big superstar. Listen, you need to tell your daughter, you, you need to tell your daughter and your son. I see people at the National Stadium. Lady, she had her daughter, was around 11 years old. I was having um, a conversation with Warren Barrett. And she said, listen, um, she wanted to get your autograph. A lot of Jamaicans don't do those things. I'm saying that, listen, people, you need to get, but Bonisha may end up living in Europe when her international career is over. You never know. And you may never have access to her. You know how many of you would love to have something signed by Usain Bolt? But you know what happened? When you used to see Usain Bolt at the meet, you would not go up to him because he's just an... You know how much people would... If Usain Bolt was going to turn up certain place in the States without promotion, they'd just heard the same day, they would buy the ticket and go because just for him to sign something. So I am saying that. I want you to see Bonnie Shaw that way and Jody Brown that way and these players that way. Like, listen, these players are going to be household name in the world. Imagine when they qualify for two World Cups in a row. Only in, on the female side, only USA and Canada would have done that. I want you to understand the kind of history that you can be a part of. And you are saying to me, you need promotion to spend eight US dollars or four pounds or 1,000 Jamaican dollars. You don't need that. Well said, Mannings. Well, well, well said. I do not disagree with you there. I can't tell if Mr. Mikey Ballin has fallen asleep or not. Um, <laughs> no, but... no, I'm still here. I'm still here. <laughs> He's probably in shock because maybe I'm throwing him off words, so I'm going to keep silent. <laughs> no, 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 no. Man, is, man, is, man, you're right. You're right. We we have to, you know, and, and then them wonder now why the GFF broke. Because if nobody support the thing, the GFF can't make no money. And when the GFF and when GFF when them want a big player from Germany to come and GFF say we can't afford the playing fear because you don't show up to the game, so them can't get the money to pay the playing fear. I mean, you know, you need money to run any system. You, you know what I mean? And uh, you know, you need to you need to support the thing if you want Jamaica football improve. You won't stay at your house and come to management, Talawa TV, coaches desk, GAD, military, and all these bloggers the boy jamaica football and you never go spend a thousand dollars stadium yet mm -hmm. help the system so that the so you, so we can maybe improve our feel or give a young man a chance who didn't have a chance you understand me you have to go you see you see america and england when england are play if them lose 20 straight game it's mm -hmm. sell out you understand me if them lose 30 straight game it's still sell out New York Knicks been a bad team for the last hundred years and it's still sell out. <laughs> you understand me? So don't say the team will lose in Argo. Don't because guess why? When you go in, you go you going to make a chance to be able to maybe bring bring a team in camp earlier because they don't have the money to pay the hotel money. And the under twenty team can go to Brazil or go here or go do a thing or play some practice game. Why that? Why the young team can't go play in a practice game in it? Because they don't have the money to pay for the playing field. But if you go to the stadium and spend your money, 
then they can send a team away and then the team have a better chance of qualifying for any competition they're trying to qualify for. Money do it, you know. So people, some, you know, they don't understand them things, uh, you know, GFF just go pick up money and go back to money from, from Race yeah. Drive or Guinea or whatever. I, you, know, you know what, Mike? Listen, I'm not even doing, like, I'm not even thinking about because if I could, like, I know people say this, if they could go to the match and the money don't go to the quote and quote, let's put it this way, the GFF, so when yes. I go to the match, it's not about what the JFF does with the money. It's how I let those young ladies feel exactly. about, yes. about being a Jamaican and representing the country and know that they could break a leg, they could do all of that. They are females. They are not celebrated. To look and see someone there clapping and shouting for them, to me, that is more important than the, what the, the money that I spend I think that to me is a bigger motivating factor because, again, some of these girls are celebrated in the clubs that they play. And the colleges. And they come, and they come to Jamaica and they are treated like, who are you? Somebody just asked. I mean, I don't know if it was a joke. People asking, like, is Bonisha this and Bonisha that? Like, you think when you're going wherever Manchester City is around that, you think when she go there, they, they think, like, it's just like Ricardo Fuller. Ricardo Fuller is it, it's like th those guys don't walk around in in the city where he's at and and they don't and people don't know when he's at Stoke or wherever people know him and I mean so they don't they, 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 in other words they're protected Bonisha don't just get up and go out all, because they're protected because the fans celebrate them more than the money they pay in I'm saying that it's time we begin to make at least the ladies feel this way because of the kind of success. I can understand how disappointed we are in the men. I am saying that you cannot give. The girls have not acted in a way even without money. You know what times they have said that we went to the tournament and we didn't get any pay? It never turned out in anything big. You understand me? Coach, I mean, they look that situation. You don't hear the girls coming out and making statements and saying, you, there is no bad story with them. All they have done is gone on the pitch and they have done their work. That's all they have done. And no then drama. now we are going to say, well, the JFF don't promote it. So I mean, I'll go buy no ticket. JFF need to promote it. That has nothing to do with it. You're not doing this for the JFF. You're doing this for the girls. And I, that's what I want, people. I don't go to the match because I'm here. Well, I really want to help the JFF. No, I go there for the girls. Well, when I said that, I said, I don't mean to help the JFF, but I said, what the money can do. You understand? Yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, man. I know what you mean. I agree with you, you know, but I'm saying beyond that, though. Yeah. Beyond that, you, imagine when a game is finished and the. And, you, you know, I'd love to know that we qualify for the next round because we're not going to see them. In the final stages, it's going to be no. in Mexico. This is the only time, the last time we're going to see them. And then you're going to make excuse about promotion. The next time they're on the field, they'll be in Mexico in the Azteca playing a game. We, we need to give them a standing ovation and send off. You're Man throwing money. shots. You're throwing Man shots, Man. Manning. Man you're throwing Man shots Man. left. Easy. Right, and, and, and I, love, cross, I love when Manning's come over onto my channel because I can almost guarantee that the energy and the fight is going to be. I'm telling you, I am telling you, I like it when he gets it. I like when someone touches nerve because I like this side of Manning's the, the, the passion, the sheer passion, and the discipline in him. Um, uh, yeah. before I forget, Brain Dre, um, thank you so much there for your support. Um, sorry it took me so long to um give you some um thank you um, definitely appreciate your support and all the guys in the comments section as well and most certainly my special guest thank you guys for your um support sorry about that mikey you were saying no 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 i'm good just hey, tell me that man is my the passion yes i'm the passion we we, yeah. we 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 as a people as jamaicans we have to start supporting each other and mm -hmm. pushing our things and you know and stop bad mind people and red eye people sometimes and just do what you know jamaica playing a game whether it's a female or the male win or lose we should sell the stadium if we win i mean win or lose. if we're losing 
like listen like the reg well, I don't even want to talk about them, but like the girls are winning. And if, if we are wagonists and the girls are winning, we should pull out the stadium. Because you tell me now the girls haven't lost a game. No, no, they lost a game last year, right? Against the US 4 0. That was the only game, right? In a long time, right? That was um um friendlies. Or... Yeah, but it's still, it was still a loss. It's still a loss. But what I'm saying, the, the, the reggae girls have a better record than the reggae boys. Mm -hmm. So therefore, they are winning. They are 2-0 in this window, this section, right? And and then on when Tuesday next week or Wednesday, they're going to be 3-0. So we should go there, sell it out, big them up, and send them off to Mexico and say, listen, we're not going to be there physically but we deal with you you know in spirit you understand me and i'm sure the jamaican diaspora in mexico when show up and start playing some mega music in azteca because <laughs> i know a couple of jamaicans live over there can I, can, two I, of them. Yeah. can I just ask before my uh, my name chimes in um warren um just adding to your comment and thinking about what my names have said at lems what else in terms of promotion, giving to take into consideration what the YouTubers are doing, like myself and Manning and so many of the other guys um, within our space. Um, aside from what we are doing, what could be done differently aside from what we're doing? Because remember, we're on air almost every single week, week in, week out, speaking at length, sometimes one hour, two hour, five hours, six hours, um, um, extended length of time. What else could the Federation do that's different to what we're doing? Because promotion is promotion at the end of the day. Let me say this, Crystal. You know how long I have not listened to radio? I read a newspaper online. So what that means is that if they put up a radio ad, I would not see it. Cool. You know, long, you know, long, listen, when I watch things on sports and CNN, those are the only things I watch on TV. A lot of people, most people are online. And I'm not saying that there should not be promotion. What I am saying is that the lack of promotion should not hinder you from going to the game because you know about it. That's what I am saying. Whether the game is promoted or not is not an excuse for you. Spot on. Spot on. You understand spot because on. you are aware of it. Promotion is for the people who are unaware. All right? So those are the people that we need to try to touch. But if we who know about it are complaining about lack of promotion and not buying the tickets, why should the people who are hearing the promotion buy the ticket? Because the reason why we're here is because we are football fans. But we refuse to buy a ticket. So we are saying to them, we are not going to buy any, you know, promote it to the people who are not football fans so they can go to the game. Man, man. When you come on your show next, your show, I want you to give me one answer. I want to know if there's more DR people at Savannah so Park than Jamaicans when you go there on um, Saturday. I know, I mean, next Tuesday. You know what? So there are more Americans in the state of that Jamaican who play the USA in the World Cup qualifiers. <laughs> that's a <can't> <laughs> See, that's sad. It, it that's was sad. embarrassing. That it, was not good. It is interesting, <laughs> though, but, but, but um, I know time is far spent, but I've heard in certain circles that Jamaica isn't really because of the history just and, and logistic it's not a quote-unquote footballing country track and field big time track and not, field not, does not it like cost that. a lot what well not, not I, I, I but they shop for schoolboy football though they, they do finish. they do they do that's the irony schoolboys football is massive but and the, the professional game doesn't seem to be um you know, they, they've got a lot of support for Man City, which is where the wagon is kind of thing. Man City, Arsenal, they, they're listen, the quote-unquote wagon is argument. And if, listen, if one of these teams got reason, relegated, there's a they, reason they why teams, There's a reason why mm -hmm. the, the foundation took the friendly game to Costa Rica, um, against Costa Rica. There's a reason why the Jamaican games are female games, you know. The friendlies are not played in Jamaica, you know. Go ahead. There's no, a reason. Because even if it's promoted, 
the people are not going to come out. And I think that's what Warren is saying. Warren is saying if the game is played outside of Jamaica, they get greater support. Yeah. I can't tell so you right I'm now. Telling you, it is not promotion. If, it if is not. Right a, it, yeah, if the, listen, if this game was being played, say, in Florida, right? Um, one of those stadiums, um, BMO or uh, not BMO, I, IMG, IMG, sorry, IMG, or if it were played probably at um, the Crystal Palace Stadium or somewhere there, or you understand me, somewhere, or probably in Wolverhampton or probably in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. If it were played in Birmingham, Richard, I'm telling you, more people would attend it than if it plays in Jamaica. Yeah, man is man. If it played at Red Bull Stadium in New Jersey, New, York, New Jersey, it, it would half the stadium sell out with Jamaicans. And there you every go. time Jamaica come there. And it's not because it's and listen, it's not because it's not because they love female football, you know. They're going to go because they are Jamaican and they want to yes. support the team. Exactly. Yep. I want you to understand that something you understand I want you to understand what I'm saying. So can promote can promotion work? Of course it can. Of course it can work. And and it may be. But I'm saying that. When you know about Bonnie Shaw and she's coming to play to Jamaica, in Jamaica, you, you don't need you don't need that. You don't need that. Should mm -hmm. the, should the JFF promote it? Of course, I'm not taking. They they are to. I am saying though, I am saying in spite of all of that, when you hear about it, you support the girls because these young ladies are representing the country that you say you're a citizen of and it's a privilege and an honor to know that we have one of the best young players in the entire world on our island and we also have one of the best center forwards in the entire world in our island and guess what we need to support them should it be promoted should be of course definitely and if you need to get the jff fire do all of that i don't have no problems with that but that should not hinder you from supporting the team separate the things you and can't punish the girl for the incompetence of the federation that makes no sense it's just like you have a child and this is a dream. it's a cultural thing you know when a man and a woman break up you know who suffers the child yeah that is why they take them to court. If him can't be with the woman, here's what happened. The child ain't getting a thing. And so because you have a problem with the parent body, I'm not going to support the girls. That don't make any sense. What did they do you? What, what, did, what have they done to you? That's a great, that's a great analogy. It's a great analogy, man. Is man, um, a wonderful contribution in this section, undoubtedly. It's, it's ironic. Uh, man is man, Mikey Crystal. It's ironic that earlier I was speaking with Crystal and he was asking me what attracted me to the reggae girls. And I'm really struck by the lack of attraction where the wagonist style and flavor um, comes into play. It doesn't seem to stick. And this may be, I, I, I'm trying to put my finger, and if you can put your finger on why this wagonist supporting teams that are winning hasn't come into I, 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 into fruition and, and come to the party is it because jamaica is not for the senior footballing side of things um a mature enough seasoned enough culture um where football is concerned and and it's interesting because football is a sport and it's also entertainment it is a form of entertainment and what i was saying is that I personally enjoy, I've enjoyed watching the reggae girls play play games. I've enjoyed the football and the brand of football that they play. Even sometimes yeah, compared to the reggae boys, inclusive. I've enjoyed it. So as an as a entertainment product, I would have said that is something that is well worth um, um, paying uh, four or five pounds um, um, English money, a thousand dollars for, to watch. In addition to the wagonist business, which is, it's a winning team. It's a successful team. It's a team that's on the up in the CONCACAF region and hopefully 
um, on the world stage. It conducts itself well, well, and the product is entertaining. Uh, do, you, do, you, do you see where I'm coming from there? Yeah, or, but I mean, I did challenge. I did challenge it. So when I come on this, I'm challenging the fans now because I did challenge the other side. I said to Vin Blaine, listen, we cannot be in Jamaica. The girls are playing and you can't get one of the artists to come and do a halftime show. You can't ask Chronix to come and use a track and do one of his songs in halftime just that for the girls. The, and that will bring people to bring people well, to the Well, not even for the crowd, but you can imagine some of these girls seeing Chronix or Coffee doing a song at halftime when they are three goals up and, and, and they want more goals. And, and Coffee come and, and say, um, I don't even know. We don't, we don't rise on boss or whatever. What are the songs? <laughs> <laughs> the kind of vibe they're going to come out with to know that and then she's going to be there to like when she's singing and they're coming back on the field to high five them and stuff so so that is what they need to do but we should do what you understand me we need to do in spite what? of them not doing their well. job and i always tell people listen at the end of the day you're accountable for your actions you're not accountable for other people's actions all right so here's what i am accountable for whether i supported the girl or not i cannot look at them and say well you know why i wasn't supporting you because i never liked this thing i never like no no that's not my job my job is to support you that's what i am accountable for all right in a relationship is the same thing listen i'm accountable for my child regardless of what happens between you and me listen i'm accountable for my child I'm not going to let my child suffer. You, 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 may, you may suffer still, you know, because you're accountable for you. But with a child, that's that's my that's my job. So they have a job, but we cannot act irresponsible because of their failure, because that will make us irresponsible, just like them, and incompetent, just like them. Yeah. Man, is I have a question for you. Yeah. When we qualify for the World Cup, and we we have a practice game at the stadium. You think they would, you think we carry a larger crowd? They will not play it at the stadium. I'm telling you. They did so last year though, last World Cup, because they played Panama practice game after they would qualify for the World Cup. Remember that game? Colombia to a We play one of those Central American countries. I am saying to, but this is what I'm saying to you is that when the games are played, even after that, they got better support outside of Jamaica. So okay. I am saying you have been you have been seeing a shift in their recent friendlies. And I'm saying it could be that we don't see these girls play in Jamaica again. Because after the World Cup, it, if we don't turn up at Sabina Park, what reason would they have after they qualify to believe that if they play to get some money for the World Cup that people will turn up? Why not play where they have had packed stadiums in, in Florida and in, in those places? Why not go yeah. back to um, Nuts County? Why not do that? Why come to Jamaica when there's no evidence? They have never played before a sold out or a half full stadium in all their mm -hmm. games in Jamaica. Why would they trust the spectators to come out? Yeah. At that point. And, and that is the challenge we're going to have. Brain drain, you think thinking easy. Brain James talking about <laughs> Brain Drain. Check this out. I'm See, speaking. Mickey, I'm I was at the game. I'm Mickey, speaking. The brain Drain. Speak. Uh, copyright. Here, here's telling you. Copyright that. Janae, you, you know what's what's interesting? Um, Manning's is right, and that's why I was smiling in terms of the halftime performance. And we actually saw that, didn't we, guys? Back in October, when we played against Costa Rica, we actually, but again, unfortunately, that one was overseas. We actually saw them. I believe the halftime performances on that occasion was Skip Marley and Tifa. Um, if memory serves me well. And I liked it. It was different, but I was just like, this must be getting the girls moving. Like, you must can feel that base from your changing room. But even as the spectators and the fans, I'm just picturing myself being there, and I'm like, this is this is value for money. Imagine you pay to watch a football match, and you're watching the likes of Skip Marley or your Tifa or your, um, your coffee or whoever it may be two for the price of one like your music and, and football it goes hand in hand it's like bread and butter it complements each other so i don't know why we're not drumming home and that sometimes yeah. it's not necessarily about the money it's about the contact reaching mm -hmm. out to a bit being a man love football 
Yeah. These exactly. people can just set up the man, just show up just for five minutes, ten minutes, and look at one thing and then go. Is it likely to say yes? Listen, I said, unless you try. I said Bojo Banton at Premier League games in Jamaica. More than one. These guys go around. They are probably going to be um what's it? Guy them who the dirt ding dong. These yeah. guys used to play football. <laughs> whatever they name. They are normally at football games. And it's not hard to say. So that is that is what they are supposed to do, you know. Remember, in the camp, 1998 campaign, one of the big things was the halftime show with Jerry, Jerry, what's his name? Jerry, Jerry, Jerry D, Jerry D. I think Jerry D um, was his name, right? The big thing was the halftime show. Almost every artist was looking forward to the opportunity to perform at halftime at the reggae boys game. This was during the campaign. That's what the federation needs to do. All right, but here's the thing. If you only have 500 spectators, you think an artist is going to want to come and do anything? Those things are driven by spectators. In other words, when an artist hear that, yeah, man, they know say, at 15,000 tickets sell out for somebody in a park, yeah, man, they, they, will come, they come to them song because it is promotion for them. So they're doing it for free and a track. But, I mean, if, if you hear Richard that you're, you're a chronic son, yeah, you know, so the Red Cross are welcome to how much. I mean, there are people normally watching game. Yeah, man, you know, we sell around 300 tickets. You know? <laughs> I mean, he may still come, but it shows me it's a different vibe. So I wanted to start with the spectators and stop making excuses. Here, here. Start with the spectators. Here, here, here. Mr. Here, Sutherland, here. before I forget my manners, Sean Sutherland, thank you. Kind, thank you there. Um, very kind of you. Um, just want to know if I'm allowed to treat myself with um with that lovely bit of gift from yourself. Um, entirely down to you. Um, but no, thank you there. Um, for your kindness and your support. Sorry for interrupting you there. Um, Richard. Anyway, gentle people, no problem. I'm going to leave leave the scene and leave you guys to continue. God bless well, you. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how long we're going to continue. Time I'm, flies. I'm when we're about having seven fun. more look, minutes, look. and then I'm going All to right. um, close off. And um, and Crystal, if you yes, do sir. have something on Friday, I'll be there. I'll try to get a pink shirt because I'm supporting Mikey, Bermuda. Mikey, draw me out, so I will be here on Friday. All right. I may be a little <laughs> bit late to the party, but I will show up. But, All um, right, sir. And you um, start early, Mike. Mike. You start You start early, Mike, Mike because your your, your, your M is in pink. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. realize that his M is in pink. Yeah, yeah man. So for, Take Bermuda, a big Friday. Friday's Bermuda, we are supposed to be DR. So make sure you wear pink here, sir. Uh, <laughs> you know that I, listen, I don't care. I'm, I'm so loyal to Jamaica. I cannot wear any of those team colors. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't care because regardless of what that result is, I am confident Jamaica. I'm going to wear my Jamaican colors. Yeah. Yes, man. Because Jamaica I'm playing, here. I couldn't wear pink, but I don't care what Bermuda Jamaica go beat Dominica, so I don't care. Man, I don't care. Right. Man is for your sake, sake, I'll, 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 I'll wear. Um, You're gonna look for something fetching, man. Bermuda shots, Bermuda shots. I, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know about the shots thing. I'll wear something <laughs> with a little pink. I don't know. Maybe I'll have my background pink. I don't know. <laughs> man is man. Remember, you remember to carry the shirt, but they gave it the girl them sign it here, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, definitely, definitely, definitely. Okay, okay. I was yeah. watching your show today, too, so while I was working. Yeah, you, know you, what said, yeah, you, yeah, you know, you know what happened though? Like, when I go to the game, I'm so in awe of the girl. Like, I don't end up doing a lot of interviews. Same thing with the regular boys, you know. I am, I am fascinated sometimes about like how these guys sacrifice. So I try, I, like, I try not even to do interview because, listen, to me, these are celebrities. All right? Yep. And um, the fact that some of these ladies have um, their kids and the people, I don't, I mean, it happened with men, but it's, it's one thing when a woman, I think it's different when a woman leaves her child to play a game than when a man does it. Like, I think, because generally you find that maybe women are, you know, <coughs> um, um, are, are stronger geared towards the early years of the child more than men in terms of you know, care and nurturing, all right? However, so when, 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 when a man, like, has a son or a daughter at six, for example, and say, hey, I'm going to play a game, he, he says, okay, and the wife takes care of the child. I think when it comes on to the, the woman, it's a different thing when she's playing professional football, has a six-year-old, 
travels overseas and leave the child i think it's it's a it's different for me and when they do that to me i mean oh, i'm saying whoa i, I don't I, I can't like this is just amazing that's just me so like those things fascinate me someday when the game is finished just looking <laughs> I hear you, man. It's, I, 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 I hear you, man. It's an interesting take, but I, I, I what I agree with you. They, look, they're, they're terrific professionals. Um, <laughs> they, 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 they conduct themselves very well, and I've seen you with your. Uh, you did interview Rebecca Spencer, did you, or, or, or were you? Was, yeah, was yeah, it an actual yeah. interview? I, yeah, yeah, actually interviewed her. Where you said there were some problems because. I mean, Where is that Mannings? Because I've I've not seen that. I wanna give it a watch. No man, it's at the game, and because like um you know because what ended up happening is that Simon was there, and Simon was saying saying that oh Rebecca, this is your biggest son, biggest Jamaican fan and thing, and then he said that she started blushing and stuff. So so Aww. that's all. So right, it was a very awkward kind of an interview. You understand me? But we did do the interview, but it was kind of cool and stuff. So I'm saying I don't I don't try to. I just watch them and congratulate them at the end of the game and stuff because it's a little bit difficult. But other people is, is are very. Your channel, huh? Yeah, is, I think, yeah, okay. I it, need to, um, I need yeah. to watch that. I haven't, I haven't which seen game it. refresh. Which which game was it? Um, the which game one, against which one was it, Bermuda, Bermuda, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, game. Yeah, man, yeah. check it out. Okay, check I it need out. To, um, I need I'm to going to leave you off. Pink Boss, Mikey, Pink Boss, too. Yes. Pink boss too. Mikey. respect, yes, Mikey. Yes, I'm hearing you. When when you come back, please let me know if you and uh, Mr. Manning's mans are blood related. I I I'd have to get this done for him if I run some names. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting involved. No, but, 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 but 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 it's coincident that they come from the same neighborhood, so therefore it could be. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Small world. Right, I'll check work. it out. I'll ch I'll I'll check it out. I'll check it out. I I, I know Indeed. somebody who lives down there who has a surname, so think I can. Um, check call it, it out. Yeah. Yes, my um, and she's buried up near it. My great grandmother. Oh. Yeah. All right then, guys. Have a good morning for the Europeans, and have a good night, man. Is man. Blessing. Yeah. <laughs> Full respect, Full Full night, respect night, Mike. Night. As always, yeah. always a pleasure. Okay. 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 Bye bye. I'm yeah, wishing. Bye. So we're winding down, guys. Before I forget yes, my manners, are. guys, in the comment section, if you, if you look behind Richard, it's going to start to be sunrise. So it's actually sunrise very um, light, um, lightly outside. You can see the little shades of sunlight peeping through the, the curtains there. Before I forget my manners, thank you. Massive thank you to you guys in the comment section. You guys are absolute heroes, the ultimate 12 man you have sat here with me for five hours five hours on the dot and we're still going and we could go again but we won't because we need our rest especially if i'm going to be back during the week um availability wise manins when are you when are you doing your preview for the game whenever you're available um <laughs> i don't mind um actually tomorrow i am unavailable between seven and 8 p.m. UK time, just between 7 and 8 p.m. I don't know if, when you want to do, if you want to do your, um, if you want to do your preview on Friday or Thursday, I don't know, it's entirely down to you. But no, man, it's up, listen, just give me a day and a time. You're the celebrity and I'll, I'll just- No, the no, I'd here. rather work with your time. No, remember you, you go work, I work from home. So no, I'm really? I'm um, to work with your time. Um, I, I run my, I run my own, I run Ooh. my own. Yeah, so, so I'm I'm cool, man. No, man, you just give me, and I can I can I can fit my schedule around it. That's cool. or yeah. I think what is probably best for us, just as an idea, maybe it's good to hold fire until we hear the press conference, and yeah. then maybe do a preview after that. I, I'll get some information tomorrow, so I will um probably send you something on um Instagram as well. So I should oh be, yeah, well, whatever yeah. is your um comfortable with. If you want to do it before the press conference, you can, or I can join you um whenever you're ready to do your okay. um, and then mr richard stevens don't think that you're running away from me because i'll be um knocking on your door as well what, <laughs> what? <laughs> you know what i think this is the part when i when i make my exit deals knocking and do a thing in the early morning uh you know stop your fussing and fighting so early in the morning i don't know some very something going on here so i'm going to run leave you guys so the door knocking can go on <laughs> <laughs> 
Man is man <laughs> is, yeah. Man is man is. Yeah, man. But all right, so good being here as usual, guys. Enjoy the rest of your morning. I'm going to I'm going to do some schoolwork and then you know get some sleep for tomorrow. Yeah, do go ahead and do that, man. And yeah, hit me up on um Instagram whenever you're ready. Yeah, man, definitely. Full right. respect, man is man. Full yeah, respect. Yeah, man Excellent yeah. contribution, guidance. Yeah, man. Yeah, Mr. Stevens, that was completely unplanned. That's what I like about this YouTube space. We plan on talking for 30 to one hour and we end up talking way above that. Um, only tonight, I only wanted to speak about um, Richard and why he uh, decided to become a Reggae Girls fan. Had the pleasure of um, adding Mr. Mikey Ballin and also towards the latter stage you saw I had the absolute pleasure again of adding Mr. Mannings there from I Am Sure Sports um, to the lineup completely unplanned um, but those those type of content usually create our best work I can't speak for the guys but for myself usually that's when I cr I'm able to create my best work because there's a range of opinions flying left right and center as ever I'm always going to be leaving my final words with my guest, my co-host for tonight, uh, Mr. Richard Stevens. Well, uh, Crystal, thank you very much for inviting me um, five hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, it, it's a pleasure. Um, front and center were the reggae girls, and you were looking to find out where my love and respect for the reggae girls came from i am delighted and honored that the program tonight flourished so wonderfully covering so many aspects of jamaican football with the reggae girls front and center and manning's man's impassioned plea to fans to uh, forget about the isms and schisms as it were and to focus on what can you do for your country and what you can do, simple request, if it's within your realm and your capacity to do so, go and support the reggae girls on home soil. They're going to the Caymans, support them by following and watching them and bigging them up on the various platforms, on, on the platform with Talawa TV and, 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 and send words of encouragement because they bring a positive light to the atmosphere and the footballing and sporting environment and it's my pleasure to support them and to watch them grow and represent uh, the egos set aside and what they're doing is putting their the muscles to the grinder and producing quality <coughs> excuse me quality football quality football and giving a hundred percent and in sport that's what i love to see once you're given a hundred percent leaving it on the pitch and they do so they take it off the pitch with their courte courteousness their intelligence their respect and they respect the game of football football is a game it's a sport but they respect the game and i think it's behold on to us to keep that positive vibe encourage them and support them as much as we can and it's my delight to, to, to wish them the very best, as well as their opponents, because that's what it's about, active, keen competition. And they leave it on the pitch. No surrounding the referee, rolling around on the floor. They're passing the ball. They're spreading the ball. They're making the runs. They're having the shots. They're getting us on the edge of our seats and mm. encouraging us. Imagine looking for a team to score five or six goals or to win a, a tight but... Um, uh, enjoyable contest, 2-1, um, you know, but we're looking at a team that can take about apart certain teams by four or five goals. <clears throat> They're well worth it. Khadija, Trudy, Rebecca, we wish all of them, uh, Shinula, uh, Asha, we wish all of them the very best and it's going to be an exciting week of football. Reggae girls, we are behind you. Crystal, thank you again for having having me and the guests and all the commenters a bevy of commenters thank you very much for liking and subscribing and passing on your comments from brain drain to to travis uh to everton 
to Owen Owen. Uh, uh, sleep well. Don't let the bug bend, the bed bugs bite. <laughs> Owen Owen. I saw when you said good night. Peace and respect, sir. And again, Crystal, it's the early hours of the morning. We're glad that you're in, in, in rude health and good health, and we wish you well going forward. And I'm looking forward to linking up with you uh, when the reggae girls take to the field. And I'll be looking out for the other contestants, the other runners and riders, um, as the track towards the next Women's World Cup takes place. Thank you again, Crystal. You are most welcome. Thank you for being my co-host and my special guest tonight. No doubt it won't be the last. I do expect to see you on here plenty, plenty more times in the near future. Um, just a reminder, guys, request here from uh, Mikey Ballin. I will be back on Friday, possibly before then. All depends on when the Reggae Girls press conference is um, talked off. I'll come back and we can talk about the press conference. Also come back and preview the game. So aside from previewing the game against uh, Cayman Islands, we'll also be doing a watch along, a watch along for Dominican Republic versus Bermuda. That's a big one there on Friday night for plenty of you. So when is that game? I need to remind myself. When it's a Friday, I believe. It's a Friday for us, right? It's a Friday. It's a Friday. It says Friday. I'm not sure if it's going to be the, Let's the, say, the late well, hours it's, of the it's, night, but it's, it's a Friday. 12, 12 a.m. on a Saturday. Um, so, yeah, let's, let's just still call it Friday night, um, 12 a.m., if you're based in the UK. And whilst I'm here, let me just give you guys some a reminder. Again, these dates are UK dates and time. So first up on our list, we have Cayman Islands. And that one kicks off on Sunday, the 10th of April at 1 a.m. If you are based in the UK, friendly reminder, us in the UK, we are tw um, six hours ahead of Jamaica. So do do your maths if you're based in the United States or over in Canada. Subsequently, we move on to the blockbuster at the home of our um, cricket, where the West Indies is concerned, where we'll be hosting Dominican Republic on Wednesday, the 13th of April at 12 a.m. Again, those are the dates and times for those of you who are based in the UK. So that game on against Cayman Island will be played on a Saturday, this Saturday, followed by the game against the Dominican Republic will be will be played on Tuesday, next Tuesday. So do go ahead and etch those dates in your diary. I am not, I'm sure, I'm positive that I will be joined by, um, yes, Brain Dre, um, the dates all depend, Saturday and Sunday, Tuesday or Wednesday, depends on where you're based in the world. Um, so if, try not to be confused by that, guys. Um, just double check on Google. If you're based in Jamaica, the game will be played on a Saturday for you against Cayman Islands. If you are based in Jamaica, the game against Dominican Republic will be played on Tuesday, next week, Tuesday. Again, just do the maths depending on where you are based. I will be back for more content around the Reggae Girls. By the way, guys, this was the first official show of um, Reggae Girls content. And what a way to kick things off. My wonderful co-host there, Richard Stevens, uh, Mr. Balin, that is Mikey Balin, and the lovely Manning's Mans as well, and the ultimate 12th man, my Talawas, you guys in the comments section. Thank you so much for sitting this one out with me. I'm looking at uh, Richard, and I can tell that he's feeling for a copper. Me, myself, I'm going to go and do some editing. Am I wrong, Richard? Are you feeling for a cuppa? You are, you are spot on. The, 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 the <laughs> brew is on its way, and then I'll get some shut eye. I'm on a day off. Give thanks. Wednesday is a, is a day off, so um, I'm going to probably um, check out some Champions League's action later in the evening. And isn't there a game? I Oh, Grenade, Grenade and the Cayman Islands. Oh, what are they playing? I it's believe I've got Wednesday. Grenada and the Cayman Islands. It's um. Grenada uh, and it Cayman be, Islands. Let's see. Or could that be the equivalent of Thursday? Um, early hours of um Thursday. Richard, England Mr. Time. Richard, we might okay. So that's today at um, ten p.m. How are we looking, guys? You guys want to watch along for that? I could turn that into a watch along if you guys want to watch along for the Cayman Islands game against um, Grenada, since I will be doing the Dominico game. 
that would be interesting. Could, could try and turn that one into a watch along for you guys. Um, so it looks like I'll be back later on. I like the way Mikey and Richard have this unique way of drawing me out. They try to do it very subtle. Oh, there's a game coming up. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, it doesn't take much to draw you out, you know, Crystal. You <laughs> have got an appetite. Brain Jane has been pointing out that we are showing real dedication. They're seeing what dedication looks like. English hours 5 a.m. and we're going strong. So yes, indeed, brain drain. You're seeing it, but Crystal, you you just have a real passion for the game, and we salute, we salute, and okay. I think the viewers and subscribers salute. They know where you're coming from, and 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 there's more to be told. Maybe we have to interview you. You know, have you been interviewed? Yeah, Simon Preston. Simon Preston has um done an interview with me. That was possibly last year. Last yeah, year. Um, Look that one yeah. up, look that one up. And so much has happened to you since. I think we need to, you know, we, 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 listen, if it's worth doing once, it's worth doing twice. So viewers and subscribers, look out for us interviewing Crystal Davis. When, Whenever you are ready, I can open that up for you, Mr. Richard Stevens. Um, share a little bit insight on me um, getting into the football industry. If, if that's something you want to do, let me know whenever you're ready and I'll open up my channel for you and you could do the lead in and I'll be the guest. I think I look forward to that because as much as I like being in the driving seat, I don't actually enjoy speaking, which is kind of odd given the job that I do. Um, that interesting. So I, yeah, I, must, I would much rather be the, the guest. I enjoy being the guest than the person that's steering the ship. Too much responsibilities at times. Um, but um, any final words there from you, Richard? So that's tomorrow. Today, I'll be back today, guys, doing our live watch along. Grenada taking on Cayman Islands today. Today for me it is Wednesday, so it's now Wednesday at 10 p.m. I'll be back um, doing a live watch along for you. Guys. I love my sports. What I can say is I love my sports. I'm a sports lover, sports fan, and the fact that the reggae girls have been front and center this evening for the last few hours, the spotlight has been on them, and it has been pleasure uh the world of light you'd be so think we might have some pink in the conga cup region internet as I, said. I think richard's internet is a little bit tired there guys Ooh. richard's internet seemed like um his internet wants to go to bed I, so my modem might be playing up <laughs> think that's cue for you to um head off to your bed mr steven before i go again guys one last thank you to you guys in the comments section can, can you thank you again to my special guest my co-host tonight um richard stevens the lovely the lovely mikey ballin and also the lovely mannings from i am sure sports you guys in the comment section you have been incredible thank you thank you for blessing me for a moment of your time i'm going to have to i uh, love you and leave you and actually what i'm going to do as soon as i close off on this i'm going to go and do some editing some video editing i might just go to my bed in say call it one hour's time and then I have to be up for work so I need to do some little video editing or at least download my videos from tonight before I can do the editing um again Richard how are you looking can you close can you take us out can you hear me am I here yes sir I can hear you can you can you hear me crystal yes oh my goodness me listen my internet has really well and truly had a long session. Listen, it's been a pleasure. Reggae girls, we salute you. You are making us proud in the Jamaica diaspora. Get some good rest, good preparation, and give it all you've got against the Cayman Islands and Dominican Republic. We are all behind you. Reggae girls show. We salute, Crystal. Salute, Tallowers. We salute. Let's go. My tala was I will be seeing you guys again um today, 10 a.m. UK time. That's um what time is that? Six um 
4 p.m. if you're based in Jamaica. Do the mass if you're based elsewhere. Um, Mr. Richard Stevens, I hope you have a lovely day. Do enjoy your rest. Get some beauty sleep. You guys in the comment section, go ahead and get your beauty sleep as well. And also have a pleasant Wednesday until we come back on air and hit up another live stream. Just a reminder, we have the return of Marlo Sweatman and Paige Bailey Gale. Both of them have been included in our player squad announcement for the game against Cayman Islands and Dominican Republic. We also have... A surprise welcome of Drew Spence. Drew Spence is training in Jamaica with the women's national team, but I have been told that she will take no part in the fixtures against Cayman Islands and the Dominican Republic. That's completely down to documentation reasons. So enjoy watching Drew Spence training with her teammates. Um, but don't get too carried away because you're not expected to see her in that lineup. Mr. Stevens, I will be in touch with you again, sir. Um, thank you again for sharing the space with me. And have a lovely, lovely Wednesday. Peace. Peace. A pleasure, Crystal, as always. Take care. Thank you. Take care, guys. Have a lovely evening. Enjoy your sleep, and I will see you again. Feels like it will be in a matter of hours. Um, just a reminder, 10 p.m. UK today meaning wednesday 4 p.m if you're based in jamaica do enjoy the rest of your evening and as, as always if i haven't said it already before you exit before you click off do go ahead and hit that like button if you're new to the channel do go ahead and hit that subscribe button until next time i'm john barnes and you're watching talawa tv with crystal davis